Hello everyone. Good morning. How are you? How is it, Josh? Huh? For the films, I are low. How many FSI is I? I. How many FSI is very low? Huh? It is I are low. It's because of your preparation level. It's very simple. If you are doing preparation really well, it should be I. If you are not, obviously it should be very low. Is right. So, but today what we are going to do is that when today, tomorrow, and day after tomorrow, three sessions that we will try to revise as many times. Uh, uh, I think in the entire history, I think obviously entire history is going to take more than 100 hours, but we have to do it in within 18, 20 hours. We will try to do that. Okay, we will try to make it. We will try to give some extra content-rich addition with respect to your prelims preparation. I think many of PEP students are here. Okay, so many PEP students are here. One, two, three. Okay, so many PEP students are here. Okay, so we already gone through all these things. Okay, it's one more time. Please bear with me. Okay, so we have to go through all these things one more time. And uh, obviously, how many advanced students are here? Mm -hmm. Advanced students. Okay, so is online is Okay, so before we get into that one, first I will try to say how our sessions will be. Uh, what is the framework of the entire sessions? So it is three day today, tomorrow, and day after tomorrow. So I think the overall sessions will be around six hours per day. So that is what the overall structure presently it is. So we will take one and a half hour per session. Okay, one and a half hour and one and a half hour, three hours, and then again we will have break for lunch, and then again one and a half hour, then again one and a half hour. So the, that is how the overall uh, course structure will be there. That is the entire three day structure will be there. So first we will take for now first one and a half hour and then we will have 10 minutes of break, 10 to 15 minutes of break, then one and a half hour, then we will have a longer break for one hour for your lunch and then we will have one and a half hour, then again lastly one and a half hour. Okay, so that is that is how you people also feel little bit comfortable because I don't want the uh, entire one single stretch that is that is not feasible and that is also not good for your mental well-being also. Okay, you know I can understand it is history class. Okay, so and before going to that one, so before getting into the actual classes, so actual what is the revision, what we are going to do, I think, what is the best source for prelims? Hmm? How many of you say? Hmm? Which is the best source for prelims? Hmm? Revision. Okay, so I am asking which is the best source for prelims? Hmm? Huh? PYQs, you said that is PYQ is that one, particularly the previous year question papers. Which previous year question paper we are talk talking about particularly? UPSC's previous year question papers. So, while you are receiving previous year question paper, what you people do most of the time? What you people will be doing? You just answer those things. You said you will just answer those and just leave those question paper. And that is the most of the most of the not what is the paper will definitely will do that one. Okay. So, but first we need to see how to analyze this question paper. That is very important. You said everybody says analyze the previous year question paper would be a very few people will have the idea how to analyze those question papers also. And that is the one thing that is lacking in actual UPSC preparation that is okay so how to analyze this question paper so how to, what is the best way to analyze it first i will give you just one example that's it okay but over the course of the next three days today and tomorrow and day after tomorrow we are going to solve as many pyqs as possible with respect to history and pep students already know that one we have solved so many uh, question questions with respect after every topic we complete we will solve all the questions with related to that particular topic and we also see how the questions have been formed the best source for prelims has already asked the best source is always the previous year question paper. Okay, so I think if I say 8757, everybody know what is 757, right? What is 757? Because you have been preparing for quite a while. Okay, so you already know what is the actual dates and everything. What is 1857? Everybody knows that one. Okay, 1942, everybody knows. 1930, 1927, 1922, everybody knows what are the major events happened during this point of and particularly in these years also. And you know, Government of India Act of 1919, I will take that one example. I will take that one example to see how the questions have been formed. Okay, so this is, I think, whatever the questions we have been seeing, we have been analyzing in this session is that one last ten years question papers from 2011 to 2022. Okay, so just see these questions, and then we will go into the actual uh, the revision classes, the revision class from Paleolithic to from until to uh, Arsha and then again we will come to medieval India, and then we will go to modern India, and in last session, that is the third day, I am going to cover current affairs also. Okay, today, tomorrow, we will try to finish medieval India, ancient India, medieval India as well as art and culture. But on the last day, modern India as well as current affairs too. Okay, so I will keep the best part to the last. Okay, so that's what we are going to do. Okay, so now look at this question. Which of the following are the principal features of Government of India Act of 1919? What is the other name of Government of India Act of 1919? Montevideo for reforms. Now look at the answer options. The introduction of diarchy in the executive government in the provinces. Is it right or wrong? 
Is it right or wrong? Was the hierarchy introduced or not? Yes, it was introduced. You said, what do you mean by hierarchy? Huh? What do you mean by hierarchy? Diarchy means the subjects, law-making subjects were divided between Britishers as well as Indians at the provincial level. That is one thing. We will come to that one. And then look at the second statement, interaction of separate communal electorate for Muslims. Is it right or wrong? Wrong. Is it definitely wrong? Because it was introduced in which act? 1909 act. Okay. And then look at the third statement, devolution of legislative authority by the centre to the provinces. What is my devolution? That is decentralization. Decentralization from center to the provinces, from to the from the top level to the local level. Right? So, which which two statements are correct? One and three only. Okay. So, I know I'm not testing your intelligence. I'm just testing. Uh, I'm just going to see that is what kind of questions are arise out of this one particular question itself only. Okay. We know which answer. Answer should be one and three. We know that one. Okay. So now, utilizing this wrong answer options. You know how many questions have been formed hmm? over next 10 years. So, all the questions out of whatever the 19, 19, 1999 questions that UP has been formed out of these three statements only. Okay, that is the reason I told you that is PYQs are the best source for prelims preparation. Now, look at this which year 2012. Okay, now look at in 2015, the Government of India Act of 1919 clearly defined. Again, one question you said. The separation of power between judiciary and the legislature. Did they? No. That is which article of constitution? Hmm? That is one thing that is related to polity. Right? And then again, second question the jurisdiction of central and provincial government. Now, go back to the previous question. What is the third statement says? Devolution of legislative authority by the centre to the provinces. Now, they just change the meaning, not the meaning, rather just the, the wordings. Now, look at the second statement says one jurisdiction of central and provincial. Government that was definitely divided, you said, and also there was a budget was also separated between central government and state government. So that is provinces as well as the British central government or British Indian government. Then powers of Secretary of State for India and the Viceroy? No. When that was defined? Powers of Secretary of State for and Viceroy, 1858 Act, you said, and then answer should be B. Look at that one. That is out of the wrong answer option. One question has been formed. That is in which year? 2015. Understanding it, right? Now, go back to 2016. Now, Montague Kelsford proposals were related to. Same question. You saying? It is one of the toughest questions UPS has ever asked. Okay. Social reforms, educational reforms, reforms in police administration, constitutional reforms. What is this about? Everybody knows that one, right? I told you sometimes UPSC insults your intelligence. You saying? This is one of the easiest of questions we can say that is UPSC has ever asked because it is very, very easier because related to which act again? 1919 Act. You said 2012, 2015, then again 2016. We know the answer is D. Okay. And next, we will come to look at 2017. You said. So, why I am bringing this one particular question is that one just to show you people. So, how the questions are being formed. So, I think Arjun sir must have mentioned about the high yield areas. You said, what do you mean by high yield areas? That is the word he uses always. Hmm? That high yield areas means that is knowing where the questions are coming from. What the people will worry about is that when all the difficult questions, what the UPSC is being asking. You said some unheard scholars, okay, unheard, we can say textbooks and everything. So, in worrying about those unheard textbooks and unheard scholars, you will miss out on these basics. You said that is the reason what we are always emphasizing is that when you should really, really strengthen your basics. That is very, very important. Now, look at this question. That is in the context of Indian history, the principle of diarchy was refers to. Now, where the diarchy term was utilized first? Where it was introduced? Look at the word diarchy. In which year it was asked? 2012. Recent. Look at that one. The same word is being repeated. That is exactly what I am trying to say here. Okay. Now, what do you mean by diarchy? Division of central legislature into two houses? No. What is the division of two houses is called as? Bicameralism. Okay. And then again, interaction of double government, that is central and state governments? No. That is what is called as? That is federalism, right? Double government is? Federalism and then again having two sets of rulers, one in London, another one in Delhi, that is also wrong. And third one says that one, the division of subject delegated to province into two categories. Which are the two categories? A transferred powers as well as transferred subjects as well as reserved subjects. So, answer should be D. 
look at that one okay so how the questions are being formed this is only one example i'm giving it can be applied to geography also polity also okay to each and every subject maybe except for science and technology maybe because science and technology mostly most probably it is very current affairs oriented and this is which year 2017 and we know the division of subject delegate to the provincial into two categories which are two categories reserved and transferred now look at 2022 reserved and transferred and should write okay 2022 question that is in the government of india act of 1919 the functions of provincial government were divided into reserved and transferred subject and that is known as diarchy we know that one and then which of the following were treated as reserved subjects okay out of the wrong answer options how many sorry out of the wrong, wrong answer option as well as right answer options how many questions are being formed okay it applies to each and every subject also so that how many of you have analyzed these kind of things hmm? how many of you did that yes very good anybody two okay anybody hmm? so this is what analyzing previous year question paper means and one way of analyzing previous year question paper also that is writing down down your strengths and weaknesses that is very important okay when you answer one particular question okay write down why you have been able to answer that question what are the strengths what are the strengths whether you could able to answer that question because of your comprehensive understanding because you had the factual clarity because you had the conceptual clarity or you had revised really well and take another question where you can't able to answer that question i'm talking about previous year upsc question paper itself only why you couldn't able to answer that one particular question what is the reason what is the weakness whether you did not revise that topic properly okay whether you did not have that one basic knowledge about that one particular topic whether you did not read that topic comprehensively write down the strengths and weaknesses that is very very important when you write down your strengths it will remain as strengths okay you will try to make it that is whatever when you're reading next you will try to retain the strengths when you write down your weaknesses you will try to improve that weaknesses because that will get into your subconscious mind whatever the weaknesses you wrote down that is very very important that is success is nothing but retaining your strengths that is one thing at the same time improving upon your weaknesses and if not 100 percent improve only 50 percent even if not 50 percent even if that is 25 percent is also good strength should remain as strength at the same time without complacency at the same time we should keep on improving upon your weaknesses also now just try to answer this question now administration of justice local self-government land revenue and then again police which are of them are transferred subject and reserved subjects hmm? which are the what do you mean transfer subject? transfer to whom concept is transfer to indian hands for administration in Indian hands. And again, reserved subject means that will be administrated within by whom? By the Britishers. Now, which of the following subjects will definitely be in the hands of Britishers? Police. Do you think they were going to give up the law and order? Definitely not. Then land revenue, do you think they are going to give up? The one particular, the major reason why they stayed in India for because they saw all the all the land revenue what India was providing to them. Obviously, they are not going to give up into Indian hands. And again, do you think local self-government? What is local self government? It is about local development. Do you think Britishers were really interested in development of India? No, definitely not. So, local self government will be given to whose hands? Indian hands. And administration of justice, we know how the justice system was there. It was a biased justice system. We know that one. So, all these were which subjects? These are reserved subjects. Now, look at the answer options 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 4. And which will be the answer? Option C. 134 okay so is which year last year question 2022 okay so this one example i'm just giving you so same thing we are going to do in the next sessions what we are going to do you see that is in ancient also as well as in medieval also as well as in modern india also okay so shall we move on okay this one thing that is whoever not done this please go and do it okay please still there is time okay so while you go into the examination hall on that day the prelims day you have to go with the proper mindset and you have to go with that you have done something right that should be the mindset ultimately you have done something right towards your preparation okay so ultimately that will give a lot of confidence that will make you emotionally stable that day that is very very important keep emphasizing that your emotion should be in control on prelims day okay emotions running will be very very high that day when you control your emotions then your prelims preparation prelims day will become very very easier too okay so now we'll move on to so ultimately this is the topic we are going to complete today from prehistorical times until arshavardhana okay i know this is going to be very extensive and uh, at the same time it is going to be really fast also i am going to say that one because it's not possible to cover entire history within 3 days technically speaking okay but we will try to make it as much as possible and try to write down those points 
which you have entered previously at the center don't try to write each and every aspect of the ppts and at the last class okay after ending current affairs and everything i am going to share all the ppts with you okay that should not uh, ultimately uh, stop you from writing down what are the important topics okay i think where you can write write down is at one instead of creating a new notes write down whatever the ancient history notes we have you have what are the medieval history notes you have what are the modern history notes you have just add those points i think most of the things will be covered over there but things still you might find some kind of points which are left out probably you can just add those kind of points okay so now we will start from prehistoric times okay so prehistoric obviously starts from where it starts from paleolithic times what is the time period of paleolithic hmm? somewhere around 2 million years ago to until around 10000 bce and should right so what do you mean by paleo hmm? paleo means old what do you mean by lithic hmm? lithic means stones you say so that is the reason paleolithic is called as what is the full form old stone age and which is the time period of paleolithic hmm? geographical time period of the earth you know about paleozoic mesozoic cenozoic neozoic huh? ice age right ice age is also called as pleistocene pleistocene period okay and what is another important thing about paleolithic with respect to human history it is the earliest evidence of humans living in india okay is the earliest evidence of humans living in india and which is the race of these humans probably they say this negrito race we don't have proper actual evidence this is majorly negrito okay so these are the basic information about which age paleolithic age okay so now we'll come to some of the general characteristics that's what we are going to move forward now what are the general characteristics of paleolithic what are the general characteristics what do you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so what did they eat pizza burger no then what they were eating fruits vegetables okay at the same time we can talk about meat also okay and then again next we can talk about what how did they get their food hunting and gathering okay so that is very very important okay so it's very simple that is we are going to move forward only keywords focus on the keywords of all these topics it is not a foundation course okay so we are not, we don't have much time also and we are going to go with only important conceptual understanding about each and every topic too and again another general characteristics where did the leaf are resided which places caves, hmm? caves no okay is the open air are in the caves so did the caves located in particular specific geographical area hmm? do you think all the caves is spread over all over india we know that one or did this cave locate in a particular geography ha huh? which geography near water areas we know that one near water areas like rivers because we can see most of the paleolithic mesolithic as well as neolithic sites are located near rivers only and even arapan civilization also that is located on which river basin indus river valley basin too okay and look at the world civilization also nile civilization mesopotamia civilization all of them are located on the base, on the banks of major rivers okay and again this paleolithic age can be further subdivided subdivided into how many categories three phases that is early paleolithic middle paleolithic as well as upper paleolithic and what is the basis of this classification what is the base and this dates could be variations dates could be variations could be there some kind of variations will always be there in this dates and what is the basis of this subdivisions on what basis it has been subdivided into early middle as well as upper paleolithic huh? on the basis of tools on the basis of stone tools you said now early paleolithic used different kind of stone tools middle paleolithic used different kind of stone tools at the same time upper paleolithic also used different types of stone tools so okay we'll come to that one which are the stone tools they were using during that point of time okay you got it right early paleolithic from 10000 sorry 100000 bc to until around 39000 bc and from upper middle paleolithic from 39000 bc to 23000 and up, sorry and later upper paleolithic from 20000 23000 bc to 10000 bc okay and now first we will talk about early paleolithic okay so early paleolithic feature is that one what are the type of tools they use which type of tools they use and axe is there there is a major type of tools they use was and axes were they polished or unpolished unpolished it's very very important that is the tools during the early paleolithic times that is the overall paleolithic times they were using was unpolished tools you can see this one these are all majorly unpolished stone tools okay and even even in mesolithic also unpolished stone tools were used when was the first time polished stone to stone tools were used neolithic times we'll come to that one that is a neolithic time is the one important time period it's a revolutionary time period where first time new kind of innovations happened we'll come to which kind of innovations happened to this is early paleolithic you're getting it right these are very rough edge at the same time we are unpolished 
stone tools and then we'll come to other tools which are other tools use cleavers and choppers okay what are my cleavers and choppers what they were what purpose they were using hmm? they were also unpolished of course okay you can see the cleavers and choppers we saw the and acts cleavers as well as chopper chopping of what chopping of meat okay and cleaver is what are my cleaver cleaver is for killing also as well as cutting also that is one thing again these for all unpolished now which stone they are made up of and acts cleavers as well as we can talk about uh, that is choppers they were made up of which stone quartzite we said they are mainly made up of quartzite and that is the reason paleolithic people are early paleolithic people also called as which man quartzite men too do you think they use only quartzite no is any other stone tool they use are any other stone basalt also they also used basalt also too okay so quartzite also as well as basalt too okay this is which period we are talking about again early paleolithic okay so early paleolithic then this is all these things are very clear and then again we'll go to use of tools what is the use of these tools we already know what purpose this tool stone tools are used for hunting purpose okay then again digging purposes then again skinning purposes chopping purposes these are some of the major uses of the stone tools which are the stone tools and axe cleavers as well as choppers okay and now other features of this time period is that one did they stay at one place paleolithic people okay they were nom nomadic actually used for when they move with their cattles okay still cattle rearing was not at there okay so they were actually movers they did not stay at one place that is the reason we can say they are wanderers why they were wandering from one place to another place in search of food because I always told you that is in history focus on the why why they were moving okay so why they were using stone tools when you focus on the why you will get the answer the problem is that people will focus on when and where okay when you focus on the why when and where will become, become slightly easier okay so they were wanderers and that is the reason uh, they were moving from one place to another place in search of what in search of food so if they are moving from one place to another place did they have large communities or small communities small communities very very small communities did they having any kind of villages during that point of time now when was the first time villages emerged chalcolithic and neolithic mainly neolithic we can talk about because chalcolithic comes later after neolithic also okay chalcolithic and neolithic mainly we can talk about rural farming communities okay this is very very small communities and some other features we can say what is the dressing style hmm? what they were using hmm? the animal skins okay and then again they were using barks of trees also and they were using leaves too okay these are very very simple okay we can move, move for very faster and then fire for the first time used in which time period that is used in early paleolithic times and where the evidence of the fire use comes from karnul caves okay that is comes from karnul caves it is the first time fire was used and this fire was used by which human ancestors what is the species of humans homo sapiens is in presently but which human ancestor used that was used by homo erectus okay the first time it was used by homo erectus and that is first evidence of fire that is comes from early paleolithic from which caves karnul caves so where is karnul andhra okay did they have uh, any kind of speaking ability homo erectus hmm? homo erectus actual meaning is upright man okay did they have speaking ability did they have any kind of language hmm? did they have language did they speak huh? but anatomically possible okay anatomically it is possible but we don't have any proper evidences whether they had any kind of languages but anatomically homo erectus can speak but we don't have any kind of particular evidences okay so this is about the features of which time period we are talking about early paleolithic that is what we are comparing early paleolithic middle paleolithic as well as upper paleolithic also okay and we talked about what they did know what they did know they know how to eat food you said hunting and gathering what they did not know Hmm? agriculture definitely at the same time did not know any kind of house building no okay so all these things they did not know agriculture pottery metal writing all these things they did not. when was the first metal was used chalcol which metal was used copper metal okay so harappan civilization used which metal bronze and that is the reason harappan civilization also called as which age bronze age also okay they did not know writing right so when we talk about one culture which did not know writing and our sources of knowing about that culture comes from what archaeology and that is the reason paleolithic times mesolithic times and neolithic times are also called as which time prehistory that is the reason because when we talk about one culture where there is no writing is there and that history is called as which history prehistory and that is the reason we are talking about presently prehistory that is paleolithic mesolithic as well as neolithic too what is the proto history 
Can you give me an example of proto history? In a why industrial civilization is called as proto history? Hmm? Because they knew writing. We know the Arapan script is there. But have we been able to decipher that one? No. But Arapan civilization has been mentioned in another civilization. That is which civilization? Mesopotamian civilization. And that is the reason that history is called as proto history. Okay. So this is about early paleolithic. Now, where they are found? Which are the sites of this Paleolithic, Mesolithic, and Neolithic? Which river valleys mainly? Iran Valley, Belan Valley, Soan Valley also. That is Soan River Valley that is in Pakistan. And the one person who excavated these sites was DN Wadia. Okay. And then again, Tara Desert that is in Didwana, Rajasthan. And again, you can also talk about uh, this Didwana Rajasthan is also called as India's Old Y Gorge. This Old Y Gorge that is in Tanzania. Okay. This is one of the oldest paleo anthro excavation site. Okay. It is called as Didwana in Rajasthan is called as India's Old Y Gorge. And its Old Y Gorge is in Tanzania. Where is Tanzania? Which continent? African continent. Okay. So, it is called as Old Y Gorge of India. Okay. The place known for Paleo anthro excavation. Okay. And then Gujarat, which river valley? Iran River Valley. Okay. In Gujarat. And again in UP, we can talk about that is in Mirzapur, that is Belan Valley. Okay. So Mirzapur, Belan Valley. Understood, right? Okay. And what is the smart way of preparation of knowing about all the Paleolithic, Mesolithic, and Neolithic sites? What do you have to do? Mapping. Okay. So that is you take separate maps. And draw India map at the center, you can take Xerox also and make, make sure that is visualize it and just mark it on your own. Okay, that, that is the one smart level, level of preparation. That is, don't rely upon that is what are textbooks. Even though in textbooks, mapping will be there, but do it on your own. When you do on your own, there is a less chance you will forget that one. The more chances you will that will retain in your memory tube. Okay, do that for all the Paleolithic, Mesolithic, as well as Neolithic sites. How many of you already done that? I've seen only one person showed me today. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. See, out of how many? Out of nearly 50, I guess so. Only 4 to 5. And that is the reason UPSC success rate is also very less. Isn't it? That is, success rate is very less because there is time when we want to do something, but we don't do it. Everybody plans really well. Problem is that when execution of the plan is the problem. Okay, everybody knows what is the way to success, but the problem is that when execution is the major problem here. We know what to do that one. Please do this kind of things. Okay. And next one will come to, it is a special site. Okay. With respect to, in parallel that is Bimbetka. Where is Vimbedka? Madhya Pradesh, okay. And it is in the edge of which mountains? That is Vindhya Mountains. And one wildlife sanctuary is also there. In Vimbedka shelters, okay. It located in which wildlife sanctuary? Ratapani Wildlife Sanctuary. Because we know history has been linked with some geographical concept also. Like one Ajanta question was asked. Huh? Two years back. Ajanta Vagora River. This kind of questions. History has been linking with which one? Geography. It can be linked with polity also. It can be linked with environment also so interlinking of subjects also very very important too okay that is it is inside the ratapani wildlife sanctuary in which state obviously that is in madhya pradesh okay and why it is given the name of bimbedka because during mahabharata times when pancha pandavas they were in exile a bima used to live in this uh, caves and that is the reason it was given the name of bimbedka okay some mythology also we can link okay but upsc is quite vast it can link anything so we are linking mythology also, environment also, geography also, and even current affairs also. We can keep on linking everything to okay. And then again, it is also called as one kind of uh, fossil site also. Because before going to fossil site, what do you mean by fossils? Uh, well, the person who excavated this one is a V.S. Wakankar in 18, 1957, and before that it was ca called as a Buddhist site by one of the British officers who called as King Kaid in 1888. He defined this area, this Bimbet area as a Buddhist site, but later in 1957, V.S. Vakankar, that is, he made this, he excavated the site and gave it, gave it a proper definition, that is, it should belong to which site? It should belong to Paleolithic, okay? That is one thing. And at the same time, I told you it is a fossil site also. That is one fossil called as Dickinsonia, and that was also found in Bimbedka. Dickinsonia is an animal kingdom, it is a fossil. What do you mean by fossil? Huh? What do you mean by fossil? For remains of? Species, okay, remains of species. That is one fossil has been found. That is Dickinsonia fossil. That is from Bimbetka. Now, how the questions, how the questions can be formed out of all this? How the questions can be formed? I, I keep repeating. Always anticipate the questions. Isn't? Now consider the following statements. Okay, so Bimbetka is known for what the art sites of prehistory also. That is right. Isn't? 
and bimbedeka is also related to kind of a fossil site also so they can give different kind of statements over there okay so that is what that is keep anticipating what kind of questions can be asked but so far i think very very less questions have been asked from prehistory because most of the questions starts from ar around some from arapan civilization but there are two ways of looking at it one you have to focus on those areas where the questions are coming and you have to focus on those areas where the questions also have not been asked to because until last year no sports questions used to be asked but last year how many sports questions were asked two to three questions were asked right okay so that is upsc is quite unpredictable is it that is the reason you have to keep on reading or you have to keep giving more importance to the major areas where the questions are coming at the same time you also give importance to where the questions are also not asked also where the questions are not asked may the more chances my questions might come from like one area i already focused it on 1990 act look at how many questions have been asked last 10 years five questions have been asked 2012 2015 2016 and 2020 2022 there is a 50 50 chance you said that is how the how we will take the probability focus on the high yield areas also at the same time focus on the those areas which are not asked also that is very important too. and again now we will come to middle paleolithic now what is the difference early paleolithic middle paleolithic and upper paleolithic what is the major differences it is about the type of tools also it is about the type of tools too it is about the type of tools okay and now another person who established middle paleolithic is sd sankhalia okay sd sankhalia is the person who established middle paleolithic and it is a new sto stone style which is a new stone style what it is called as flints okay flints and flakes also okay what do you mean by flint and flakes means it is kind of scrapers and blade like tools okay so scrapers and blade like and what is a stone tool which stone was used for early paleolithic quartzite and now they are using which one hard silica okay so these are middle paleolithic stones okay these are middle paleolithic stones so flint industries it's also called as flint industries okay quartzite industries mainly early paleolithic and flint industries mainly middle paleolithic okay again sharp are they polished no all paleolithic as well as mesolithic are unpolished only the polished stone tool starts from which which region from which age neolithic age okay and now where this middle paleolithic also found they are found in again soan valley very soan valley pakistan present pakistan and again narmada valley tungabhadra river valleys okay luni valley and then again sangao caves that is in peshawar mm -hmm. okay sangao caves that is near peshawar pakistan and again nevasa in maharashtra okay on the banks of pravara pravara is one of the tributaries of godavari okay so i am trying to link geography also okay so geography environment whatever it is possible hmm? and should right so this which period this is we are talking about middle paleolithic okay and now we are coming into upper paleolithic what is the major difference if you if the question asked the major difference between early paleolithic middle paleolithic and upper paleolithic is mainly the type of stone tool very simple okay and now upper paleolithic again a new type of stone tools we will come to that one and before that one which human ancestors were there during early paleolithic homo erectus is it and now the present human species that is homo sapiens have been completely evolved and early paleolithic mainly which age ice age and right now the climate was becoming slightly warmer by upper paleolithic times the climate was becoming warmer and humid too okay and now the new type of tools are called as burins okay what are the burins these are burins okay so what is the difference you will see for early paleolithic middle paleolithic and upper paleolithic stone tools what is the purpose of burins could be very short but just we can see that one mainly used for engraving purposes okay it is mainly used for engraving purposes what am i engraving hmm? ah, to write to carve something okay that is a major meaning of it burins so if they ask for match the following isn't it early paleolithic what and axe cleavers and choppers okay and again second middle paleolithic was flint and at the same time upper paleolithic what burins one pair only two pair only three pair only four pair only okay ring a bell so you can answer that question only when you have proper actual knowledge in that one no elimination isn't upsc is also evolving you also have to evolve isn't you have to evolve along with how the what kind of questions they are asking to that is which age this is upper paleolithic to okay these are burins and now one of the another feature of upper paleolithic is in early paleolithic and middle paleolithic they were using which 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 tools stone tools now they started using bone tools also 
Okay, another feature of upper paleolithic is bone tools. I am going to focus on the unique features. In every whatever we are going to talk about, in every session or in every topic we are going to talk about, we are talking about unique features only. These bone tools were used for the first time during which stage? Upper paleolithic. And now where these bone tools are found? These bone tools are found in mainly Karnul, okay, as well as Muchatla, Chintamani, Gavi in Andhra Pradesh. Okay, these are the two areas where bone tools have been discovered from. Okay. So, if they ask the question, bone tools were discovered during Middle Paleolithic as well as Early Paleolithic, answer statement is right or wrong? Wrong. When was the first time bone tools were discovered from? They were dated to which time period? Upper Paleolithic time period. Okay. So, and where they are discovered from? Karnul. Now, Karnul is known for two things. Which are the two things Karnul is known for? One is fire. Second one is for bone tools also. So, these kind of things. Again, when the topic repeats, whatever you have already read, that is repeats, keep on uh, revising that one too. What you have already read, keep on revising those things soon okay and now there are some specific sites no need to get into all this kind of things you can just unuski that is in karnataka where is unuski which district of karnataka karnataka rotana western idra elaru almost elire unuski yadgiri okay and then again atirama pakkam okay that is in tamil nadu okay no need to write down all these things just i am giving you okay because all these things are there in your textbook so write down only unique things i keep repeating no need to write each and everything that is coming on the Pibidis, okay. And again, Didwana, where is Didwana that is in Rajasthan? What it is called as? I told you already. Old Y Garge. Where is Old Y Garge? That is in Tanzania. Okay. Then again, Atnora, Bimbetka, Adamgad, that is in Madhya Pradesh. And then again, Singroli, that is in Uttar Pradesh. Then in Odisha also, Mayur Banch. Okay. Odisha, that is in Mayur Banch. Okay. But now this Atnora again is very, very famous. Okay. Why Atnora is famous for? Hmm? I come to that one, Atnora. That is again, it is, is on the banks of river. Narmada, okay, so Atnora that is in the banks of river Narmada, it is known for one skull is discovered from here. That skull is that is skull is belong to Homo erectus. The skull is belong to Homo erectus, and that skull is given the name that is Narmada man. Okay, it is a fossil site also. Now, two fossil sites. These are two fossil sites. Bimbedka as well as Atnora. Where is Atnora? Madhya Pradesh. On the banks of which river? Narmada River. Okay, so Atnora is a fossil site. Okay. They can give some kind of hints also. You say they can give you hints and ask you to identify that one particular state, one particular place also. Then consider the following statement: This place is located inside Ratapani Wildlife Sanctuary. This site is also fossil site. Which site we are talking about? Bimbedka. Is right? Now consider the following statement: That is, this one skull has been discovered. This skull has been given the name of Narmada. Okay, Narmada man. Okay, and this fossil is. The, Related to Homo erectus, which are the following sites which are talking about. Which site we are talking about? Atnora. Okay, so these about the Paleolithic. You said the entire Paleolithic, early Paleolithic, middle Paleolithic, as well as upper Paleolithic. Okay, so now we'll come to. Did they have any kind of hobbies? Paleolithic people. What kind of hobbies they had? TikTok reels, hmm? Instagram reels. No right. Then what kind of hobbies they had? Called as artistic activities. Hmm? That is practice painting. When was the first time painting began? Upper Paleolithic. That is, it first began during Upper Paleolithic. Okay. Uh, this is a famous painting site, Bimbedka. That is in Madhya Pradesh. Famous painting site is in Madhya Pradesh. That is in Bimbedka. And what subjects they painted on? Hmm? Animals. Okay. The subjects they painted on animals, man, geometric symbols. Okay. These are some of the famous uh, painting subjects. Okay. Are they were they 3D diagrams? No. Then what? Linear or we can say line drawings. Okay, they were very very line drawings. Okay, and in these drawings gives us what kind of uh, sources about the Paleolithic people or what kind what we can know about Paleolithic people through these paintings or from these paintings, their social life, okay, their religious life, okay, their hunting practices and everything too. And also we also come to know about which animals they knew and they did not know. And one animal is missing from this painting is that one. Snake. Okay. Now these the paintings that is line drawings we talked about. But art and culture, I will take it as a separate. Okay. First, we will complete all the politics as well as the cultural aspect, and art and culture I will take it as a separate tomorrow. Okay. So that will go from again from prehistory to again until the medieval times too. That will take will go in one way. So the chronology will be there. Chronology is very, very important because sometimes chronological questions are also being asked, right? Okay, we will solve some PYQs too. Okay. And now some other facts, there is one person, Robert Bruce Foote, who is he? Ah, is the first person to identify the 
prehistoric sites okay that is the systematic research of prehistoric remains in india okay so that is in he discovered one and axe that and axe is discovered from which place palavaram where is palavaram in near chennai okay and that is called as palavaram and axe also that is in 1863 okay that is the first time is the first person who actually defined who actually started a systematic excavation systematic research about which time period prehistoric time period okay that is in 1863 robert bruce foot and we discuss about three person four person names so far robert bruce foot sd sankalia then again dn wadia and again, we also talk about one more person that is vs vakankar even though questions have not been asked but mantra is simple hope for the best prepare for the worst okay always hope for the best hope for the best is that one that easy questions will come prepare for the worst is that one so for difficult questions also difficult questions you should prepare i am not saying you should entirely do away with the difficult questions but do not lose focus on the basic questions and one more task again i want to give you today is that one so in 2 to 3 days i think go through last 5 years question papers okay i already given to some of pep students how many have you done that 1 2 3 okay no, not bad go to 2018 paper 2019 2020 21 22 just write down just note down how many basic questions are there how many basic questions what are my basic questions core questions we can say huh? where you can answer those questions from ncrts from spectrum per se okay i am from lakshmi kant we can say okay from the basics or from gc leon then so where you can answer these questions okay just note down how many questions are there i think what is the average of around 50 sent so around 50 to 55 even if you take only 50 itself only rest 50 questions you don't even require if you answer those 50 questions properly what is the how many marks you are going to score more than 100 of course taking care of negatives properly and what is the cutoff nowadays general merit i'm talking about see solving only basic questions only basic question and core questions you can still score above the cutoff marks what the people do is that one what the most of the people do the mistake is that one they focus on the difficult questions they will try to answer the difficult questions yes it's good thing to do yes you have to try to answer those questions at the same time do not lose focus on the basic questions are you going to do that okay i can't hear are you going to do it not please do it okay if you do that at least you have you will be taking a massive step towards your prelims preparation your prelims it will take around 3 to 4 hours not more than that okay you just have to note down just have to note down how many questions are there i am not even asking to separate separate those questions also i'm just saying how many questions are there if you invest 3 to 4 hours you will enjoy 2 hours on the prelims day okay if you want to enjoy those 2 hours so make sure that you invest this 3 to 4 hours okay and next now we'll come into mesolithic times that is paleolithic is done so mesolithic that is from 10000 bc to 7000 bc what is my mesolithic hmm? that is middle stone age also called as transitory phase also it belong to which period holocene period the pleistocene then again holocene okay and then again it is time period between 10000 bc to 7000 bc and is a transition phase between which two time periods paleolithic as well as neolithic why it is transition what is my transition what is my transition hmm? what is transition some kind of new kind of features are evolving okay that new kind of features are giving some kind of foundation to next kind of culture too okay so now we'll come to what are the main features so which type of stone tools were using early paleolithic middle and upper paleolithic their big stone tools are small stone tools very big stone tools and now we can see that is reduction in the size of stone tools and that is the reason they are called as microlith okay the stone tools are used during mesolithic times are called as microlith and they have the size that is not more than 5 cm okay the stone tools not more than 5 cm and made up of silica chert and chalcedony okay the quartzite basalt silica and now silica chert and chalcedony and they had pointed tools also sharp edges and you can see the mesolithic stone tools very very small okay microliths not more than 5 cm okay and now what is the other use of the stone tools hmm? what is the other use of the stone tools can you kill an animal from this by striking is it possible hmm? no but what you can use from this you can make bow and arrow you can use it as a composite tool that is spear and arrowheads is it that is you can starting the use of bow and arrow you can use the stone tools that small stone tools as spear heads as well as arrowheads because there was no metal instead of metal they were using what they were using 
stones only the small stone tools okay and can we say hunting become very quite easier because now they can do the hunting from the distance itself only from a very far distance because in paleolithic they have to go very near to the animal very near to the animal to strike it now they can do it from a distance and now what is the subsistence did they stop hunting no hunting is continued gathering is also continued okay at the same time fishing there is a new kind of evidence that is coming in mesolithic is that one fishing where do we have the evidence of fishing from the paintings okay the fishing evidence come from mesolithic paintings because when was the painting began upper paleolithic and now the painting exploded during which time period mesolithic time period we'll come to that one we'll see in art and culture that is paintings and everything that is fishing and of course for the first time domestication of animals started okay so domestication of animals now the unique thing about mesolithic is small stone tools that is what is the maximum centimeter 5 centimeters and now another unique thing is that one fishing also and at center domestication of animals okay you can just write domestication to did they start settling at one place right now hmm? did they start what is what did it is called as settling at one place is called as what sedentary lifestyle did they start the sedentary lifestyle no but they have a tendency to stay longer because hunting becomes quite easier it is a reason now the they can stay for little bit more longer still they are wanderers and movers only and the pottery for the first time actually the pottery generally associated to neolithic times okay why pottery comes we will come to that one but most of the time in mesolithic time mesolithic art sites or mesolithic sites pottery is absent but it can be found in two areas they are present in lagnanj that is in gujarat as well as in kaimu region of mirzapur okay these are the two areas where we can see pottery in mesolithic times also okay but is it enough to say that pottery was no, was known during the mesolithic times no because pottery was first attributed to which time period neolithic times isn't but few mesolithic sites they have pottery that is lagnanj that is in gujarat as well as is kaimur region of uttar pradesh okay and option is nothing and again artistic activities we already seen more paintings of this period compared to which time period upper paleolithic okay and where these are found these paintings which areas caves mainly these are found in caves on rocks in caves and what is this painting show we already know that one what they show about their social life their economic life also their hunting practices their again at the same time fishing practices burials practices and show their social economic as well as we can say religious lives too so overall they talk about their lifestyles that is what how we come to know about the mesolithic times paleolithic times sorry as well as the neolithic times through their painting so like one main question was also asked even though it is prelims class but i talk about this one main question last year last year it was asked about hmm? in history one how sculpture of vijayanagara times medieval time period talk about the lifetime of that one particular time period isn't socio cultural time period that is also there okay so that is one and now we'll come to mesolithic art sites we already know that is bimbedka and there are overall 150 sites across india but where is the first time it was discovered which hills sohagi ghat isn't so i get kaimur hills this is the first art site that was to be discovered okay is a in 1867 first rock paintings in india were discovered in sohagi ghat that is in kaimur hills that is in uttar pradesh who is the person who discovered hmm? archibald carlyle okay by archaeologists archibald carlyle is the person who discovered this site that is sohagi ghat where are others can be found we know already bimbedka okay so no need to write all this bimbedka caves karwar jora and katotia that is in madhya pradesh then you talk about uh, sundargar and Sam sambalpur in odisha and you talk about ilutu guha okay that is in kerala okay and again azamgarh pratapgarh and mirzapur that is in up okay so these are some of the places and again i am keep telling you that is make a map map of all these different art sites also as well as different paleolithic sites mesolithic sites as well even ancient ports also some kind of questions have been asked we'll come to the ports also we'll give you the names too but your responsibility is to put all these places on a map that is very important okay and again mesolithic sites other one very important mesolithic site very very important what is the best excavated site which site that is in rajasthan on the banks of river kotari bagor is very important that is bagor in rajasthan on the banks of river kotari one of the best excavated sites of mesolithic okay that is properly dated properly dated to which time period mesolithic time period okay and it is only site that is horizontally excavated and generally the prehistoric sites are excavated vertically and this site is excavated horizontally they can give the hints they can give the hints to identify this one particular 
say it also what is the difference between vertical excavation as well as horizontal excavation horizontal line now going from this to this one okay vertical line now keep digging what is the use of huh? if you want to know about only one time period there is horizontal excavation if you want to know about different time period then you will do vertical excavation okay there is mainly horizontal excavation and which river banks banks of river kotari and of course there is in rajasthan you can also see some sand dunes also in that area you can see sand dunes too and this is the first site to give the earliest evidence of domestication so domestication began during which time period mesolithic and in mesolithic one site that gives evidence of domestication is that one bagor and domestication of which animal dog okay wild dog that is domestication of dog okay we'll focus on only the unique things okay unique things too so bagor known for domestication okay next one more site mesolithic site hmm? that is very important that is sarai naharai okay what it is known for it is known for it is near Allahabad, Prayagraj, or Pratapgad region. That is in UP. Okay, oldest pottery in the world that has been discovered from this region. Okay, that is around 9000 BC. Oldest pottery in the world. But this pottery used for food purpose, food storing purposes, or for what purpose? For burial purposes, not for food purposes. Okay, it is used as a burial object. The oldest pottery in the entire world that has been discovered from Sarai Naharai. Okay, we discussed two fossil sites. Which are two fossil sites we discovered? Bimbedka and Atnora and Sarai Nahara is also a fossils of Homo sapiens. Homo sapiens fossil also discovered from Sarai Nahara. Okay, which fossil? Fossil of Homo sapiens. Okay, and it is the oldest also. Okay, oldest remains of Homo sapiens in entire South Asia. Okay, we discussed about Narmada man. We are discussing about now Sarai Nahara man. Okay, so this is about Mesolithic. Okay, this is about so what are the unique things about Mesolithic compared to Paleolithic? What are the new things we learnt in Mesolithic? Domestication, bow and arrow, small tone tools, at the same time, fishing also. Okay, that are the, some, some of the major new, unique things about Mesolithic. And now we can come to very, very important that is Neolithic. That is 7000 BC to around 1000 BC. Okay. And that old stone age, middle stone age, it is called as what? New stone age. It is called as new stone age. Okay, around 7000 BC onwards. Also called as Neolithic Revolution. Why it is called as revolution? What do you mean by revolution? Hmm? Why it is called as revolution? What is the reason? Some transformations happened at the center, some kind of new innovations of these people. What are the new innovations? Hmm? Agriculture, pottery. Okay, pottery is pottery was there in Mesolithic, but the real pottery we definitely ascribe to which time period? Neolithic only. Okay, we will see that one. What are these new innovations? First and foremost is that one people started producing their own food. That is, agriculture began. Okay, so agriculture began during Neolithic times. And new type of stone tools also came out. Which type of stone tools? Polished and long. Okay, long stone tools and blades and knives. You can see the picture. Okay, how the differences is there? Okay, the difference of early Paleolithic stone tools, middle Paleolithic stone tools at the same time now. And microlithic tool, stone tools also we seen at the same time Neolithic stone tools. How did they polish this one? Hmm? What method they use for polishing? Hmm? What they use for polishing? Hmm? They are just rubbing. They are rubbing of one stone tool with some kind of powder. That's it. Okay, so they use that one. And some other innovation is that one to store food. What they needed right now? Pottery. Okay, isn't right? Now they started developing agriculture. Now they have to store the food. To store the food, what they require? Pottery. Okay, which color pottery? Black and graver. Okay, black and graver also. And this pottery was plain pottery or polished pottery? Polished. Okay, this was polished pottery, also impressed pottery. What am I impressed means? Impressed means having some kind of designs on that one, having some kind of impressions of clay, shells, and everything. Okay, so it's burnish also, it's called as burnish also called as polished pottery. And what's in this? Now, how it was made? Handmade or will made? First it was handmade and then it was wheel made. Okay, it was made first first in hand, then it was wheel made. Okay. And what are the other innovation happened? We talked about three innovation. One is agriculture, second one is polished stone tools, third one is pottery. What is the fourth innovation? Hmm? Sedentary life. Okay, so it begins some kind of a natural tendency because now they are producing their own food, they no need to move from one place to other places. And that is the reason we can say they started settling at 
one places and that's already emerging village communities okay so rural farming communities or village communities we can say and what's in this and to settle what they required new kind of innovation houses the required houses houses of what houses made up of made up of mud reed also called as grass okay and these houses were given different kind of structure also some kind of we can say talk about shapes also that is circular shapes as well as rectangular shapes so that shows which knowledge circular shapes and rectangular shapes geometry knowledge it will mathematical knowledge also okay so that is mud and reed houses at the same time circular as well as rectangular shapes what is the sixth innovation we can say another innovation happened hmm? that is agriculture okay so agriculture is that is one of dressing innovation there is a sixth one is that one dressing innovation that is cotton and wool cotton and wool was introduced for the first time so if they knew cotton if they knew wool if they were wearing cloths which artistic activity they knew which craft activity they knew weaving so and therefore they knew the art of weaving cloths see one relates to other that is the reason i told you that is focused on the why why that is why that is happening because this is happening okay that is focused on the why knew the art of weaving cloths okay and what's in this and then some kind of innovation that is we can say that is division of labor on the basis of age as well as gender okay so division of labor because as the society was progressing and they were giving different duties to different persons to okay that is society was progressing they need for additional labor now division of labor was also starting to emerge during which time period neolithic time period okay so six you know we are six innovation agriculture polish stone tools and then again dressing innovation pottery innovation settling at one place and now the division of labor also okay and now first neolithic settlement which is the first neolithic settlement mehargar where is mehargar pakistan balochistan okay and why mehargar is famous for it is the first agricultural settlement not just in india it is in entire south asia it is the first agricultural settlement in entire south asia so which crops wheat barley and cotton okay wheat barley as well as cotton too because we already know that is neolithic people knew about cotton and wool too do you think all the neolithic culture in entire india emerged at the same time period because when it was evolved it is evolved during 7000 bc right when it is evolved in south india as well as in eastern india also it evolved in different time period okay there are some little variations in emergence of neolithic culture that is in south india emerged around 2500 bc and in eastern india emerged around 1000 bc so first emerged during north india or north western part of the india that is in balochistan so they can ask the question that is neolithic settlements or neolithic culture emerged in india during which time period 7000 bc but did it emerge at the same time simultaneously all over india no there are some little variations are there okay so different times of time period then again which crops they produce no need to write we already know okay that is barley okay they can wheat okay cotton also but there are some little variations we can say the people from eastern india is an eastern india what kind of crops they were used to be growing eastern part of the india can we say rice will be domination rice is domination okay some other subsistence also there that is domestication of animals when did domestication of animals began mesolithic times which was the first domesticated animal dog where the domestication evidence come from bagor bagor that is in rajasthan which river banks kothari river banks you said that is keep on revising the more you revise more you can remember that one there are some unique neolithic settlements are there especially in kashmir two neolithic settlements in kashmir is famous which one burzom as well as gufkral some unique neolithic settlement that is in kashmir and that is known for dwelling pits and instead of houses they used to live in pits also okay and you can see the pits okay dwelling pits that is in kashmir okay and when was the first time bone tools were discovered which time period upper paleolithic and this kashmir sites is also known for variety of stone tools also as well as bone tools also okay so different varieties of bone tools have been discovered and another unique feature is that one graveyards within the households they buried the dead people within the households okay graveyards within the households okay so that is in kashmir and these dead people they were buried with what they buried only the body along with their stone tools also pets also okay so pet animals were also buried along with them at the same time they were buried with their tools also and what that shows 
burying with the stone their tools burying with their pets shows what belief what religious belief after life that shows the after life belief system and that indirectly gives you evidence about which activities of the neolithic people religious activity it gives about religious activity and where this unique settlement that is in one settlement that is called as gufkral that is in jammu and kashmir and that is known for stone tools pit dwelling okay and then graveyards located within households okay and again second one is that one burzoham it means place of birth burzoham it is a basic meaning is place of birth and burzoham we can see lake side pits okay so lake side pits can be found in burzoham okay and one of the evidence of that is dogs buried with their masters i told you that pets are buried with their masters too okay so two sites in neolithic culture of kashmir there is gufkral as well as in burzoham okay so known for unique settlements and one more unique settlement called as chirand where is chirand bihar what is chirand known for bone tools okay that is next one is that one that is chirand that is in patna known for bone tools as well as antlers tools also okay so these are the bone tools as well as antlers tools okay some very very unique that is what we are going to focus on okay. unique neolithic settlements three we discuss gufkral then again burzoham then we are coming into chirand okay chirand that is in patna and another unique settlements are there koldifa and mahagara okay what they are known for hmm? there is unique settlement that is koldivi and mahagara in up that is for rice cultivation known for rice cultivation okay told you eastern india is an eastern india known for what eastern india known for rice cultivation okay that is koldivi and mahagara in karnataka also some unique neolithic settlements are there hmm? they are known for different activities hmm? which one hmm? muski okay and then again mm -hmm. that is muski brahmagiri piklial they are known for cattle herding okay now we are coming into cattle rearing as well as cattle herding also that is come from muski brahmagiri as well as piklihal that is in karnataka all these are in karnataka and then again budiyal or tekkalakoda that is in bellari uh, they are known for community food preparation they are known for community food preparation okay and all these are located in which state that is in karnataka okay you can just write down this okay so muski brahmagiri and piklihal known for cattle herding and again budihal okay tekkalakota they are known for community food preparation community food they can ask for match the following i told you okay they can put one statement also that's why i told you that is keep on anticipate the questioning okay what kind of questions can come from this areas okay and then muski muski is known for what ashokan inscription muski is on the banks of river muski okay it is on the name come from banks of river muski and discovery of a minor rock edict of ashoka okay minor rock edict and ashoka who discovered this one the person called as bidan okay person called as c bidan in 1915 okay and why this inscription is famous this edict is famous because he mentions the name of ashoka only four inscription mentions the name of ashoka is a major rock edict or minor rock edicts it is a minor rock edict when you come to maurya so we'll, i will give you those sites okay there is a first edict of emperor ashoka that contains the name of ashoka and before that one which name was being used devanapiya piyadasi okay so these were some of the names for being used and these about neolithic okay so we discussed about paleolithic mesolithic neolithic okay another day it would have taken more than 3 hours or something like that okay we completed within 1 hour because i think all of you have read all these things already right okay so uh, is it helping in the revision definitely is not is content is good you want you need more content also okay it's going to come okay next we'll come into chalcolithic age okay that is between 3000 bc to 800 500 bc okay so why chalcolithic is famous for metal use okay it is known for metal use which metal copper okay and they occasionally also use bronze also okay occasionally they also used bronze too okay they used bronze also so that is the reason it is called as which age copper stone age still we are in stone age one because stone tools were also there and copper tools also now are the new a kind of innovation we can say that is copper stone age okay so stone tools as well as copper tools what is subsistence pattern did this did they have agriculture 
yes agriculture contain it too okay so that is agriculture we can have wheat rice bajra pulses and i can told you that is on the eastern side indians they were using which one rice as well as fish also even today bengalis they use fish you said and that is alcoholic that is been continued for a very very long period of time okay so fish and rice too any doubts in this and which animals they knew okay that is cow sheep goats buffaloes hunted deer okay so can we say diversified economy how do you say it was a diversified economy look at the crops and look at the animals they are rearing and this animals were used for what purpose dairying purposes or for food purposes mainly hmm? mainly for consumption purposes mainly for food purposes most of the animals they mainly used for food purposes because dairying is quite later too okay and this about subsistence pattern of chalcolithic now if they ask the question the subsistence pattern during the prehistoric times as a time progress it kept on diversifying yes or no yes isn't because when the first time paleolithic what are the subsistence pattern was only hunting and right now it is coming into agriculture as well as some kind of rearing of animals too and some other features also that is rural farming communities and to bring the land under cultivation and they have to clear the forest and they clear the forest with metal or through burning burning and that is the reason it is called which agriculture slash and burn agriculture slash and burn agriculture so can we say they were living settled life also okay settled life and at the same time new kind of pottery come up which kind of pottery that is yellow and orange color and that is called as ochre color okay that ochre color pottery and that had lot of designs on that pottery and the designs is lines design very very simple designs of this pottery too okay simple designs did they know the art of writing no still no writing when was the first time writing came up arapan civilization but which was the first writing to be deciphered deciphered first writing that was deciphered hmm? which indian oldest writing was first deciphered ashokan inscriptions right that is the first writing to be deciphered in india okay then again clothes of course that was also there weaving then at the same time grave goods what are my grave goods hmm? what are my grave goods that is burying people with their tools also are with their pets also okay and then you can also talk about buried under the floor of the house in a particular direction what is the direction north south direction as well as in east and west direction okay so particular in partic particular direction north and south as well as east and west and which type of religious activities we come to know about chalcolithic people hmm? what kind of chalco what kind of religious activities we know about them mother goddess worship okay there was mother goddess worship too because we have the evidence of nude clay figures and that new clay figures actually give the evidence about mother goddess worship okay now what type of new type of new type of tools came up right now copper tools copper tools now came up okay now we can say variety of copper tools like rings spirits harpoons small axe okay then again swords you can see the copper stone tools sorry copper tools along with stone tools now they have copper tools also okay now copper tools will be you can just write down rings okay spearheads harpoons okay small axe swords if these tools are there copper tools are being produced which profession can be seen hmm? smithing that is copper smith can be found send that is the reason i told you that focus on the why the copper smith can be found here because you need some kind of professional persons to make these tools and this professions were called as copper smiths and over a period of time what happened these professions turned into castes nothing else okay so we talk about guilds when it coming coming hours we are going to talk about guilds of different association different arts and crafts also and those guilds are turned into ultimately what turned into different castes only okay that is one thing and now we'll coming into other facts of chalcolithic they use mud bricks instead of burnt bricks burnt bricks are used in which culture we already know indus valley civilization but chalcolithic people use burnt bricks okay and at the same time we have already discussed about the bull a terracotta bull and that is also talks about their religious culture okay that is mother goddess culture is from nude clay figures and one terracotta bull is gives evidence about their religious culture okay and uh, religious activities and in different types of burial practices also there that is called as fractional burial only one part of the body is buried the other part is left it in the open that is called as fractional burial okay very very unique that is fractional burial 
okay like only head is being buried okay rest of the body is left in the open that kind of fractional burial is there that is in which culture that is chalkolithi can we see fractional burial in arapan culture also is there fractional burial in arapan culture hmm? in only one place that is found will come to arapan culture also now which are the sites of chalkolithi which specific sites are there very famous specific sites hmm? that is we can talk about ahar valley okay gilland that is in banas valley in rajasthan okay there so many are there in maharashtra we can see so many cultures okay that is daimabad sonagav nasik okay then again maizdal pandur rajar dibin west bengal okay and again kayata malwa iran in madhya pradesh and these different sites have local variations in culture also that is called as jorve culture okay that is called as malwa culture okay ahar culture banas culture these kind of different cultures are also but we will only discuss only one culture that is jorve culture okay we are only discussing about jorve culture okay that is in between 1400 bce to 1000 bce okay this is the largest settlement in daimabad region this is the largest settlement in daimabad region and why it is famous it is known for mud fortification and arappan said fortification arappan said citadels right and citadels are made up of which material bricks is it but right now these people are using fortification made up of mud they can compare they can compare two culture also they can compare culture of arappan civilization as well as with chalcolithic culture too okay that is mud fortification can be found in jorve culture and again planning of houses can also be seen here planning of houses that is a rectangular houses and planning of streets planning of lanes so where we can see all the urban planning and town planning which culture again arappan culture but we also have other culture where this some kind of little bit plannings were there and that culture is jorve culture again jorve culture related to which age chalcolithic okay we can they can simply put one statement in some of the chalcolithic cultures we can see little bit planning and that planning can be seen in which culture jorve culture okay and uh, we can also see chief dam also here okay and kind of new kind of chief houses some kind of large houses we can see and some different kind of burial practices some feet cut off burial practices some unique burial practices can also be seen in chalcolithic culture what all this again suggests fractional burial that is feet cut off dead were buried with their feet cut off all these things they show different kind of belief system different kind of unique local belief systems also too okay and again you can see this burial system in a urn what is my urn kind of a pot okay that inside that urn you can placing some of the body parts isn't and that can be seen in chalcolithic and arappan civilization can see all these kind of burial practices we'll come to that one particularly one place is there you must have heard about r37 symmetry edge culture hmm? symmetry edge culture as well r37 will come to that one too okay then again little bit trade evidence is also there and some of the other sites within jorve culture that is inamgav prakash as well as walki okay these about jorve culture okay jorve culture again jorve it is related to which culture again chalcolithic all these are chalcolithic only very very unique i am focusing on very very unique cultures within all the cultures so paleolithic mesolithic neolithic okay and some one more prehistoric culture is there you must have heard about ash mounds what is ash mounds mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this is about chalcolithic it done with chalcolithic now we are coming into ash mounds okay where this particular culture can be seen particularly mm -hmm. particularly in karnataka okay this ash mound culture can be seen in karnataka itself only okay so we know that one neolithic ash mounds that is in man made landscapes found in southern india mainly in south india okay particularly two districts of karnataka that is ballari and bagalkote okay it's particularly two districts ballari and bagalkote and with a time period that is between 3000 bc to 1200 bc okay so neolithic ash mounds what is ash we know that ash is in kannada we can say budi okay so all these mounds are made up of mainly ashes okay. they are made up of ash and that is the reason places are also named as budiyal buditippa okay budigunta okay so that is the names also come out of this particular mounds only okay and what is the largest neolithic ash mound site that is budigunta that is in balari that is the largest site that is the largest ash mound site so who created this ash mounds why they created this hmm? did they have a lot of time hmm? what are they not preparing for upsc okay hmm? why did they create this one because there are a lot of theories about this one 
there are a lot of theories how they how the, these areas could have been created there are a lot of conjecture a lot of hypothesis we don't want to get into those things and that is as you can see one more area that is in ballari that is kappagallu okay another ash mound these have been survived for very very long period of time for thousands of years these have been survived that is in ash mound in kappagallu and various theories of origin they say some mythological origin theory is there no need to write don't write just understand that is mythological origin is that one gods have burned some kind of evil spirits or we can say rakshasas and pishachas and then say uh, these are burned by the grazers livestock grazing for livestock grazing they needed some kind of places that is the reason this for burn down also that is also there one more reason could be volcanic too okay so all these are various theories are there we don't want to get into this one okay so there is a lot of conjunction as well as hypothesis and opinions are there we don't need to get into that one and now we'll come to megalithic ash mounds are very very simple and largest ash mounds site is which one that is in ballari budigunta okay now what is my megalith mega means what and megalithic culture found mainly in which region of india that is mainly in south india okay so across india is also found mainly in south india this ash mound culture and megalithic culture mainly found in south india but it can also be seen in one other river valley that is in indus river valley but majority majority that is found in south india okay and this which age culture this is chalcolithic culture we know that is copper age culture and this is iron age okay this is the iron age culture okay they can give match the following ivc bronze age chalcolithic copper age then again megalithic iron age okay iron age culture too mega means what mega means great okay and lith means stones and that is monuments built out of big stones okay so megalith is nothing but it is a monuments built out of large stones and that is the reason name comes from megalith okay you are getting a difference right early early paleolithic middle paleolithic upper paleolithic chalcolithic and then again now we are coming into megalithic and you can see some pictures okay what are they okay probably they must have had some kind of ritualistic association okay it might be a kind of a memorial stones also okay it could be different reasons why they created all these things it could be for different reasons also and where they are located actually generally hmm? where they are located within the settlements or away from the settlements these are located away from the settlements region okay so megaliths they are not located in inside the settlements they are located away from the settlements okay this could be burial grounds also they must have had ritual significance also at the same time they could be memorial stones also okay so they are always located away from the settlements region and they had different designs also right you can see that different designs megaliths have some kind of ad form some kind of circular forms okay so different types of designs are also there now what all things discovered from these areas in megalithic culture which objects have been discovered hmm? which objects have been discovered already told you which culture this is iron age culture that is iron objects have been discovered animal bones and new type of pottery that is red and black pottery what is neolithic pottery black and grey what is chalcolithic pottery orange and yellow that is ochre color and now new type of pottery that is red and black pottery and roman coins also have been discovered roman coins means which area roman roman empire is where where it is located europe if roman coins have been found in megalithic culture what it shows trade okay that is the implied implied we can say fact over there the implied fact is that roman context was there that is gold and silver ornaments also okay these are all these things located from where megalithic culture okay so megalithic sites region where the megalithic sites are located in karnataka also mainly kerala as well as in tamil nadu okay so which are the megalithic sites you can talk about irebenekal nilasakal that is in shivamogga okay you can just write down this one brahmagiri in karnataka okay then kodakkallu okay then again jonapani <coughs> in maharashtra what is the one famous site in tamil nadu adi chanalur in amravati in andhra pradesh also okay amravati in andhra pradesh as well as lastly adi chanalur so this is the end of prehistory okay got it okay is it fast of course it is fast okay of course it is fast okay there is no debate on that one it is definitely fast are you getting value out of it is it revisiting all the things hello odide yavaga onsali odide 
ಹಾ ಬರ್ತಾ ಇದೆಯಲ್ಲ ವಾಪಸ್ ಕೀಪ್ ಆನ್ ರಿವೈಸಿಂಗ್ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ಒನ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ಐ ಕೀಪ್ ಆನ್ ಸೆಸ್ಸಿಂಗ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಮೈ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಟ್ ಒನ್ ರಿವೈಸ್ ಆಸ್ ಮೆನಿ ಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಆಸ್ ಪಾಸಿಬಲ್ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ನಾವ್ ವಿಲ್ ಕಮ್ ಟು ಅರಪನ್ ಸಿವಿಲೈಸೇಷನ್ ವಿಲ್ ಸಿ ಸಮ್ ಅರಪನ್ ಸಿವಿಲೇಷನ್ ದೆನ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎ ಬ್ರೇಕ್ ಓಕೆ ಐ ನೋ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೋರಿಂಗ್ ಐ ನೋ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಟು ಮಚ್ ಇನ್ಫಾರ್ಮೇಶನ್ ಐ ನೋ ದಟ್ ಒನ್ ಓಕೆ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಕಮ್ ಟು ಅರಪನ್ ಸಿವಿಲೇಷನ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಕಾಲ್ ಎಸ್ ವ್ಯಾಲಿ ಕಲ್ಚರ್ ಟು ಸೊ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಟೈಮ್ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಅರಪನ್ ಸಿವಿಲೈಸೇಷನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ರೀಸನ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎವಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಅರಪನ್ ಸಿವಿಲೈಸೇಷನ್ ವೈ ಅರಪನ್ ಸಿವಿಲೇಷನ್ ಎವಾಲ್ಡ್ ವೈ ಇಟ್ ಎವಾಲ್ಡ್ ರೈಟ್ ನಾವ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಆರ್ ಅಂಟರ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಗ್ಯಾದರ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಬ್ ಬೈ ನಿಯರ್ಲಿ ತ್ರೀ ಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಅಪಂಡ್ ಸೆಟಲ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಸೆಟಲ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಫಾರ್ ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ಬಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ರೂರಲ್ ಫಾರ್ಮಿಂಗ್ ಕಮ್ಯುನಿಟೀಸ್ ವಿಲೇಜಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎವಾಲ್ವಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ನೌ ದಿ ಸರ್ಪ್ಲಸ್ ಪ್ರೊಡಕ್ಷನ್ ವಾಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ನೌ ವಾಟ್ ಯು ಡೂ ವಿತ್ ದಿ ಸರ್ಪ್ಲಸ್ ಪ್ರೊಡಕ್ಷನ್ ಯು ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಎಕ್ಸ್ಚೇಂಜ್ ಯು ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಟ್ರೇಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಟ್ರೇಡ್ ವಿಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ ಇಟ್ ಎ ಮಾರ್ಕೆಟ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಮಾರ್ಕೆಟ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಎವಾಲ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ವಾಟ್ ಅರ್ಬನ್ ಏರಿಯಾ ಅಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಅರ್ಬನ್ ಏರಿಯಾ ಇಸ್ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ಬಟ್ ಮೈಂಜದಾರ ಅರಪ್ಪ ಕಾಲಿಬಂಗನ್ ಓಕೆ ಕೋಡಿಜಿ ಚನುದಾರ ಆಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ನಾವು ವಿರ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಟೈಮ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಲೈನ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ತ್ರೀ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಫೈವ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಬಿ ಸಿ ಟು ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಬಿ ಸಿ ಅರೌಂಡ್ ಫೈವ್ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಹೇಗೋ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಸೆಪರ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ ವಿಚ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ವಿಚ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಸಬ್ ಕಾಂಟಿನೆಂಟ್ ನಾರ್ತ್ ವೆಸ್ಟರ್ನ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಸಬ್ ಕಾಂಟಿನೆಂಟ್ ಓಕೆ ವಿಚ್ ರಿವರ್ ಬ್ಯಾಂಕ್ಸ್ ಮೇನ್ಲಿ ಇಂಡಸ್ ರಿವರ್ ವ್ಯಾಲಿ ದೆನ್ ರಾವಿ ಗಾಗರ್ ಆಕ್ರ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಓಕೆ ಅಟ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಪಾಕಿಸ್ತಾನ್ ರಾಜಸ್ಥಾನ್ ಗುಜರಾತ್ ಓಕೆ ಮೇಜರ್ಲಿ ರಿವರ್ ವ್ಯಾಲೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಸ್ ರಾವಿ ಗಾಗರ್ ಆಕ್ರ ಗಾಗರ್ ಆಕ್ರ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಕಾಡಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಲೊಕೇಟ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಇಂಡಸ್ ರಿವರ್ ವ್ಯಾಲಿ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಕಾಡಸ್ ಇಂಡಸ್ ವ್ಯಾಲಿ ಸಿವಿಲೈಸೇಷನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವಿಸ್ ಅ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಸಿಟಿ ಟು ಬಿ ಡಿಸ್ಕವರ್ಡ್ ಅರಪ್ಪ ಅಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ರೀಸನ್ ಎನ್ಸ್ ದಿ ನೇಮ್ ಅರಪನ್ ಸಿವಿಲೈಸೇಷನ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಅಂಡ್ ವಿಚ್ ಮೆಟಲ್ ವಾಸ್ ಯೂಸ್ಡ್ ಬ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ರೀಸನ್ ಇಟ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಕಾಡಸ್ ಬ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ ಏಜ್ ಓಕೆ ಬ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ ಏಜ್ ಹೂ ಆರ್ ದ ಪರ್ಸನ್ಸ್ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕವರಿ ಆಫ್ ಅರಪನ್ ಸಿವಿಲೈಸೇಷನ್ ಜಾನ್ ಮಾರ್ಷಲ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ವೆರಿ ವೆರಿ ಬಿಗಿನಿಂಗ್ ಅಲೆಕ್ಸಾಂಡರ್ ಕನಿಂಗ್ ಹ್ಯಾಮ್ ಓಕೆ ಏಟೀನ್ ಸೆವೆಂಟಿ ತ್ರೀ ವೆರಿ ಬ್ರೀಫ್ಲಿ ದೆನ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಸೀಲ್ಸ್ ಅರಪನ್ ಸೀಲ್ಸ್ ವರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕವರ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ಜಾನ್ ಫ್ಲೀಟ್ ಇನ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಟ್ವೆಲ್ ಇಸ್ ಅನದರ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ದೆನ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ದಯಾರಾಮ್ ಸಾನಿ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಲ್ಟಿಮೇಟ್ಲಿ ದಿ ಮೇಜರ್ ಕ್ರೆಡಿಟ್ ಗೋಸ್ ಟು ಜಾನ್ ಮಾರ್ಷಲ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಒನ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಟೂ ಆ ವೆರಿ ಪಬ್ಲಿಷ್ ಜಾನ್ ಮಾರ್ಷಲ್ ಹಾ ಈ ಪಬ್ಲಿಷ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಇಂಡಸ್ ವ್ಯಾಲಿ ಸಿವಿಲೈಸೇಷನ್ ಇನ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಜರ್ನಲ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲೆಂಡ್ ವಿಚ್ ಜರ್ನಲ್ ಇಲ್ಲಿಸ್ಟ್ರೇಟೆಡ್ ಓಕೆ ಜರ್ನಲ್ ನೇಮ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಲ್ಲಿಸ್ಟ್ರೇಟೆಡ್ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ಈ ಪಬ್ಲಿಷ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಿ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಎನ್ ಏನ್ಷಿಯಂಟ್ ಸಿವಿಲೈಸೇಷನ್ ಇನ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲೆಂಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಜರ್ನಲ್ ನೇಮ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಲ್ಲಿಸ್ಟ್ರೇಟೆಡ್ ಓಕೆ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ರೈಟ್ ಇಲ್ಲಿಸ್ಟ್ರೇಟೆಡ್ ಓಕೆ ಜಾನ್ ಮಾರ್ಷಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಒನ್ ಗವರ್ನರ್ ಜನರಲ್ ಅರ್ ವೈಸ್ ರಾಯ್ ಹೂ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಎಲ್ಪ್ ದೀಸ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಕರ್ಜನ್ ಇವನ್ ದೋ ವಿ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಕರ್ಜನ್ ಓಕೆ ಫಾರ್ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ರೀಸನ್ಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಒನ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್
But nowadays the historians are, or we can say archaeologists are historians, they are saying about, instead of focusing on the decline of Harappan civilization, focus on the continuity. What kind of Harappan culture has been survived even today also. And that is where the uh, thinking has been changed also. We will we'll discuss. Of course, we don't have time to discuss about the decline theories and everything. We are going to see which person gave which kind of theories. And but our major discussion will be on the mature Harappan phase. Okay, now we are coming into mature Arpan phase. That is between which time period? That is 2600 BC to 1800 BC. Okay, after 1800 BC, it started declining. After 1500 BC, which culture started? Time period is very, very important. After 1500 BC, Vedic culture. Which Vedic culture? Again, two period. Early Vedic. We will come to early Vedic later too. Okay, now we will come to sources of IVC. Which are the sources of prehistory time period? Do we have literary evidence? No, archaeological evidence. For IVC also? Archaeological evidence, but we have literary evidences, but not domestic literary evidences. But which literary evidence do we have? Mesopotamian civilization. That is foreign literature evidences is there for Arapan culture, and that is the reason it is called as which culture or which history? Proto history. Okay, so Arapan culture is called as proto history. Example, Mesopotamia. Okay, so the kind of references to Arapan civilization is there in Mesopotamia civilization. Mesopotamia civilization, where it is located? Where it was located rather? Which, which river valleys? Euphrates and Tigris. Okay. And now we can directly jump into the features of Arapan civilization. That is a major feature is town or urban planning. And we know Arapan cities are there. It is a city culture. The cities are divided into how many parts? Two parts. Which two? The two parts are called as what? That is the western part as well as the eastern part. Which is larger? Western part is larger or eastern part is larger? Actually, eastern part is larger. Western part is very, very small. And what is the unique thing about western part? It is located on a mound. It is that is 12 meters from the ground also. And it also has a citadel. Western part also has a citadel. Also called as what? Fort stoop. Or we can say western part was small, but higher from the ground called as citadel. That is 12 meters is there. Any doubts on this? And the city parts, we can say, were walled with baked bricks. In Chalcolithic, we talked about the fortification made up of which material? Mud fortification. Here it is made up of baked bricks. Okay, that is we can say burnt or baked bricks also. But there is one city without having any kind of citadel. Chanudaro, that is a city without citadel, it is called as Chanudaro. Where is Chanudaro? It is in India or Pakistan? Pakistan. Pakistan. Okay, Chanudaro is in Pakistan, that is in Sindh region. A city without citadel is called as Chanudaro. Okay, we can also see that is western part as well as Eastern part too. So, which is the most important part actually? Western part. And who are living in the western part generally? Maybe aristocratic classes, maybe ruling classes. We have very, very less evidence about that one. Okay. And which people were living in the lower towns? It can also be called as western towns also, eastern towns also, upper town also, lower town also, citadel part also, non citadel part also. All these are very same, to same thing only. Okay. So, common people were residing in lower town. Okay. And the citadel part, rulers, and also citadel part having some important buildings. Which buildings? Great granaries, public buildings, great bath also, especially in Arab and Manjadaro. But I told you, the citadel is there on the upper part, the western part. Citadel is not there on the lower part. But two cities, where lower towns are also fortified. Which two cities? Hmm? Lower towns are not generally fortified, but Kalibangan, as well as we can say Sarkotada, that is Kalibangan that is in Rajasthan and Sarkota is in Gujarat, where lower town is also fortified. Generally, which towns are fortified? Upper towns. Sorry, upper part of the towns are fortified, but in two areas where lower towns are also fortified, that is in Sarkota and Kalibangan. But one town where no fortification is there? Chanodaro. Okay, that is in Chanodaro. Any doubts in this? And but one city divided into three parts also? Okay, that is in Dolavira, that is in Gujarat. Okay, so one city divided into three parts, that is in Dolavira. Okay. So, focus on the unique items. The unique item is that on where fortification is there, where fortification is not there. If fortification is there, what kind of fortification is there? Low towns fortification, where upper town fortification. Okay. And now we will come to Dolavira also. Some unique features of Dolavira. That is divided into how many parts? Three parts. We already know that one. That is citadel part, middle part, okay, as well as the lower part also. And why Dolavira is famous for? Huh? Water channels. Okay. Dolavira is famous for? water channels and water reservoirs made up of stones. Very, very important. They were made up of stones. Generally, in Arapan culture, stone structures are absent. 
most of the time they use which material burnt bricks isn't but here in dola vera we talk about we see mainly stones and also dola vera is also world heritage site by unesco in 2021 and is also located near which one which geographical tropic of cancer also is very near to tropic of cancer too you can link all these kind of things you can see that water channels of dola vera okay so that is a unique thing about dola vera that's right water channels okay some visualization that is help in history of course in all other subjects also but always try to know the facts know the conceptual clarity through some visualization so that is about dola vera that is a unesco world heritage site in 2021 and that is the reason in 2021 there was a question and now the py quiz starts because in pre history we don't have any much py quiz are there but from arapan civilization onwards we have more and more py quiz and also we will see this py quiz why they were asked why this question was asked because in 2021 what happened dola vera was made as a world heritage site isn't now history is being linked with what current affairs now look at that one which one of the following ancient towns is well known for its elaborate system of water harvesting and management by building a series of dams and channelizing water into connected reservoirs we already know the answer dola vera okay then again kalibangan then again rakigari ropar we know the answer is dola vera and now how to use the pyq i told you the wrong answer options also isn't now it is your responsibility to know something about kalibangan we already mentioned about kalibangan what we know what is the unique thing about kalibangan that lower town is not lower town is also fortified and kalibangan is also known for tiles also for flooring is right so now again rakigari largest site of the indus valley civilization before which was the largest site before rakigari it was monjedaro but right now which is the largest site rakigari and again ropar also okay that is we can use the wrong answer options too okay sometimes like i gave the example of 1919 act before starting the classes how this wrong answer options can be also made big question can be made questions so use this one and what you can do is that one sit two to three people maximum in a group okay another technique and try to brainstorm what you know about kalibangan without looking at the sources just say what you know okay you can link that to polity also you can link that to geography also you can link that to current affairs or whatever it could be sit to the maximum three people they say three people is group four people is a crowd isn't so sit only maximum three persons isn't sit three persons and say what you know about dola vera ask other person to what you know about dola vera and sit one more person you say about kalibangan okay another person say about rakhi gari if you want to link that to geography polity environment also keep on linking that one keep brainstorming and use that question paper and write it down on the question paper itself your question paper should become a source okay that is one of the smartest way of doing preparation for upsc2 is right so then again this is answer a we come to that one some roads planning we saw the urban planning now we are coming into roads planning and is what is roads planning can be called as grid pattern you know what is grid pattern is jal jalri anta karitala kannada dali okay grid pattern is also there and uh, streets are run from which direction to which direction nar to south direction okay streets are running from nar to south direction and is the streets are running from nar to south direction they are cutting across at right angles they perpendicular to each other okay they perpendicular to each other each other when they are cutting across at right angles at 90 degree what kind of shape the city will take rectangular blocks we can say rectangular as well as square shapes also okay the most of the cities are there in rectangular shapes as well as in square shapes and the streets are very wide 30 feet wide streets are there okay our chennai leavitt road is 80 feet okay they had already 30 feet streets were there okay during that point of time were these streets use any kind of pavements did they use tar cements no no adani cements were there okay so there were statements streets were not paved this were left with mud streets only they were not used for any kind of pavements were there no kind of uh, structured way of street maintenance was not there but hygiene was there but the streets were left open street for only mud streets only there was not kind of stones no kind of tar no kind of cementing material was used but and now we are coming into houses in the city okay houses we can say that is burnt bricks were used for house construction i told you which element which material was absent generally stones but in dola vera for making of water channels which material they used stone even for drainage system also they did not use stones they use what burnt bricks only they use but, but in kalibangan they use uh, mud bricks only they use only mud bricks that is mud bricks means without baking or without burning also and houses have one or 
two stories. What it shows again? How is this having one or two stories? No, Kalibangan mud bricks, drainage system. Drainage system of Kalibangan use mud bricks, but some other areas drainage system, other cities they use burnt bricks. Mud bricks means they were not burnt. I will come to that one. I will come to drainage system. I will give you that one also. And they add one houses, one story as well as two stories. If they add two stories, they should definitely have what? Staircases. And these staircases are made up of wood. Okay, very, very unique. They are made up of wood also, not any kind of other material, wood. And they add separate waste collection material, waste collection area, cesspits within the houses. Today we call it as dustbins. They were used to have cesspits as well as waste collection areas also. Did they have windows? Arapan civilization, did they have windows? Generally, uh, consider that one, windows are absent. Generally, in Arapan civilization, windows did not face the street, rather they facing the sides. Okay, so windows are generally absent, they did not face the street. If at all windows are there, they did not face the street, rather they face the side of the houses. Okay, side of the houses. And some historians also consider, the uh, windows are generally absent in Arapan civilization too. Okay. Like I already mentioned, that is absence of stone structures. Like you go to Great Bath, Great Granary, all these are not made up of stones. They are made up of bricks. They are made up of bricks. Generally, which bricks? Burnt bricks. Okay, made up of burnt bricks. Absence of stone structures. And the entrance from site, not from the street, but rather from the sides. Okay. These about houses, all these things. And I can also go to other features of houses. They had multiple rooms also. Because again, floors were coated with cow dung and tiles and evidence from Kalibangan. Okay, so Kalibangan again unique feature. What is the two unique features of Kalibangan we already seen? One is that one lower town is also fortified. Okay, and again, second one we can talk about, it is used which material? Tiles material. What do you mean tiles? Tiles is nothing but stones only. Tiles are nothing but stones only. So, they were using tiles. Actually, they say that one tiles design, especially for flooring, actually brought by Central Asians. When Central Asian contacts happened by the post Mauryas times, the tiles were actually brought by Central Asians, but we have evidences from where? Kalibangan only. But that is one exception, not the general rule also. Did they use the pillars for houses? Arapan civilization? Did they use pillars or not? Hmm? Yes, they use pillars, that is square and rectangular pillars. And again, they were also made up of burnt bricks, square and rectangular pillars. And for water purposes, what the houses had within the house? Wells. Okay, they also had wells for water. Okay, they had wells for water. So we talked about road planning, we talked about city planning, we talked about the houses planning. And now, what is the why Arapan civilization is famous for? Which purposes? Drainage system. Okay, so now we are coming into drainage system of Arapan civilization. Now every house was connected to drainage system okay and the drainage system for inspection they had some kind of walls also today we call it as what manual system okay we can see the manuals over here okay this is a drainage system again again which material are used bricks not stones they are using bricks material okay so these are <coughs> manuals are also there and the drainage system is above the surface or below the surface Underground drainage system. Okay, this is underground drainage system. In picture, it looks above the surface. Okay, but actually, it was below the surface. That is underground drainage system. And to make it as a watertight, what is the cementing material they used? Gypsum. Okay, so they again they made up of burnt bricks also. But in Kalibangan, I told you which one they used? Mud bricks. That is in Kalibangan for making of drainage system, they use mud bricks. Like one of three unique thing about Kalibangan. What is the three unique thing? Lower town is also fortified. Second one, tiles were used. And third one, for drainage system, what they used? Mud bricks instead of burnt bricks. Okay. And again, for fortification. Yes, for fortification, burnt bricks. In citadel part, they use burnt bricks. And for watertight, mortar of mud as well as gypsum. The gypsum also, lime we can say. As a cementing material, they use gypsum, lime, okay, <coughs> as well as mud also. So, what we can assume out of all this planning, this road planning, as well as this houses planning, drainage system planning, what we can assume? Hmm? Don't write, just understand. What is assumptions? Hmm? Some kind of engineering, some kind of architects, 
okay and some kind of city planners must be there must be there uh, some kind of organization to deal with all this proper planning also isn't and some kind of we can say governance structure too so that is exactly assumptions out of all this don't panic don't write it's not actual but actually it is a one kind of opinion that opinion among the historians that in all the towns they will have uniform type of drainage system uniform type of what we can say houses construction uniform city lanes and all this uniformity shows one uh, we can say organization some governance structure should be there but do we have any kind of evidences to prove that one no we don't have any evidences if the upsc give any kind of statement the governance structure or some municipality was existed during arapan civilization right or wrong wrong because we don't have any kind of evidences to but if they say out of all the uniformity it gives us little bit deduction that some kind of governance was existed the statement is right or wrong now could be right because the the statement whether right or wrong we know about absolute statements how to eliminate all this kind of things so that kind of thing also you should be working out and now what is subsistence pattern of arapans hmm? what am i subsistence actually subsistence means what livelihood livelihood that is of course hunting they continued they did not stop hunting okay then gathering of fruits and vegetables but now the important profession is agriculture okay so when was the agriculture first began neolithic and now this agriculture kept on expanding agriculture kept on expanding and in agriculture which crops mainly wheat okay all this but rice is discovered only from two areas which one lothal and rangpur rice is only from two area that is lothal and rangpur and that is in gujarat both of them are in gujarat okay and what is a weaving material or we can say cloth material which which one they use cotton and that is cotton from mohenjodaro and they say the earliest civilization to produce cotton okay earliest civilization to produce cotton and what is other products they use products like fishing also when was the first time fishing evidence come from which culture mesolithic okay and now fishing is there then again agriculture is there hunting is there gathering is there can we say again well diversified economy well diversified subsistence pattern yes that is definitely there too and rice is from lotha and lotha is known for what another important dockyard also we'll come to that one now, lastly i will give you the different list different list of different areas too don't worry right now presently just write down whatever that is coming in the slides too and which animals they knew hmm? almost every animal almost every animal no need to mention this one okay almost every animal they knew about but one animal that is controversial horses horses seem to have unknown okay but horse bones have been discovered from sarkotada that is sarkotada that is in gujarat again what is another unique thing about sarkotada we well already discussed lower town is also fortified the same that is kepa that is always focus on the unique things to sarkotada but this evidence is not enough to prove that arapans did know about what which animal horses there was a question also Is it? There was a question. Okay, that is asked whether known in European civilization or not. Okay, that is we discussed one question 2021, and this asked question was asked in 2017. Look at that one with reference to difference between the culture of Rig Vedic Aryans as well as the Indus Valley people. Which of the following statement is are correct? Okay, first one, Rig Vedic Aryans used the coat of mail and helmet in warfare, whereas the people of Indus Valley civilization did not leave any evidence of leaving them. Right or wrong? Hmm? Do we have any evidence of warfare in Indus Valley civilization? No. Do we have evidence of warfare in Vedic civilization? Yes. Okay. Then again, second one. Read the statement. That is Rig Vedic Aryans knew gold, silver, copper, whereas Indus Valley people knew only copper and iron. Did they know about iron? No. So statement should be wrong. You said third statement. Rig Vedic Aryans had domesticated the horses. We know that one. Okay. whereas there is no evidence of indus valley people having aware of this animal hmm? did uh, we already know arses bones have been discovered from where sarkotada okay you see correct the answers hmm? one only hmm? two and three one and three and lastly one two three. which is answer hmm? which is answer for this is the third statement you are sucking to isn't it confusing is the third statement is the right statement or wrong statement hmm? wrong. 
no evidence hmm? ultimately we have to go with upsc answer ki whatever historians might say doesn't matter to upsc right so answer is c because ars bones have been discovered from where sarcotada but thing is that one evidences are not enough to prove it not enough to prove arappan people people did know about ars so so answer should be c so that is second statement is wrong we know that one okay because second statement you can eliminate through that is b and d statement but you will stick with ultimately a and c that's what generally happens you will always stick between two statement and the two statement when you stick between that is we can talk about the presence of mind logic okay linking interlinking okay ultimately all those things comes into play on that particular prelims day so go with some kind of we can say little bit confidence even if you go with over confidence is also fine on that one particular day okay because when you go with over confidence you have that emotional control with you if you go with some kind of we can say let's say some kind of butterflies in your stomach and all this kind of things so you are going to bound to make some kind of mistakes don't do that then go with at least what i am what i am going to say is that one until prelims okay until prelims that is 2 to 3 days before that one so i have that fear that it is the only life i have okay upsc is the only life i have okay before 2 days of prelims i can live my life without prelims without upsc also that kind of attitude is very very important okay that go with that one that is when you go with that kind of mindset it will give you some kind of confidence to answer some kind of questions too yes it is slightly negative sense to go with that one but it works it works for me it did work for me okay i it might work for you people also okay so go with that one extra little bit confidence too okay and again there is a thin line of difference between confidence and over confidence okay and that confidence and over confidence you people should know the difference confidence comes when you are reading when you have done preparation really in a very good manner when you have revised all the things when you have done the proper analysis and everything what you have understood the examination pattern and everything but over confidence comes when you have not read anything okay that will come there okay so be careful about that kind of things and now we are coming into tools and implements okay which tools they were use stone tools stone tools for their since the time of prehistoric also and now which stone tools right now copper tools copper tools were come from the time of chalcolithic and then again mixed copper that is copper was mixed with tin also and they took out bronze and we can say bronze stones also there stone tools copper tools bronze tools okay at the same time where they got the copper from ketri mines where is ketri mines that is in rajasthan okay and they got tin from afghanistan okay afghanistan as well as bihar also okay, i am using abbreviations not the full form afghanistan as well as bihar but which stone tools are discovered more copper tools are there stone tools are there bronze tools are there which are higher in number stone tools okay is it still even though bronze is there even though copper is there the largest number of tools we have discovered that is from stone tools only okay that is mainly stone tools and what is the unique thing about all these stone tools bronze tools as well as, as well as we can talk about the urban planning and everything that is the uniformity that is in all the entire sites from jammu kashmir to maharashtra and from pakistan to ultimately alamgirpur in up that is a uniformity and that one stone tool factory is also discovered that is stone tool factory was sukur that is in sindh okay they say according to historians all the stone tools were produced in this factory and then distributed across the arappan civilization and that again proves some kind of uniformity okay one reason for uniformity is that one, they must have produced at this place and distributed across all the arappan civilization okay that is in sukur very sukur again that is in sind and now we have two kinds of professions in arappan civilization which is a rural life or urban life urban life what is the one unique thing about rural life is that one which profession will definitely be there agriculture in urban life which profession will definitely be there trading also as well as arts and crafts also some kind of professional activities so now we are coming into arts and crafts now wide variety of arts and crafts were there okay like we can talk about metal workers bronze smiths copper smiths stone cutters bead cutters okay and bead factories are also have been discovered where the bead factories have been discovered hmm? two areas hmm? that is chenudaro and lothal okay so bead making factories stone factory at sukur bead making factory from chenudaro as well as in lothal and gold and silver also other jewelry making seal cutting seals will come to as a separate topic we'll come to that one and again another kind of profession pottery makers which pottery which color pottery mm -hmm. is a different arts and 
crafts also which which color pottery in arapan civilization red and black was it designed pottery or plain pottery plain pottery okay so arapan civilization mainly had plain pottery and which color pottery in chalcolithic ochre color that is orange and yellow and in megalithic black and red and then neolithic black and gray also and now this is red and black that is in plain pottery does it mean the all the potteries of arapan civilization was plain only no some potteries were there with some designs were also there too okay and then again cotton cloth makers because cotton cloth has been discovered from where which area which site mohenjodaro it has been discovered from mohenjodaro and we also have boats also lothal dockyard dockyard boat makers are also there okay so can we say the arapan economy was narrow economy or diversified economy well diversified economy they can put one statement arapan economy was diversified economy look at the professions all these professions were food producing professions or non food producing non food producing it means there was a considerable amount of considerable number of population which were non food producing it means the rural areas of arapan civilization producing enough food for rural areas also as well as urban areas also okay any doubts in this nothing and then again we'll come to some more unique items terracotta we talk about terracotta is what do we mean terracotta clay items that is also there and we have some precious stones also which precious stones hmm? some unique items lapis lazuli okay all these things you can write this one unique items semi precious precious stones lapis lazuli that is blue color it came from afghanistan okay and again turquoise that is blue or green color that came from iran another one that is jade that is in white color that is from central asia and again amethyst that is in violet color from maharashtra and lastly carnelian that is in red and orange color that came from saurashtra okay uh, and again shows what the semi precious stones what shows about what what area about the society what it talks about society uh, semi precious stones which 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 kind of section of the society can use the semi precious stones it is the lower section or the upper section upper section can you say ruling section also yes that shows about the social uh, stratification social equality as well as inequality also that is semi precious stones are generally used by the upper section or we can say prosperous sections too okay that is you can talk about lapis lazuli turquoise jade amethyst as well as carnelian we can ask for made the following also okay. and now if, if they are importing it from afghanistan iran and central asia what was existed trade we can definitely say there was arapan said trade links too which trade links trade links with mesopotamia mesopotamia presently which countries iraq and iran countries okay then again how do we know they are trade links hmm? because arapan seals have been found there arapan seals that will come to arapan seals as a separate topic too at the same time we know arapan uh, references are there in which literature mesopotamia literature which word is they use meluha and makan two words they use also okay we can talk about trade links with bahrain kuwait phylaka and we can say literary evidences of sumerians that is mesopotamia or babylon they mentions one word called as meluha meluha means what meluha means probably saurashtra region of india or it also historians think meluha probably refers to which region ivc region and one more word they use makan what is the makan presently the makran coast of pakistan because okay, these kind of literary evidences are found in which literature mesopotamian literature because that literature has been able to be deciphered but arapan civilization literature has not been deciphered okay we'll come to that one and the trade links with mesopotamia as well as there is an island called as phyla island that phyla island today that is in kuwait that is in kuwait as well as in persian gulf also bahrain and which are the major imports of arapans hmm? arapans mainly imported non perishable items mainly imported non perishable items like gold silver copper tin as well as semi precious stones when you say non perishable items you can make out that one is it what are the major exports of arapans Uh, major exports perishable items some arapans because one of the largest producers of food products is it arapans mainly exported perishable that is agricultural products as well as pottery seals okay all these were exported then again beads also ivory products okay 
I get terracotta because Arab and terracotta, all these things have been discovered from which area? Mesopotamia. Okay, I've been discovered from Persian Gulf too. So very simple. Most of the Arapan items, why we we not been able to discover much from Mesopotamia region because Arapans mainly exported perishable items because food products are perishable too. Any doubts in this? Now, now for trading purposes, for measuring purposes, what they require? Weights and measures. And now we can talk about weights and measures too. Okay, so Arapans. Weights and measures. Again, these are also very uniform. Very uniform weights and measures. What they are made up of? Which material they are made up of? Limestone. Okay. Then again, steatite and chert. Okay. And drainage system is made up of which material? Bricks. Okay. At the same time, buildings were made up of which material? Bricks only. But in Dolavira, water channels are made up of which material? Stones. Very, very unique. Okay. And now, these weights and measures are made up of limestone, chert. Okay. And some measurement sticks and scales are also have been found. And which system they use? Decimal system and binary system. Just write down. That is not there in the uh, slides. Binary system and decimal system. They use for measurement decimal as well as binary system. Both types of things for use. Okay. Decimal as well as binary. Both kind of weights and measures for use. Okay. They can put that one statement. You can put this kind of one kind of statement, then you will panic. Okay, that when you don't know, when we try to, we will try to over and another mistake, common mistakes people do is that one in prelims is that one over analysis. Okay, because you when you read one statement, you either go with the mindset that statement has to be right, or that the statement should be wrong. When you go with that kind of mindset, you are bound to commit mistakes. Okay, so go with some kind of uh, we can preserve. Uh, emotionally stable state then go with some kind of any kind of that is imposition of your views your views doesn't matter over there upsc views matters okay upsc whatever the statement is given that is analyze only on the one relationship if so happens this happens if so happens this happens that will also happen don't go with this kind of mindset only one relationship would be cause and effect don't go with too many effects and too many causes then you are going to make a lot of mistakes in analyzing the question paper uh, when analyzing that one particular statement too okay and now we'll come to the arapan's greatest artistic creation that is seals and what we all can learn from these seals what evidences it gives about what sources it gives about different animals also and their script also arapan script we come to know through which one through their seals okay and now seals there are two types of seals are there okay we'll come to two types of seals they are made up of which material steatite copper Shells, ivory, terracotta, okay, different types, different material was used, and two types of seals are there. Which are two types of seals? Square shape as well as rectangular shape. Two types of seals, square shape as well as rectangular shape. What is the uses of square shape and rectangular shape? What is square shape? Square seal was used for. What is rectangular shape seals for use for? The particular use is there. And with a famous seal. Pashupati seal, where it has been discovered from which area? Mohenjo-daro. Okay, that is it is made up of steatite. The Pashupati seal, famous Pashupati seal, that is made up of steatite, discovered from Mohenjo-daro. And now, what is the difference between square and rectangular? That is square shape used for inscription or writing as well as animal figures. Okay, so square seals were used for inscription as well as animal figures. Whereas rectangular seals use only for inscription. Okay, so rectangular seals use only for inscription. Okay, so square seals are used for inscription also, carving of animals also. Then rectangular seals use for inscriptions. Okay, and again, now we'll come to Pashupati seal. That is is associated with which modern lord, modern god? That is Shiva. And that Pashupati seal has some animals also. That is animals are elephant, rhinoceros, buffalo. Uh, two goats or antelopes, we can say. Okay. Again, made up of which material? Steatite. We already know that one. It is made up of steatite. And now, one inf important information of Arapan civilization through seals, we come to know what is that? Their language, their script. Okay. Now we come to language and script. And there is pictographic, also called as logo syllabic or logo syllabic. There is a one thing. The logo syllabic means every syllable is there. Every Imprint is there that stood for a meaning, and that is the reason it is quite difficult to decipher that one. And also, there is very very short. 
very short inscription and it is also used one more card as bostrophedon what is a bostrophedon the right from right to left and alternate to left to right also good luck to the person who is deciphering that one okay bostrophedon means right to left and left to right and we already know it has not been deciphered you can just write this uh, pictographic larger syllabic and bostrophedon don't write all these things okay, you can just stick to this one keywords too uh, but recent breakthrough is there what is that one breakthrough the Tarapan languages belong to which group of languages? Dravidian. Dravidian. Okay, so some say it's not absolutely proved, but some say that some kind of interlinkage between Arapan language as well as Dravidian group of languages also. Recently it came up. Okay, so that's some kind of Dravidian language too. Any doubts in this? Nothing. This is about language and script. You can just th remember three pictographic, logosyllabic, as well as bostrophedon and short inscription. That's it. Okay. And then again, society, we know that is urban society, rulers were there. But rulers were definitely there are only assumptions. Assumption out of what? Citadel as well as uniformity. Okay. Then again, rich merchants were living on which area of the town? Citadel part. And again, laborers were living on the lower towns. Very simple. We don't need to get into that one. Their religious beliefs. Which religious beliefs were there? Their religious beliefs come from seals and terracotta figures. Okay. We talk about nude female figure shows about fertility cult. At the same time, we talk about uh, male deity that is Pashupati also. Then again, we also talk about phallus worship, lingam worship. Okay. And then again, what is the other type of worships are there? Tree worship that is people tree. And then again, next one, we talk about animal worship. Which animal worship? Unicorn or humped bull. And then again, lastly, it shows about nature worship, right? When you talk about animal worship, when you talk about tree worship, that talk about which one? Nature worship. Fertility cult, nature worship. Okay, I can for at the same time we can account uh, mother goddess worship, male deities also as well as female deities also. Male deities comes through the evidence of Pashupati seal, female deities from the nude clay figures also. Any doubts in this? I think. But other different type of religion is also present. Which type of religion is present? Which religion? That is burial relief, fire altars, that is a Lothal and Kalibangan. Now again, Kalibangan, one more unique item. What is the other unique items? What are the unique features of Kalibangan? Tiles. Again, mud bricks, okay, lower tone is also fortified, and now there is fire altars. Fire altars generally related to which culture? Vedic culture. So, this shows some kind of little bit influences also. Then again, burial practices also part of religion. Three types of burial can be seen coffin burial, pit burial, as well as joint burial. What is my joint burial? What is my joint? Together, two persons together, they were also buried, and they were buried in coffin also, they were buried in pits also. Okay, different types of burial practices are there. Any doubts on this? Did they have temples? No. There were no evidence of temples. Because temples can be found in Egypt and Mesopotamia. Were there any kind of priests were there? Do we have any kind of evidences? No. Then again, amulets. What do you mean amulets? You tie some kind of threads, right? Against evil's protection, against black magic protection. Okay, all these kind of amulets can be seen over there. Amulets. Okay, so this is some kind of religious practice of Arapan civilization. Can we see all this even today also? Yes, all these are continuing even today too. Okay, so there is no temples, amulets and talismans can be seen, and uh, different burial practices, fire altars, nature worship, male god as male god worship as well as female god worship also. Okay, and lastly, we are coming into the decline of Arapan civilization. Before going to that one, there are some questions too. Okay, that is. Regarding Indus Valley civilization, consider the following statement, 2011, okay. It was predominantly a secular civilization and the religious element, though present, did not dominate the scene, okay. So again, during this period, cotton was used for manufacturing textiles in India. Yes or no? Cotton was there from Mohenjo-Daro, okay. Now, which is the answer? Both one and two. Because religious element was there. But why it is secular? On what basis you prove it was secular? That is very important. Hmm? How do you prove it was mainly a secular civilization? What is the major concern of the people over in Arapan civilization? Their hygiene, their drainage system, their town planning, their streets, their trade links. Saying, we don't have any temples. We don't have any priestly class domination evidences. Religious element was there. You said, but what is the domination of, over the society? Domination of society over trade elements, over professional elements. And that is the reason it can be said it is a secular civilization. And that is the reason answer should be C. 
okay like i told you how to use the questions also now in this question particularly what is the objective lesson you can take about is that one unique cloth item about different ancient during a different time period of different ancient india like mauryan time period which kind of cotton cloth was a different of cotton cloth uh, different kind of cloths were used when central asians came what type of cloths they introduce when persians and arab arabians came what kind of cloths they introduce isn't don't just stick to that one particular question you have to develop out of that question so that is what i'm saying you that is you have to develop whatever the answer options are left given over there and again different dressing pattern in different time periods of in indian history and again different jewelry items okay when persians came when arabians came different kind of jewelries were introduced in ancient india different jewelries were there vedic civilization different jewelries and then when dynasty started mahajanapada all these things started different kind of jewelries were there you just have to know about that one okay so i told you that is the questions can be formed out of this answer options too okay and then again one more question look at which of the following characteristics characterize the people of indus valley civilization they possess great palaces and temples do they have no then again they worshiped both male and female deities yes and they employed horses drawn chariots look at two questions of about horses 2013 and 2017 about the same religious life two question 2011 and 2013 this was we are talking about this was we are saying okay analysis analysis of the prelims question paper properly okay analysis what what people think is that one look at the answer option look at the upsc answer key forget about that one okay that is not the way of analysis ours there is a one keyword that was asked in which year 2013 in answer option it was there and the same answer option repeated in 20 17 i'm not saying whatever asked in 22 will repeat in 2023 okay it might repeat okay don't make five year plans okay keep one or two year plans that is very important but that is what ultimately when you analyze in a proper manner that luck will come luck is nothing but that is it meets the opportunity it meets the hard work if you have done the right right hard work the luck will meet you and the luck might be that is whatever kind of analysis you might might have done that will be there in front of you and should right so this is one thing so what should be the answer for this one correct statements of course and while reading statements also while reading questions also be careful read statement by statement okay whether they are asking the right statement whether they are asking the wrong statement that is very important now one and two only okay two only one two three and none of the above statements given above is correct is answer two we know that one right okay so that is how you come to that is again while reading also when you first read the first statement that is right or wrong in this case wrong come to the answer option try to eliminate that one okay then go to the second statement then try to look on the answer options first one what common mistakes people also do is that one they read all the three statements then they will come to this one okay first read the first statement go to the answer option read the second statement go to the answer option read the third statement go to the answer options is it and another thing is that one don't look for the answer look for the wrong answer first look for the wrong answer first or wrong statement first eliminate that statement okay and whatever is left that is the answer okay you don't bring the answer okay whatever that is there that will that will always be there first try to eliminate the wrong statement or wrong answer option whichever is left that is the answer okay that is one thing and lastly theories of decline we can just write down the names of these persons we are not going to discuss all the theories of it now flooding and earthquake that is theory is given by r l rights as well as we can say uh, george f dales then again shifting of river course that is also one more theory that is given by st lambrick and then again aridity and drying up of gagara akra dp agarwal and then again barbarian invasion mortimer wheeler and last the ecological imbalance that is fair service which is the most acceptable theory out of all these theories of decline which is the most plausible most acceptable theory last one ecological imbalance the most plausible and most acceptable is ecological imbalance of course every theory got pros and cons and we don't want to get into that one right now that is not necessary for your prelims preparation okay unless anybody having history options anybody i know it is zero okay i know okay that is flooding shifting of uh, river course aridity and drying up of gagara akra barbary invasion ecological imbalances and most plausible most reasonable that is ecological imbalance it means 
some kind of because if you look at the Arapan civilization area, in which area it is located? Northwestern part. Northwestern part of subcontinent, it is desert region, arid region. Isn't it? Little bit imbalance in the climate, little bit imbalance in moisture availability will lead to what? Reduction of the food production. But Arapan civilization was the urban culture or rural culture? Urban culture. When the food production is going down, but the urban culture is growing, what will happen? It creates hunger, starvation. And that is one of the acceptable theory. But that, that theory also has a little bit cons too. Okay, this is about Arapan civilization. Any doubts on this? I think we can take a break. Okay, I know it is much necessary. 15 minutes. Then we will continue with the uh, Vedic civilization. We will try to complete in the first session after Vedic civilization. Then we will go to in the afternoon session. Uh, some Majanapadas, Mauryas and Post Mauryas. We will try to finish. Okay, so we discuss about the prehistoric cultures and then we discuss about mainly uh -huh. uh, that is then again Talcolithic culture, Bronze Age culture, Copper Age culture and now we discuss about Indus Valley civilization also. We discuss about theories of until the decline and now some little bit extra uh, information about the Indus Valley civilization. So, we can see that is Symmetry H culture. Okay, so you can just write down this one. Okay, so we must not have about this one. H is an area in Arappan region. Okay, it is an area is an Arappan region. Okay. It is a, a unique cemetery has been found is associated with Bronze Age culture. Okay. This kind of unique things okay. around 1900 BC onwards. Okay. It is the last phase of Arappa. We are talking about the third phase of Arappa. Okay, that is the early phase, mature phase as well as last phase. So, it relates to last phase of Arappa. <coughs> and it is also related to Aryan migration period also. Okay. So, how this culture has been created be due to that is the manifestation of first wave of Aryan migration. Okay, this cemetery H culture. It is quite unique because compared to Arapan culture, whatever the Indus Valley culture we have seen, this area has a, a unique kind of culture that is symmetric culture, and that we will see what that culture is. I will tell you. Okay, what are the some uniqueness in this particular area? That is in Arappa only. That is in Arappa. Okay, and now this is features of H is that one the use of cremation instead of burial. Okay, they use cremation. What am I cremation? Burning. Okay, that is incineration. We know that is Arapans buried their body, but here there is incineration is there. Okay, cremation is there. Okay, that is one thing of human remains. And this cremation also happen with some kind of uh, bones were also stored in painted pottery. We know Arapans have plain pottery. It's in red and black, but this culture was using some kind of painted pottery. Okay, and burial urns, some kind of pots. Burial and also painted pottery also. Okay, so different kind of uh, unique features can be seen in symmetry edge culture. And then again, whatever the pottery is that were, whatever the culture is that is completely different from the Indus Valley civilization. That is symmetry edge culture. Okay, and where Indus Valley civilization, I told you bodies were buried in coffins. I told you pot burial, coffin burial, joint burial, but here it is cremated. And potteries were also designed. Some kind of potteries were also. Designed, designed with some kind of peacocks, antelopes, star motifs, sun motifs, all these things. So, where it is located? It is located in Arappa. Okay, so some other area, some 1900 BC onwards. It is related to which time period? 1900 BC. Okay, and that is again everything is different. This culture is different from the normal Arappan culture what we have seen so far. Okay, and one more area is there, one more area that is called as uh, we can say uh, also you can write right down that cremation in India is first attested. First time cremation in Indian culture can be seen from Arappan region. That is features of H symmetry culture. First cremation. Okay. Symmetry H culture. Because Indus Valley civilization were burial. Chalcolithic also burial. This is the cremation. Okay. And one more other evidence of cremation we can see in Rigvedic area. Okay, so, Rigveda mentions two terms, Agni Daga and Anagni Daga. Okay, generally, cremation is associated with Rigvedic period, but we have also seen in symmetry, H culture, and we know UPSC is fond of these terms also. Okay, they keep asking different kind of terms. Okay, so I will try to give some terms in the last, in la last slide, I have made some list of some of the terms. I will give you those terms. So, now Agni Daga and Anagni Daga. It means Agni Daga means cremated bodies, Anagni Daga means Un non cremated or we can say uncremated bodies that is also there agni daga and anagni daga <coughs> so first evidence of cremation arappa symmetry edge culture 
and then again we can see one more site arappa r37 that is one more burial site okay one more burial site it belong to last phase you can just ask put one statement cemetery h culture r37 what are all this related to war so r37 is a burial site in arappan civilization burial site very, very simple so what kind of different burials can be seen in arappa we already seen just to conclude that one what kind of burial practice have we already seen that is we can see coffin burial pot burial joint burial pit burial okay then again complete burial fractional burial and post cremation burial also half the body is cremated half the body is buried also okay so different types of burial practices can be seen in arappan civilization okay so that is coffin burial can be seen in arappa pot burial in sarkotada what is another thing about sarkotada horse bones and lower town is also fortified okay then again lothal we talked about what dockyard rice also and then kalibangan look at how many unique features about kalibangan okay and then lastly all these different types of burials can be found okay and then findings we can say dockyard in lothal i told you okay then again furrow field that can be found in kalibangan and then again replica of a plow that can be found in banawali that is in haryana banawali that is in haryana plow can be found these are some of the important findings okay dockyard furrow field as well as terracotta replica of a plow okay and is plow if they if they were using plow which kind of plow they must have been using metal plow or we can say wooden plow wooden plow very simple okay and some river banks also we already know you can just mention those one manjodaro indus okay and again arappa ravi live left bank right bank not necessary but if you know that is well and good okay and then again kalibangan gagarakra then again lothal bugawa shenudaro indus again manda chenab and again banawali rangoyar saraswati and alamgirpur indan okay then again we can talk about alamgirpur is in indan river banks okay river banks you can just note down if you already know no need to okay you just know anything you can just note down all this and but one unique site we have to discuss that is india's largest or largest ivc site that is rakhi garri we have to talk about rakhi garri okay that is excavated by amrendra nath we we'll discuss some names so the, it is excavated by amrendra nath okay it is the largest is the second largest which will become which site will become second largest manjudaro okay. but the textbook still mention which is the largest manjudaro okay and then again there is jewel jewelry making factory has been found where is bead making factory have been discovered from chenudaro and lothal okay and gagarakra valley is in gagarakra river valley and then again upside dome like structures also found generally we associate dome like structures to which time period in indian history after coming of the delhi sultans persian as well as we can talk about arabic arabic but right now in rakhi gari only we can see little bit dome structures only okay dome structures only can be seen we generally associate that with indo islamic culture indo islamic architecture but some kind of dome architecture was there during indus valley civilization okay upside all dome structures have been found but rakhi gari as in what kind of endangered site by global heritage fund okay in 2010 uh, rakhi gari has been named as one of the endangered heritage sites in india by a institution called global heritage fund and now your responsibility to know about global heritage fund what it does okay so if it had been time time was there i would have covered here itself only but because of lack of time it's your responsibility anybody had done that pep students because i already given all this kind of things no i know okay mm -hmm. there is definitely there okay global heritage fund please go and do that okay and because of human interventions okay it is in it is in endangered site endangered heritage site because of human interventions of course because of human intervention enter planet is in danger what about rakhi gari ha huh? that is one thing okay because of insufficient management hmm? and outsenis and this is about rakhi gari okay and of course rakhi gari has been in news also okay so it kept, kept in the news so no more about rakhi gari also so i have tried to give an as much as possible unique things about rakhi gari and uh, that should be enough and one question was there 2019 which one of the following is not an arappan site very simple very simple question was asked chenudaro is an arappan site yes kodiji yes soha gaura desalpur 
yes okay so agora if you have seeing arappan sorry so ashokan inscription ashokan inscription site is so agora you said so answer is c so some kind of simple question simple kind of things so sometimes so thing is that when go with the, that kind of mindset where you should not regret about not answering the question when you will regret about not answering question you, you don't regret leaving a difficult question but you will definitely regret leaving out simple question so go with that kind of mindset that is make sure your simple basics are really stronger okay so that that should be more than enough because when you are start solving simple basic questions at least you you have the ability to solve at least two to three difficult questions and that will give you the edge in prelims too okay and now we can come to that is ultimately vedic age as well as the aryans that is see we are going to see rigveda later veda as well as vedic literature first we will discuss about rigveda and then we will have longer break and then we'll start with later veda as well as vedic literature and then we'll complete with uh, mauryas post mauryas as well as arshavardhana until time also okay fine right okay so because it is a rapid revision class okay it is not we can say as it's the session itself is on marathon what is marathon no stopping but i did stop for 15 minutes okay so we will see that one now what are our aryans where they come from they are the composers of the vedic text they believed that one okay and what is the term of aryan aryan actually means what it is a term of family of languages which family of languages like dravidian is a family of language which languages are part of dravidian family languages south indian languages so which is the part of aryan family of languages hmm? almost most of european languages and one indian language that is sanskrit same that is indo aryan means it is a family of languages the sub group of indo european uh, because the family of languages they say that when the similarity of words can be seen in Euro european languages as well as sanskrit also like one example we can see that is sanskrit words matri and pitri are similar to latin matter and pater okay such kind of similarities are there and you can also see the similarities in kannada telugu tamil malayalam some kind of similarities are there in this kind of indo aryan language that is how the term aryan term is a family of language system any any doubts in this nothing is there any, any evidence of migration where did they come from what is the famous book of bala gangadhar tilak about aryans hmm? bala gangadhar tilak wrote an book about bala vedic uh, aryans migration hmm? which is that one arctic age okay so arctic age as well as the aryans we'll come to that when we come to bala gangadhar tilak we'll talk about extremism and everything we'll give the details also from central asia first from central asia they went to iran and from iran they come to india and what scientific evidence of migration is there that is a one gene and that gene is m17 gene that gene can be found in central asian people also as well as in indian people also that can be found in 40% of nearly central asian people and that can be found in 35% of delhi people in and around the delhi people and that is just you can just throw that genetic marker the genetic marker is which gene that is m17 gene and that shows what that shows which evidence migratory evidences and there is a scientific evidence nobody is giving any kind of theories it is a scientific evidence that my aryans as well as the whatever the present north indian people who have that kind of genetic evidences is there between central asians also as well as indians also that is very very important okay no need to write all these kind of things just write only the genetic evidences and now timeline of the vedas when it started that is 1500 bc that is called as early vedic times also called as rigvedic times then again after 1000 bc it is called as later vedic and that is 1000 bc to 500 or 600 bc and on what basis this timeline has been divided on what basis it has been divided on the basis of which texts are composed so in the first time period which text was composed rigveda in the second time period other three vedas which are the other three vedas samaveda yajurveda as well as atharveda and also some vedic literature we also discuss that one uh, that we talk about brahmanas aranyakas upanishads they were also composed during the later vedic time and this two time period is also related to the aryan expansion in india the aryan culture expansion in india also and aryan culture could able to expand because of one reason because there is a better warfare technique which a better warfare technique they had horses and chariots did arapans had that one no okay but aryans had better technology that better war technology and that war technology led them to expand their culture all over india okay that is also two time period relates to 
the composition of text also as well as the expansion of Aryan culture also. First, we will see the meaning of the Vedas. What do you mean by Vedas? What is the meaning? Vedas means knowledge. That is one thing. And they are believed to be of divine source. You know the difference between Shruti literature as well as Smriti literature? What do you mean by Shruti literature? Which is hard. What do you mean by Smriti literature? Created by intellect. So, Vedas are what? Shruti literature or Smriti literature? Shruti literature. It means that is divine source and rishis or sages are received from gods. So, it is heard by gods from, sorry, heard by rishis from the gods, not authored them, did not write them. Okay. And at the same time, we can talk about, they are also called as Shruti literature. We will come to Vedic literature, the Shruti as well as Smruti also. Okay. That is Vedas are Shruti literature. Any doubts on this? And were they written down initially? No, they were orally transmitted. And that is the reason Vedic literature, Vedic time period is also proto-history. Okay, because Vedas were written down quite late. Okay, very, very quite late. That is written down by the time of common era, after Mauryas, during the time of Gupta's time period. That is when it was actually written down. And that is the reason Vedic civilization as well as Indus Valley civilization, there are still called as which, which history? Proto-history. Okay, after Vedic civilization, when we have Buddhist literature, Ashokan inscription, that will be called as what? History. Okay, so pre-history we understood. Proto history we understood at the same time history also we, we could able to understand that one. And now they were written during common era. How many Vedas are there? Four Vedas, we know that one. That is Rig Veda, Sama Veda, Ajur Veda as well as Atharva Veda. And now they are included in UNESCO intangible cultural heritage. So UNESCO have natural sites, cultural sites, mixed sites also. And now one more is that one UNESCO intangible, intangible cultural heritage. What am I intangible? Hmm? What am I intangible? Exactly. Now, organization of each Veda, all the four Vedas are organized in a particular way. How it has been organized? How many parts to each Veda? Four Vedas have four parts. What is these four parts? They are called as Samhita, they are called as Brahmanas, they are called as Aranyakas, and they are also called as Upanishads. Example, there will be Rigvedic Samhita, Rigvedic Brahmana, Rigvedic Aranyaka, as well as Rigvedic Upanishads. Right? At the same time, Ajur Veda. Samhita, Ajurveda Brahmana, Ajurveda Aranyaka, Ajurveda Upanishads. It means Upanishads are associated with one particular Vedas also. How many Upanishads are there? Upanishads. 108. Okay. Only 13 are important. We will discuss some Upanishads also today. Okay. That is every Veda has four parts. That is Samhita, Brahmana, Aranyaka and Upanishad. All four Vedas, four Vedas, each four Veda having four parts. And what is Samhita, what is Brahmana, what is Aranyaka, what is Upanishad, we will discuss in Vedic literature. I will give the definition in Vedic literature. Okay. Presently, we will discuss only which Veda? Rig Veda. That is between 1500 BC to 1000 BC. Now, who are the composers? Who are the composers of all these Vedas? Hmm? By six family of sages, you can just write down the names. Vishwamitra, okay, Atri, then again, Vamadeva, Bharadvaja. These were the, who are all these? These are Rishis. So, the Rishis who actually compose the Vedas. Did they compose on their own? Did they hear from whom? Gods. They hear from gods too. They compose mainly which Veda? Rig Veda. All these rishis, generally, they are the one who actually compose the Vedas. Do we have any evidence of women rishis or women rishikas? Did they compose any Vedas? Yes. Female rishikas or women rishikas are also named in Rig Veda. Some of the names you can write. Romasa, Lopamudra. Okay. Some of the women rishikas. And some of the mentions Noda, Gopayana. Okay. Some of the Rishi's names and Rishika's names. Okay. Got it right? Okay. And now we will come to what is Rigveda. Okay. What is Rigveda? What is the basic meaning of Rigveda? How do you define Rigveda? Collection of, okay. It is the oldest of all Veda, that is we know on the basis of the timelines also. It is a collection of nothing but shlokas, hymns, okay, also called as shuktas. Then example is Purusha Shukta hymn. How many shlokas are there total? Hmm? 1028. Okay. How many, all these shlokas are divided into how many? 10 mandalas. And where these shlokas are used? Sacrifices. Very simple, okay. All these shlokas are used at sacrifices. All these shlokas are divided into 10 mandalas or we can say 10 books also. Okay, and composed by different family of Rishis. We already know that one. Vishwamitra, Vasista, Bharadvaja. And is Vedas are in verses or prose? 
what's the sarik veda is in prose but one veda that is in prose partly in prose which veda ejur veda ejur veda is in prose only we'll come to that one all veda sama veda atharva veda rig veda even ejur veda they are all in verses only but ejur veda is in verse also as well as in prose also okay we'll come to when i take up vedic literature and come to later vedic i will give you the definition of ejur veda sama veda as well as atharva veda too okay got it rig veda okay and now we'll come to technology of early aryans with all the technology of prehistory technology of harappan civilization what is the technology of early aryans did they use iron early aryans no did they were they living in rural area or urban area rural area not in cities when you are living in rural area technology cannot be advanced technology can be we can say very very crude technology and they mention only one metal which metal they mentions ayas all these are mentioned where all these are written where vedas okay all these are written in vedas they mention one term called as ayas ayas could be either copper or bronze also we don't have much archaeological evidences because the historians say it could be bronze because i told you aryans came from which area central asia from central asia first they went to iran from iran they came to india north western part of the subcontinent during that point of time which time period we are talking about 1500 bc to 1000 bce in iran there are lot of archaeological evidences of bronze so that is the reason historians also say most probably ayas means bronze only okay not copper it probably means bronze only okay any doubts in this no iron still we don't see any kind of iron technology copper chalcolithic bronze is in which one indus valley civilization then again uh, ayas that is could be bronze that is in early vedic times no aryan then again what is a hmm? vedas also no it is mentioned in later veda it is not mentioned in rig veda okay it is mentioned in later veda that is what is the term here we can see that is term is ayas but in later veda term is shyama ayas or krishna ayas krishna ayas means dark metal shyama ayas means dark metal the dark metal is iron okay and now we are coming into economic life of rig veda what is the economic life of rig veda how it was what they were pastoral or we can say cattle rearing okay nomads we can say that one moved from one place to another place in search of what in search of pastures in search of pastures for their cattle okay so mixed pastoral we can say but did they have any <coughs> sorry agriculture did they have agriculture yes agriculture was also practiced but only one crop there is only one crop which is that crop barley okay so one crop was barley barley is called as yava okay so metal is called as ayas barley is called as yava okay barley is called as yava so this which time period we are talking about rigvedic time period very very simple so focus on the terms here and all the whatever we are further discussion we are going to have focus on the terms itself overall concept should be clear i guess you people already know the concept what is rigveda what is later veda what is mauryan age uh, post gupta age all these things you already know that one okay and our economic life com competing that one that is lot of importance was given to cows also it was a chief form of wealth okay then again we can also say the wealthy person is called as what gomat okay at the same time they were using all the kind of religious practices to increase the wealth and the wealth in the, during this point of time measured in terms of what in terms of cattle wealth was measured in terms of cattle and the priests who were presiding over the sacrifices and they were had to be given some kind of gifts and that gifts were also given in the form of cows only okay cows were also medium of exchange also see form of wealth medium of exchange okay you can just write down only one thing you have to write down is slide is gomat what is my gomat wealthy person wealthy person is called as gomat okay and then cows important second you can see wars wars used to be fought for what acquire of cows babru vanamo in nodidra okay that is exact that is war wars were fought for cow cows and the wars was called as what gavisti the term for cow uh, term for war is called as gavisti and other terms were also there what is other terms for wars we can say goshu gavveshana okay at the same time gavvet all these are other terms for wars actually actual meaning of gavist means search for cows actual meaning of gavist means search for cows and they used to search cows from whom who acquired those cattle who actually looted their cattle it is the non aryans non aryans were given some kind of terms they are called as panis non aryans were given terms called as panis okay so aryans 
are the one who actually act to look for cows which were looted by panis okay panis were non aryans were the cows were also used for or cattle were also used for food purpose also yes that is also there one example is there that is gogna okay that is called as what the term used for slaughterer okay so cow killer they say gogna is the term used for slaughterer okay and we also evidence of charred bones of cows the charred bones of cows discovered from bhagwanpura that is in haryana as well as daderi in punjab okay and of course cow is itself is a controversial animal it is recording okay it might go to youtube i don't know okay uh, i will be in trouble but all these things are said in some kind of say textbooks that's what i'm just rephrasing those okay <laughs> it's not my opinion by the way so all these things are that is again different kind of uh, history is there okay that is right wing history as well as left wing is centralized history okay so different kind of history belief system they went with that one so we have some kind of evidences of that is the bones of the cows have been burnt that is charred bones that is from bhagwanpura as well as in daderi okay and then again this is mainly economic terms and economy we, talk, we talked about how many crops were there only one crop that is a, which is the one crop barley and they used wooden plow walls okay they used wooden plow walls so plow knowledge was also there and the term for plow was langala okay shira or phala okay these are the terms for we can say plows plows were given different terms we know gavishti gavyu gaveshana they are used for wars and now gomat is a chief form of wealth or a wealthy person and now langala sira and pala are used for <coughs> plow <coughs> did they have knowledge of seasons yes and what agriculture was permanent agriculture or shifting agriculture shifting agriculture we can say shifting cultivation it was not permanent okay and how they cleared the forest burning slash and burn we already know burning also if they are shifting from property shifting from one area to other area are they settling in one place no if they are not settling in one place there is no concept of private property there is no concept of private property because they moved with their cows moved with their cattle from one place to another place you said so that is the reason there is no still there is no concept of private property which is a major form of property cows cattle are the major form of property they are also chief form of wealth also medium of exchange also okay and then continuing with the economy we can say that one some arts and crafts are also there chariot making carpentry weaving okay but are these arts and crafts are as diversified as indus valley civilization no it is a less diversified compared to which one compared to indus valley civilization because we already seen indus valley civilization it is a more diversified economy because that has more hunting and gathering also as well as agriculture also as well as different kind of domestication of animals at the same time different kind of arts and crafts are also there but here arts and crafts are very very few limited to chariot making carpentry as well as weaving and there is less evidence or no evidence of trade and commerce why trade and commerce is not happening here what is the reason hmm? once they are not set, one that is they are not settled there is only one crop since so, subsistence is very very less narrow when the subsistence is diversified then only you can expect more and more trade and commerce you said that is subsistence is very very narrow so no evidence of trend come and now we are coming into political structure we discussed the economic structure which are the terms what do you mean by pala langala sira alder pala what do you mean by gomat wealthy person what do you mean by gavyu gaveshana for the what do you mean by panis non aryans who actually stole the cattle from aryans you said uh, what is actually what is the basic meaning of aryans itself only family of languages family of language now what is the political structure political structure is tribal okay it's mainly tribal there is one chief will be there the chief will be ruling over the people and the tribal chief will be called as what rajan okay the tribal chief will be called as rajan did he rule over the place or the people people he ruled over the people and what is the term used for people that is called as jana okay the term used for jana understand it right but later what happened monarchy concept emerged later what happened private property concept emerged so instead of ruling over people the same rajas started ruling over the land that is how dynasty emerges that is how mahajanapada emerges we'll come to that one okay so that is people referred as jana and not over land we already know that one okay at the same time we can say he was primarily a military leader why he was a military leader there is no administration there is no bureaucracy he was a military leader what is that military what is his famous what is his major function 
acquire cattle acquire cattle from other aryan tribes also other non aryan tribes also you said that is who fought for cows okay that is a major role of raja if they are fighting for cows what is the social structure we can say can we say tribal conflicts were there tribal conflicts were definitely there okay to increase their wealth they used to fight for cows so there was a kind of conflicts were common over there okay and we can also say other names were used for raja that is gopati janasya and gopa janasya and look at that one gopati go again means what cows then gopa janasya again go again giving importance to which animal cow okay. that is shows how much important the cow as an animal so raja is also called as gopati janasya as well as gopa janasya all these things right what's this <coughs> political structure of early aryans you just have to write jana rajan gopati janasya as well as gopa janasya that is the only thing again political structure continuing that one was he permanent no he could be chosen among the tribes any one person can be chosen among the tribes and he could be replaced whenever the people wanted when he could be replaced when the raja was replaced when he did not win the wars very simple okay so that is no concept of monarchy he was given some kind of gifts also called as booty okay we can talk about from the stolen property whatever the cows they stolen whatever the cattle they stolen and some cows were given as gift to whom raja and his gifts were called as what bali okay this gifts were called as bali and his gifts were permanent or voluntary or it obligatory or voluntary voluntary these are not permanent contribution or not regular contribution like a tax but rather they were voluntary but over a period of time what happened this rajas received more and more cattle it means their wealth is increasing or decreasing increasing and they attained the higher status in the society that is how the fourfold varna system got emerged we'll come to that one we don't want to get into too much deeper into that one we'll only focus that kind of things little bit concept i'll keep on giving some kind of ideas about that one they were voluntary not regular like a taxes and he was selected among the jana tribe already told you he could be replaced according to the will of the people if the people want to change that raja he could be changed but was it possible in monarchy is it possible to change the raja in monarchy what do you mean monarchy family rule one single family rule but still there is no concept of monarchy during which time period we are talking about rigvedic time period and his powers were limited his powers were limited by whom who limited his powers presently prime minister power president power is limited by whom huh? that is assemblies right okay so that is his powers were limited by assemblies that is political assemblies limited his powers which are the four political assemblies sabha samiti then again vidatta and then again gana what are the functions of this what is the function of sabha sabha is as elder members of the tribe what is samiti all the members of the tribe can we say all the members of the tribe including women members also so can we say some kind of democratic political system what is my democratic political system hmm? that is people's participation in the decision making so can we say here all the people of the tribes are participating in the decision making what is vidata probably had some kind of secular as well as religious function also and women also attended vidata okay and gana probably they say military function some kind of okay military function so four kind of assembly these assemblies limited the power of which person raja it means raja was accountable to these assemblies so presently the executive is responsible to what legislature you said that legislature is lok sabha we can say parliament too so in the same way such kind of organization such kind of political organization was existed during which time period rigvedic can we say egalitarian political structure egalitarian economic so what do you mean by egalitarian equal principles okay that we can say equality based political system was existed and the chief queen was called as maishi okay chief queen was called as maishi okay so raja he had a queen she was called as maishi okay this political structure very simple he ruled over the people not over the land and what are the terms used raja gopati janasya gopa janasya and now had any kind of political structure administration was there any kind of administration because they were moving from one place to another place there is no much not much administration it was not elaborate administration very few uh, we can say officers can be seen there was no bureaucracy but one person can be mentioned that is called as senani what do i mean by senani probably a military commander helping the raja because what is the major function of raja fighting wars 
to fight the wars he required a commander that commander was called as senani okay so overall we can say egalitarian political system all the people had a equal say in the selection of the raja overall we can say <coughs> tribal chieftainship okay that is a tribal chief was there the tribal chief was raja so only term you have to write down here is senani okay any doubts on this political system economic system we understood pastoral system as well as well, then we can say only one crop then political system raja gopati janasya gopa janasya and senani and our society of early aryans how the society was organized hmm? we already know it was a tribal society tribal society far more equal and the semi nomadic what do you mean semi nomadic hmm? what do you mean semi nomadic pastoral they moved from one place to another place at the same time they all they were also practicing shifting cultivation that is the reason they could they could be called as semi nomadic too and again egalitarian values for there what are my egalitarian values i told you democratic principles that because all the people are treated equally economically as well as in politically also then we can say the cattle actually not individually owned there is a ownership of the tribe okay all the people equally had the equal ownership control over the cattle and people willingly gave some kind of gifts to whom gifts to rajas as well as to priests also when they were performing any kind of sacrifices and example in polity everyone participated in tribal assembly we know that one samiti and but inter tribal conflicts were there society was riddled with some kind of conflicts why this conflict were happening for what purpose is conflict for happening acquiring wealth we can directly say acquiring wealth also and society was also based on kinship what do you mean kinship blood relations it is mainly blood relations all the tribes were reside in one place and they had blood ties also so it was almost society was based on kinship only okay and then social organization further one jana and wish what is my jana i already told you people all the tribal people are called as what jana what is my wish jana means whole tribe you know okay so wish means clans within the tribe there are some bigger families within the tribe and that is called as wish and is bigger families also add further more division that is called as kula also small families are called as kula okay so jana is bigger wish is bigger clans we can say within that clans one small family and that family is called as kula who is head of the kula kulapa okay that is we can say head of the kula was kulapa so it is a male member or female member male member so which kind of society patriarchal society you say it is a patriarchal society okay so patriarchal <coughs> family norms so if it is patriarchal society obviously the prayers for also increasing wealth also prayers for also for birth of male child too even today also okay that is then again and why they wanted male child is because not the hated girls they did not have any kind of stereotypes but rather they wanted male members to fight in the wars because war is an important activity in which society rigvedic society okay so they thought they wanted male children to fight in the wars to acquire the more and more wealth okay so not because they ate it girls too because that is not based on, that is ultimately that evolved that kind of society that kept on evolving later we'll come to that one then again position of women in early vedic society what kind of society was there what kind of women position was there hmm? equal society there was no discrimination already seen female rishis also rishikas also can we say they were educated to right if they are composing vedas in which language they were composing vedas sanskrit is right it means women were also given education no discrimination we can say enjoyed equal rights broad minded attitude towards girls then you can say love marriage was very common not nowadays okay then again could freely choose her partner okay everything was free then okay sorry not free rather everything was okay very open okay so that is kind of equal opportunities were given married after puberty that means which marriage concept was not there child marriage we said at the same time no concept of child marriage sab kuch acha tha okay aajkal acha nahi hai bas okay so that is no concept of child marriage so it means that is the reason when dayan and saraswati said what what is what he said go back to vedas isn't it which vedas you are talking about rigvedic times is it look at the time period political system democratic is it then again economic system democratic society democratic but british said india did not have democracy okay but we did have democracy way back in 1500 bc itself only 1500 bc to 1000 bc okay then again more position of women could participate in rituals okay but right now there are some kind of restrictions on women in participating in religious activities best example shabarimala temple 
Okay. Then again, there was no such kind of conception. Some imps were also composed by women also. Then again, so educated person. And one concept was there that is called as Niyoga. What is my Niyoga? A childless widow can marry husband's brother. And this is the same practice given example by Ishwar Chandra Vidyasagar to bring which legislation? Widow Remarriage Act. Because society later banned widow remarriage. But widow remarriage concept was there during which time period? Rigvedic time period. Okay. And that concept was called as what? Niyoga. And that was used by Ishwar Chandra Vidya Sagar to bring a new law or to convince the Britishers to bring the new law that is allowing of widow remarriage in 1856. And what's is? Okay. Then you can say that is so widow remarriage was allowed. Okay. So widow remarriage was allowed over there. Any doubts on this? If widow remarriage is there, which concept will be absent? Sati. There was no Sati. Okay. So Sati system was not there. So that is the reason. Rigvedic times. Why it is called as one of the glorious cultural times? Why it is called as one of the glorious times in Indian history? Is because of all this social structure. Okay. Social structure was overall equal. Politically, economically as well as socially. And there was no gender discrimination also. Okay. Again, you know, presently Gotra they use. Hmm? How the Gotra was evolved? Again, go. Evolved out of cows only. How Gotra is evolved is, I told you, Aryan tribes, they lived along with their cows in one particular area. Okay. And now those group, like one family living with some cows in one area, other family living in other area with some their own cows. And now this family is belong to one Gotra and this family is belong to another Gotra. You see? That is clan or wish or lived with their cows in a cow shed, in a common cow shed. And now they come to be, came to be belong to the same Gotra. And that is the reason Gotra exogamy marriages happen. Not Gotra endogamy. What is my Gotra exogamy? Outside Gotra. If you marry within Gotra, that's it because you are marrying your ancestors or cousins or brothers, sisters or brothers. And that is the reason Gotra exogamy. But Varana endogamy. What is my Varana endogamy? Within Varana. And today we can call it as caste. That is nothing else. Okay. That is the, that is how the Gotra was evolved during Rig Vedic times. Okay. Any doubts on this? And then now we'll come to social division. Over a period of time, it is divided into warrior classes. And warrior classes given the name of Kshatriya. Okay. Why they add the uh, higher position in the society? What is the reason? Because fighting for cows, they were the leaders, they were military leader. And second position was given to whom? Priests. And they were given the name Brahmanas. And the third position was common people. Okay, less fortunate people, we can say common people. But over a period of time, by the end of the Rigvedic times, by the time of 900 BC, by the time of 1000 BC, we can say fourth division called Shudra Semers. How the term Shudra evolved? What do you mean by Shudra actually? Shudra is not untouchables. Be careful. Shudras are not untouchables. Untouchables are a different category. I will come to how, how untouchability emerged. Shudras is the name of a defeated tribe. One of, because Aryans used to have fight with non-Aryans. The local non-Aryans, they one kind of non-Aryan tribe name was Shudras and that is how the name of Shudra came. Okay. So, that is, it is, was the name of a defeated or subjugated tribe. Any doubts in this? Okay. And again, this fourfold division was given religious sanction. What do you mean religious sanction? Why such a system was followed until 1829? Why today child marriage is also followed? Hmm? Why today women were not allowed into some kind of uh, religious activities? What is the reason? What is the belief system behind that one? What do you mean religious sanctions? It means they are approved by religion, approved by gods. And that is the reason, see, this kind of, this whatever the system that emerging, the, the major reason for evolution of the system is politics and economy. You see? Why economy? Because warriors were increasing what? They were receiving what? More and more wealth. And that is the reason they were achieving higher status. And the common people were left with less fortune, less, less wealth. And that is the reason they were given lower status. But over a period of time, they were given what status? Uh, what, what sanctions? Religious sanction. This, whatever the division is there, this should be maintained because that is, that is being said in the religious, that is being said in the Vedas, that is nothing but, okay. And so it is approved by God and it must be adhered to. We talk about Raja Dharma, right? What is Raja Dharma? Hmm? Hmm? They say Dharma, Raja Dharma. The Raja Dharma is nothing but maintaining this fourfold division. Raja Dharma is not production of the religion. Raja Dharma is maintenance of this fourfold division so that each other is not interfering in functions of other Varana or we can say other category. That is a major thing. Okay. And we can say 
four varnas first found in purusha shukta of rigveda okay where it was first mentioned four vedas sorry four varnas in the purusha shukta hymn of rigveda that is where the first it was mentioned that one initially it was not there okay but later it was started on evolving okay now what is the reason this four fold division emerges i already told you mainly unequal distribution of wealth that is one but other reasons are also there no need to write this that is varna color and unequal distribution of wealth as well as aryans and non aryans assimilation what is my varna varna means color aryans add some kind of we can say prideness in their skin color and today also we can see blacks and whites that is there in the western society you said so because of their color of the skin they feel they are superior and that is the reason they should be given which position higher position and second one i told you unequal distribution of wealth this unequal distribution of wealth was happening between which categories or which sections between the common people as well as the warrior as well as the priestly classes because priestly classes were receiving more and more gifts because of what function sacrifices and warriors were receiving more and more gifts because of what function wars function but the other people just were giving they were not receiving anything and now these top positions or we can say that is two sections they wanted to permanently maintain their higher position and that is the reason they were given religious sanctions and third reason is aryans and non aryans assimilation like when you take i took i told you there was inter tribal rivalry was there aryans as well as non aryans this aryans had priests warriors and common people this non aryans also had priests they also had religious life they also had warriors they also had common people when this aryans defeated non aryans what happened was the non aryans priests assimilated into aryans priests okay non aryans warriors assimilated into aryans warriors so they were given which status kshatriya status non aryans priests were given which status brahmana status and the non aryans common people were assimilated into common people of aryans and they were given which status shudra status that's it and they were given vaishya status later onwards also so that is how this is a conceptual part not necessary just understand this is the reason for the evolution of what evolution of four fold varna that is a varna color distinction unequal distribution of wealth and aryans and non aryans assimilation okay we can take it offline one more time okay so not in the class because one more time if you want me to explain i will explain it in offline concept one more time too and in religious life of aryans there were any temples no temples okay then what they were worshiping hmm? nature worship that is no idols worship worship natural forces which are the natural forces they worshiped fire okay water okay and wind also that is vayu agni varuna water that is personification of the nature the nature was personified any doubts in this okay and you are personified in which form male form okay because which society that was patriarchal society does it mean female gods were absent no female gods were also present too okay so that is so gods were majorly male only okay? major gods were male and yagnas were conducted in open to satisfy these gods why the yagnas and yagas were done why the sacrifices were done to satisfy these gods which are the gods agni varuna and vayu okay and who conducted the sacrifices and yagnas priests and for the conduct conducting the sacrifices they received what cows or we can say gifts and that gift increased their position okay that is a that is a major reason for evolution of we can say ultimately the four fold division of the society and sacrifices to cattle sacrifice of cattle to please this gods too and i continuing with that one one question 2012 the religion of early vedic aryans they particularly asking early vedic okay was primarily of bhakti no image worship and yagnas no worship of nature and yagnas yes okay then again worship of nature and bhakti no bhakti concept evolved quite later okay so answer should be c look at that one can you see what is the one in all the pyqs we solved especially in indus valley civilization in vedas also which area they are focusing in this questions religious life this is high yield area you have to focus you have to go little bit deeper in religious area at the same time you have to focus on other areas also okay if you are focusing only on religious area and that is suicide you said you have to focus on religious areas also as well as other areas also okay and then again important gods also which are the important gods prajapati okay so why who was prajapati they believed that one the entire universe is created because of prajapati's body prajapati sacrificed himself 
and that is the reason entire universe is born out of that one and that is the reason you have to keep on conducting sacrifices that is the reason is also called as lord of creature because he created the universe he created the species through what through sacrifices he himself sacrificed his body and that is the reason prajapati should be pleased he pleased with what he should be pleased with sacrifice sacrifice of what human sacrifices not possible obviously animals they are not going to question isn't and that is the reason they started sacrificing all the cattle so and there was a reaction against his sacrifices and that reaction led to buddhism and jainism very simple okay this is the overall concept and you can say so sacrifice are necessary to maintain the order of the universe because the universe is evolved out of what sacrifices okay and then again another important god indra okay is also called as what purandara because is also called as breaker of forts also purandara means breaker of forts breaker of which forts particularly indus valley civilization forts maybe we don't have proper evidences because aryans were fond of wars and in the wars which god helped them to win indra okay so largest number of hymns were composed for indra okay so that is particularly which veda we are talking about rigveda in rigveda which god has the largest number of shlokas indra okay and again he led aryan tribes to victory victory over which tribes non aryan tribes non aryan tribes are called as what panis that's it and non aryan subjugated tribes one tribe is also called as shudra okay and again his servants were gandharvas as well as apsaras okay who were apsaras dancers who were gandharvas musicians gandharvas means musicians apsaras means dancers okay so gandharvas means musicians he was having his own instagram reels okay that is gandharvas as well as apsaras okay that is how instagram reels was emerged okay he was enjoying his life okay gandharvas means musicians and out in this okay and then again is also described as one more name urvarjit it means the winner of fertile fields also because now the wars were happening for acquiring cattle and some wars were sometimes happening for acquiring of one area also because one crop was also there what is the one crop barley yava that is also called as urvarjit okay so three terms that is we can say breaker of forts purandara okay and urvarajit so these are terms used for which god indra okay again another god that is agni what is the role of agni he is a mediator okay he is a mediator between god and the people okay that is a intermediary between men and god okay that is when agni was going okay, so agni was when it is burning so that is how people communicated through or people communicated with the god it is a kind of intermediary where agni resided it is reside in fireplace the fireplace means ath ath means what ole anta karitarala adige madak karitarala ath andre ole anta anta snegalu okay that is fireplace intermediary between men and god other god varuna okay what is a varuna is varuna is a personification of water what is the role of varuna what is the status of varuna during rigvedic times he is the upholder of cosmic order who created the cosmic order prajapati who is uphold the cosmic order varuna but later that position was given to which god vishnu okay that is how the gods were also changing according to according to times also gods were also changing to the upholder of cosmic order and that cosmic order is called as rita that cosmic order is called as rita this was a question was also asked okay rita so creator of the cosmic order prajapati upholder of the cosmic order varuna and that cosmic order is called as rita also called as universal law we can say it means protecting the existence of creatures and space that is the universe that the universe protector was varuna agni they can ask the match the following also they can give one statement also Send. See, while you're reading textbooks, while reading any kind of sources, make questions, make questions and answer it. Okay, that is another way of doing good level of preparation too. Okay, and then again, welcome to another god, that is Soma. Okay, what was Soma? God of plants. Okay, and also we can say he's a special god of Brahmanas. Okay, we can talk about king of gods also. He's also called as king of gods too. Okay, king of gods, Soma. <coughs> and there was a special god of shudras also that is pushan okay is a god of jungles okay god of jungles too god who protected cattle and herdsmen to protect the cattle there was a special god that was pushan so how many gods we saw indra agni okay varuna okay then again soma then again pushan all these things and other gods were there vishnu surya rudra 
but these were minor gods but later what happened vishnu became the major god okay why he became the major god we will come to that we will understand that okay and some important god female gods were also there which are the women gods aditi mother of gods also then again usha goddess of dawn okay usha goddess of dawn you can write this one okay that is aditi and usha and also you can write savitri one more you can write savitri okay ila okay ila okay ila so we discussed about rigvedic economic life political life religious life can we say society was far more simpler not much complications yes but in the later part of rigveda this four fold division evolved that's it there is a reason also we saw that reason to varna as well as an equal distribution assimilation of aryans and non aryans and some unique facts about rigveda you can just write down you must have seen nish uh, nishka which was made of gold probably a currency it's quite vague term some people call it as a currency but generally there was no uh, trade evidences that is the reason we don't we don't have actual evidences to prove it was a currency but the term is there but when was the first time we hear about coins in indian history we talked about during the age of buddha punch mart coins you must have seen are you must have heard the punch mart coins that is start from 600 bc onwards not we had still in which bc 1500 bc to 1000 bc okay and again another one kshetrapati guardian deity of agricultural fields okay so another term you can just write nishka kshetrapati okay then again agnya animal sacrifice except cows quite controversial quite vague also okay because some people say cows were not sacrifice some people would want to believe cows for sacrifice and some people would not want to believe cows for cows for sacrifice too i will left to your imagination i will left to your facts also no, you don't have to go with them animal sacrifice without <coughs> them i'm sure right this is about rigveda okay shall we finish later veda like this only then we'll have a break or you want to have a break right now break or later veda break you can take finish later veda because comparison will be there no just comparison not more than 15 minutes you can have longer break too one hour break we will have okay then we will come to that one because we just ha huh? one hour break would be great after this one okay we will just compare because rigveda related to later veda we know the society polity and economy we will just discuss this one that is another thing a later vedic time period 1000 bc to 600 bc okay now new texts were composed which are the new texts were composed ajurveda samhita sa samaveda ajurveda as well as atharva veda when was rigveda was composed early vedic times and now the samhita samaveda ajurveda and atharva veda were composed during later veda what do you mean by samhita i will come to don't worry samhita definition i will give you what is rigveda samhita what is ajurveda samhita what is samaveda samhita what is atharva samhita i will give you samhita is nothing but core part of the veda nothing else okay and again brahmanas aranyakas Upanishads they were also composed during which time period later Vedic time period okay later Vedic time period and now geography of later Aryans early Aryans were Punjab region Indus Valley and the easternmost extension of early Vedic time period is that one Yamuna River okay now later Vedic Aryans moved from Yamuna River to Ganga River okay that is one thing from Ganga Yamuna do up that is from Indus to Yamuna do up and right now Yamuna do up to Yamuna to Ganga. I mean, Ganga plains means which states we are talking about? UP, Bihar, that area. Early Vedic time period, which states we are talking about? Punjab, Haryana, all these things. Okay, so that is a geography shifted from northwestern part of India to eastern part of India, north and northeastern part of India to or north and eastern part, not north, not northeast, rather north and east. That is one thing. UP and Bihar region. That is Gangetic Valley. You can just say Gangetic Valley too. And the meaning of the new three Vedas. What is the definition of Rigveda? We shall already discuss what Rigveda contains. collection of shlokas nothing else now we'll come to ajurveda that is it deals with procedure to deal with those shlokas how to conduct the sacrifices and everything it is a rituals okay the procedure for rituals of sacrifices i think spelling mistake is there sacrifices is there that is sacrifices okay how to do that particular sacrifices and only veda that is partly in prose all the vedas are in which form verse this is the only veda that is partly in prose also Okay, it means other part of the Ajurveda is in which form? Verse only. Okay, so partly in prose, partly in verse. And again, further divided into two parts: Krishna Ajurveda as well as Shukla Ajurveda. That is, Krishna Ajurveda also called as Black Ajurveda. Shukla Ajurveda is also called as White Ajurveda. Okay, and that is Krishna Ajurveda is the one that is in prose. Okay, these are commentaries. These are explanation, explanation of the rituals. 
that is in krishna yajurveda krishna means actually the major meaning of krishna means that is actually dark that is a major meaning of it okay that is yajurveda contains the krishna yajurveda contains mantras and their commentaries explanation and shukla yajurveda contains uh, that is the formulas of sacrifices okay so how, what kind of formulas are there there is a major meaning so which if you ask the question consider the following statement all the vedas are in process right or wrong no some of the only which of the following veda is in partly in prose ajur veda which of the following veda is completely in prose no question is not possible either you saying that is one thing okay that is partly in prose this is about ajur veda and okay and then again sama veda sama veda is more what collection of verses from where from rigveda and setting it to tunes okay that is they were set to tunes arranged in ragas sama veda is the beginning of music also called as book of chants also it is also called as book of chants because where this sacrifices where this songs were used songs were used at sacrifices songs were used at sacrifices where the lyrics for the songs came from rigveda so rigveda provided the lyrics and sama veda provided the ragas and what is the famous raga drupad raga which is a person who used this one tansen okay see we are linking with medieval history also okay so that is how when learning a topic learn with comprehensively okay don't just study one topic in isolation study that topic in complete in comprehensive manner okay that is when you have a larger understanding better conceptual understanding also this which veda sama veda so rigveda shlokas ajur veda explanation of those shlokas and then again sama veda lyrics as well as singing it is the beginning of indian music you can just write one more beginning of indian music that is in sama veda beginning of indian music that is not there in the slides and now what is atharva veda what other veda deals with non vedic elements or non aryan elements we can say that is atharva veda is a collection of magic spells and charm that is to talking about magic tantra okay and at the same time we can talk about to ward off evil spirits and diseases and why this magic black magic is used for material wealth okay and to mention superstitions also and mentions non aryan culture also it also mentions non aryan cultures too okay contain non aryan elements got the differences and again atharveda is in which form prose or verse verse only okay only ajur veda that is in partly prose and keep emphasizing this one this should always be there in mind okay when you make mistakes in these kind of questions that is when you will lose the edge okay should not miss out on this kind of basic elements question too okay and then we'll come to economy of later vedas economy polity and society will end it okay then again cattle rearing continued that one okay along with cattle rearing what is now what is the major occupation that is right now is agriculture now in rigvedic culture which was there cattle rearing pastoral and plus one agriculture was there which agriculture was there barley but right now there is we can say agriculture was on land now land ownership concept was also evolving because there was no private property in which time period rigvedic time period why there was no private property there was no agriculture there was not settling and right now what is people people are settling over a land because land is becoming important for which function agriculture function and now new kind of crops are also mentioned that is we can say goduma that is wheat yava was called as what yava means barley goduma is wheat vrihi means rice okay i can also talk about beans also okay beans goduma vrihi you can just write goduma and vrihi so if they are having agricultural life do they have to move did they have to move from one place to another place no now they can live which kind of life right now sedentary life okay so now later vedic aryans is called as sedentary life system and that is the major difference between which one early vedic as well as later vedic you got the economic differences they were movers but these people were settlers and settling in which area which valley ganga yamuna valley you said mainly gangetic valley and that valley is you know fertile lands and that fertile land will also help in the growth of food and that food is growing trade will also grow and why all of western agriculture is becoming important because of discovery of iron and now later vedic aryans knew the which metal iron early vedic aryans knew which metal copper or could be bronze it could be either okay iron because for clearing of forest also it can be used previously people were using what method to clear the forest for agriculture slash and burn burning you said right now they can use iron also and it is also most efficient way of clearing the forest too. that is one thing 
at the same time bring more land under cultivation if you bring more land under cultivation what happens more production if more production is there surplus production and what you do with surplus production trade and the trading ultimately led to the evolution of towns the second urbanization started to emerge by the end of the later vedic not during later vedic during the end of the later vedic and that is when we will start going to start from 600 bce onwards to and now later vedic culture also known as iron ved iron age culture too okay so how many culture chalcolithic copper age bronze age is which one arappan and then again iron age is later vedic and at iron called as which one krishna ayas or shyama ayas what is mean ayas ayas means metal krishna ayas or shyama ayas means dark metal okay that is where all these are mentioned these are mentioned in vedas okay and this metal has been found from atranjik era as well as jakera that is in up both are there in uttar pradesh these are found in atranjik era as well as in jakera <laughs> and this iron tools have been discovered with a distinctive pottery a new kind of pottery award how many types of pottery we already seen akure color which time period chalcolithic red and black megalithic also as well as in indus valley also black and gray ware neolithic and now this is painted gray ware okay so this pottery is painted gray ware also called as pgw okay it's also called as pgw now pgw culture is associated with which vedic culture later vedic culture okay understanding it right we are breaking down each and everything later vedic culture is also called as painted gray ware culture later vedic culture can also be called as iron age culture also okay and then so called painted gray ware iron age culture too okay can you say urban culture also beginning of urban foundation for urban the foundation for urban culture in 600 bce started around 1000 bce 1000 bce to around 600 bce too okay and now painted graver you can see the pottery is right so painted graver it means some kind of designs are there on this pottery arappan pottery was plain pottery or design pottery plain pottery but some designs for us we will see in art and culture don't worry also show the image now continuing with economy arts and crafts are further exploded because which metal is there right now iron is there at the same time carpenters are also there because they were started settling at one place are carpenters were needed for which 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 activity house building activity chariots building also we can say leather making leather was made from which animals huge animal wealth was utilized okay that is at talk of pottery also which pottery painted graver pottery can we say now the economy is becoming diversified compared to early vedic times later vedic economy is diversified getting it right okay so all this focus on the concepts focus on the concept then the facts will automatically will come okay then again ship building also why ship building because later veda mentions about seas as sea voyages but early vedic do not mention about the seas do not mention about oceans okay but later veda mention about oceans okay and that is the reason if they mention about oceans i ocean journey also how you can make ocean journey through ship building you said that the ship should definitely be there too okay that is we can say there is a rudimentary beginning that is the basic beginning of what trade and commerce as well as towns also if trade and commerce is beginning what should definitely be there towns marketplace and town is distinguished with a marketplace okay so now all these things are exploded by the time of buddha buddha same period of after 600 bc to all these things are basic we can say a kind of foundation so but its full fledged towns are noted there full fledged towns are noted there because full fledged towns from the uh, after the end of later vedic times when the later vedic times ended 600 bc onwards now what we can say semi urban culture not the urban culture but rather semi urban rural and semi urban but early vedic is rural early vedic is rural but the later vedic is semi urban that is the one thing major difference now political system economy is done what was the political system of early vedic sabha samiti vidhata gana as well as tribal chief was there what is the tribal chief was called as raja raja was given another terms also gopati janasya and gopa janasya is it but right now then or rather early vedic times the raja was ruled over people because people were not settling but right now what people are doing they are settling now the raja will be ruling over the land, land. and this land was expanding too which area we are talking about gangetic valley and now when this land was expanding all the tribes they stopped attending the assemblies which assemblies sabha samiti the sabha and samiti they put some kind of restriction on the powers of raja now the people stopped attending sabha and samiti who became powerful raja if opposition is not getting into parliament who will become more and more powerful 
government you are seeing in a videos we saying no need to mention okay at is and now what happened who became powerful right now raja became powerful now what raja made his position as permanent and that evolved which concept monarchy concept so that is the difference between early veda as well as later veda you can just read out this one egalitarian values which were there during the political system in early vedic times they were losing relevance because of all the matters i mentioned right now monarchy was growing i told you at the same time territorial concept of kingship because athra veda right now mentions a word called rashtra what do you mean rashtra rashtra means territory okay because then people rigveda mentions about jana wish okay clan kula but right now they are mentioned about rashtra rashtra means what territory it means the territorial aspect of kingship was growing the monarchical aspect of kingship was growing and now the wars also changed previously wars for what cows and now the wars for land and now what happened mauryan empire said so magadan dynasty and they fought for what they fought for cows now they fought for what land expansion of the land is it that is taxation became mandatory what was the taxation was called as bali okay so now people living in rashtra must obey the rules and regulations and that is how they became loyal to not to the tribe they became loyal to the raja and that led to rajadharma is it that is how the dynastic concept that is how the monarchical concept was evolving to and then we can also say paid in the form of the taxation became obligatory right now the people should pay taxation right now and taxation was paid in the form of grain or cattle cattle is still important cattle is still important along with cattle what other is becoming important grains okay because agriculture is growing right that is one thing and to collect this taxation now there was an official what is that official will cause us bagaduga okay so now a new kind of term you can cite bagaduga because now there is a function of taxation to continue that function of taxation permanently you need an official and that official is called as bagaduga and should right can we say now bureaucracy is growing there was no bureaucracy in early vedic times right now bureaucracy is growing to why bureaucracy is growing very simple reason now raja has the money to pay the salary he can pay salary through what grain or cattle also land also understand that is one thing and on political system we can say taxation enabled king to appoint officers and ministers and his officers or ministers are called as ratnins only one officer we talked in rigvedic times which is one officer senani and right now we talk about ratnins ratnins means what ministers ministers to help raja and who are these ministers come from which section of the society upper section that is either from the warrior section or the priestly section and their power is concentrating and their wealth is also concentrating and that is became permanent and that led to varna system or we can say four fold varna system or we can say caste system also okay then again looked after chariot making one of the major duty of ratnins was make looking after chariot making and the person who is in charge of treasury was called as samgrahitri the person who collected tax bagaduga and the tax collected should be there in a treasury and to look after a treasury there was a samgrahitri okay any doubts on this samgrahitri and raja used to be given some kind of advice advice given by whom prohit you said that is chief priest was there raja prohit they say okay and then again lastly we can say there was no standing army what do you mean by standing army permanent army permanent army is still not yet there permanent army started from the time of mahajanapadas next topic we are building into mahajanapadas okay there was no standing army the still huge army was not yet there during the later vedic times okay and ceremony is to increase the strength of the raja now raja's strength needs to be increased raja want to make his position what permanent and how do you make that position permanent by conducting some sacrifices and which sacrifices raja suya sacrifice or raja suya ceremony what is raja suya ceremony that is a consecration okay patabhishek you said raja suya was a royal cons consecration so they saying that one this one person particularly is he became eligible to become what raja after attaining certain age to and then again very famous that is vajapay also what is vajapay vajapay is literally meaning is drink of strength it is a drink of strength and one of the features of vajapay is chariot race now all the chariots were done okay all the all the chariots were made to do some kind of running race okay then only one chariot was made to win that is only raja's chariot it means whose power is increased raja's power so that is the reason his position should also become permanent 
okay so that is was the pay it had a chariot race in which royal chariot was made to win against all other chariots which other famous sacrifice was done ashwamedha sacrifice we can talk about ashwamedha sacrifice what is ashwamedha sacrifice you just leave ours wherever that ours goes all that area belongs to whom raja so when that area belongs to raja he was given which kind of title chakravarti if that those areas if they were under another raja if they don't accept that one they had to fight a war in that war who was made to win again the raja was made to win and that is the reason he was given the title of chakravartin is it so all these things are increasing the position of whom status of raja and that is the reason raja's position is also becoming very very permanent okay and then again aindra mahabhishekha after the completion of ashwamedha let's say for example he defeated all the rajas he attained the title of chakravartin just to conclude that position or just to reemphasize that position another sacrifice was done another ceremony was called as that is called as aindra mahabhishekha it means he was called as ekarath ekarath means what single ruler over very large area of uh, we can say settlements we can all these kind of things we can terms we can use it aindra mahabhishekha and supremacy over all king and who presided over all these ceremonies who conducted all these ceremonies priest raja purohit he sent now for conducting these ceremonies what they were given dana and dakshina he sent they were given some kind of we can say land also as well as gifts also now whose position is becoming permanent whose position is becoming stayed as wealthy that is warrior position also as well as priest class position also and now what is happening to common people they are becoming less fortunate they have to pay taxes and then they cannot conduct all this sacrifices if they have to conduct sacrifices they have to provide some kind of gifts and that is what buddha and jaina ultimately opposed that one and one more sacrifice was there purusha medha anybody heard of it one person was chosen okay for one year all is wish all is wishes will be fulfilled whatever he asks everything will be given he or she but at the end of the year he should be sacrificed okay yes it was there it was there you don't even believe it it was there it was called as purush medha okay it was called as purush medha anybody willing to do it ha huh? but i can't fulfill the promises by the way okay that is called as purush medha and now all these in the rituals the raja was represented as god and that evolution of which theory divine theory of kingship okay divine right of kingship you getting it right how all the concepts are emerging okay divine right of kingship okay so this is about the political structure of rigvedic times uh, sorry later vedic times too any doubts on this okay so we'll take break over here okay then we will continue with a uh, little bit political system also then again little bit society also you take one hour break okay then we can meet at 3 o'clock that would be great okay three and again again two more session one and a half hour one and a half hour we'll see we'll see the energy level after that okay if energy level is good we will continue but we will try to finish until arsha vardhana class we can say go until 5 5:30 just three days you make from, no pain no gain okay <laughs> no pain no gain so i have the pain for three days you are going to get more out of it okay just one one two three days we can just adjust it what i am i will be faster now you are getting it all the value right you are getting it right okay so just compromise until sacrifice until you do the sacrifice okay until 5:30 5:45 we can see that one and then we will end the class and tomorrow we will start please start at 10 o'clock and then because today class is more of we can say conceptual understanding please listen okay today class is more of conceptual understanding and tomorrow's classes i am modern you already you well known facts are there compared to ancient and medieval you people have better knowledge in modern so modern is not going to take this much of time we can so go even more fastly also right but in ancient because i am concentrating on ancient because last two years ancient questions are increasing is right and that is the reason i am taking a little bit time otherwise i would have given even more faster also okay so presently i want to increase the speed because in next three hours we have to finish uh, 600 bc to until 600 ad 1000 years of history in three hours just imagine my position okay <laughs> i have to do that one so let me understand my position also we will try to bring it okay so now we will see to most important topics only each and going through each and everything we'll just keep on sticking to each and everything because it's otherwise it will become highly difficult to come uh complete entire history itself it's an ancient medieval modern because we have to give more weight to modern also 
designed. So we will take uh, one and a half day for modern itself only. Okay, so we will try to what we what I am discussing is that one. That is, we will stick the major ones, major one, most powerful one. PVQs we are going to solve everything. That's for sure. Whatever the PVQs will be coming in the slides, we are going to solve everything. But in the, when it comes to topics and everything, we will stick into the most plausible and the most important thing. That's what we are going to do right now. Okay, so now we'll come to society. What is the society? Early very society. How it was <coughs> organized? Mm -hmm. You know, it was a tribal society with egalitarian approach and how the society was there, Jana and Vish, very, very simple. Okay, so then what are happened? Now, later Vedic times, this society started to decline. What is the reason for decline of the society? What is the major reason for decline of society? Territorial. Because territorial aspect of kingship at the same time, territorial concept was evolving. At the same time, who is claiming the higher status? Kshatriyas and Brahmanas for status was increasing. Why their status was increasing? Because of what reason? concentration of wealth or we can say unequal distribution of wealth and that is the reason unequal distribution of wealth ultimately led to unequal groups also and that unequal groups was given religious sanction that is varana system ultimately it evolved into caste system too okay that is a major thing that happened and that were given religious sanction we already discussed that one what is my religious sanction i told you mm -hmm. religious sanction means approval by the religion itself approval by the gods like example one him discussed that one the him discussed that one how the four varanas evolved how the four varnas evolved, we know that is a major reason is unequal distribution of wealth. But now religion is saying how it was evolved. Okay, okay, example. Now religious evolution of varnas, the Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, and Shudra evolved out of the mouth, arms, thighs, and feet of which person? Prajapati. Okay. Previously, what is the position was given to Prajapati? Universe created. But right now, what is the position given to Prajapati? Out of Prajapati's body, who evolved? Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, and Shudra. Okay, so that is all ends because they evolved out of the different parts of the body, they should not be given equal status. Okay, so that is how religious sanction was given. Now, through Prajapati, Varna system was made to evolve. That is a major system. That is the reason it should be continued. It should be upheld by whom? Upheld by Rajas. That is called as Raja Dharma. Okay, and then hierarchy of society, we know Brahmana Sukti high place because they are the one who can communicate with the God also. Okay, at the same time, to help others achieve moksha and how to achieve moksha in Vedic system. Through conducting sacrifices. How to achieve moksha and salvation in Buddhism and Jainism? Moral way of life, eightfold path. Okay, at the same time, three uh, ways of achieving Kaivalya in Jainism also. We'll come to that one. Triratnas of Jainism. We'll come to those. So they simplified this, but what Vedic system was doing at one, it complicated the salvation system. That to achieve salvation, what you require is you have to perform the sacrifices. And that is what ultimately. Uh, led to the unequal composition of the society and because the help in sacrifice they should be given top position and shudra should be at the bottom and because they are at the bottom which kind of activities they should do service activity slavery kind of activities too and that is how the overall fourfold varna society got evolved again these are all concepts not necessary and now more rules were evolved how do you maintain that purity because you want to restrict the interaction between upper varna and lower varna because in rigvedic times what happened interaction was happening through marriages and right now they put restriction on intervana marriages. That's it. Okay, so that is how that structure got consolidated. Okay, so because more and more roles, the more and rules are putting restriction on marriages, and that is called as which concept about endogamy. What do you mean endogamy? Within the marriages. Oh, sorry, within the varana. But gotra exogamy, varana, endogamy. Marriage within that particular varana itself. And that is how the ultimate that led to religious sanction on that on that one particular marriage system, and that led to evolution of caste system also and we can talk about <coughs> honor killings and everything so all these kind of things started way back in vedic systems only okay so now to maintain purity rules were made to take away marriage rights whose marriage rights need to be taken away women marriage rights okay so that is more rules patriarchy was well established she was considered subordinate because she must not be given marriage rights if she must not be given marriage rights and she must not have any kind of independent decision making ability so when she does not have independent Decision making ability when she is a child. So, which marriage can start evolved? Child marriage system. Understand? That is how all the no education rights, no property rights. If you give education rights and property rights, that will give what capability to women? Decision making ability. Okay. Now, take away all those rights and impose the will of the patriarchy. So, that is how the patriarchal system was evolving in also later Vedic system. And can we say that whatever the democratic system which was there, that started declining. So, that is a comparison between Rig Vedic as well as later week no property rights no political rights okay and child marriage before she could take any kind of decision marry her off okay and that led to evolution of which concept child marriage and now at the same time she could have chosen her partner 
But right now, what they did was they take out, took away the right to choose the partner also. And that is the reason widow remarriage right was also taken away. And now, which concept side to evolve? Sati concept, starting to evolve too. Okay, so Sati traces could be seen right now. Arakthala. So, these are nothing from the prelims point of view, just for explanation too. And now, we can come to later Vedic society and another institution evolved, that is Varanashrama Dharma. What is Varanashrama Dharma? On different stages of life and that is also evolved. And four Varanas, uh, rather not four Varanas, that is only Dvijas. Who are Dvijas? Dvijas means twice born. They should go through different stages of life. And the different stages of life is called as Varanashrama Dharma. Varana Ashrama Dharma. So, they should go through these different stages of life. And what are these different stages of life? We can say that is meant to only for Kshatriyas as well as Brahmanas. And they were given which status? Kshatriya status. Okay. And we can say known as Dvija. It means twice born. I will come to that concept. Brahmacharya, Grihastha, Vanaprastha, Sanyasa. So, Brahmacharya means what? Student life. Then again, Grihastha means householder life. Then Vanaprastha means partially retired, living in forest, hermits they say. And then again, Sanyasa is called as complete retirement from householder life. Understood, right? So, this was also imposed. And who can follow this fourfold? Sorry, Varnashrama Dharma, only Dvija. Who are Dvijas? Kshatriyas and Brahmanas. Why Dvijas for Kshatriyas and Brahmanas? Because they have the material wealth. Understood, right? Okay, so that is how Varnashrama Dharma was evolving. It's only for Dvija. What do you mean Dvija? What do you mean twice burn? Dvijas means very simple. One is physical birth. Second one is when someone takes up a fulfilling role in the society. That is considered as a second birth also. What is the fulfilling role a Brahmana takes up? Education, learning of Vedas. So, example, education by Brahmanas and then again, arms training by Kshatriya. That is the second birth for them. So, only these two Varanas, they should follow which Dharma? Varanashrama Dharma. All the fourfold societies, there, sorry, what are the four stages of life is there? That only for Kshatriyas as well as Brahmanas, they will be considered as twice born, that is Vija and the twice born one is physical birth. Second birth is, we can talk about when they take up any kind of fulfilling role towards the society. When they start contributing towards the society. Okay. So now who will not be considered as Dvijas? Lower Varana. Okay. So there is no education for lower Varana and no other duties for lower Varana, but only they have to do that some kind of servicing duty, and that is the reason they were not considered as Dvija. But later, Vaishyas were also given Dvija status. When? Because when they were achieving more than material status. When the Vaishyas were achieving material status? During the age of Buddha, during second urbanization, during the second 600 BCE onwards to. Okay. And Dvija concept is not mentioned in Vedas, but mentioned in Dharma Shastras. Okay, Dharma Shastra, Dharma Shastras are Dharma Shastra. It is not mentioned in the Vedas. Because in his later Vedic times, Vedas were also composed and other texts were also composed. Dharma Shastras, epics. Okay. Now at the same time, we will talk about Brahmana, Saraneka, Supanishads, everything was composed during later Vedic times. And they decided to compose from the time of later Vedic time. And that is the reason Dvija concept is not mentioned in Vedas. They are mentioned in Dharma Shastras are Dharma Sutras also we can say. So they can put the one statement. Dharma Shastras are mentioned in where? Sorry, Dvija concept is mentioned in Dharma Shastras, not in Vedas. And now Vedic, later Vedic religious life. Later Vedic religious life is very simple. What is early Vedic religious life? What it was? How it was? Personification of the nature. But right now sacrifices become important. Instead of the God, the sacrifices become important. Ceremonies became more and more important and that is how it is happened more complex more elaborate like ashwamedha sacrifice how long it is it went on for one year also like some meaningless rituals i talked about purushmedha he said all these kind of sacrifices started to evolve and that is the reason all the religious life going in backwards rather than going in the forward and this is the religious life criticized by whom criticized by buddha and jaina nothing else okay now overall we can sacrifices were becoming important when sacrifice was becoming one class was becoming important that class was Priestly classes. Okay, now priestly class becoming more and more dominant. And in place of Kshatriya, now priestly classes climb the claim the top position. Previously, who climbed the top position? Kshatriya, because of the wars. But right now, sacrifices becoming important. When sacrifices becoming important, the conductor of the sacrifices become important. And now when the conductor of sacrifices become important, he should be given the higher status. And that is a Brahmana Kshatriya Vaishya Shudra got evolved to, and that was given religious sanction to. It is called as priestcraft. It is a science of rituals, science of we can say overall, whatever the ritual sacrifices they will do, it is called, it is given some kind of a uh, religious sanction also at the same time, it is called as priestcraft. What do you mean priestcraft means? Science of priest too. Because only priest can perform that one particular sacrifices. This is very simple. And you can just write one more, that is vidis. Vidis means rules, the rules of the sacrifice. We will just keep mentioning, I will go as fast as possible, okay? I will keep mentioning only the terms only, okay? So, you just write down only the terms. So, that is vidis. Vidis means rules of the sacrifices, okay? 
and then later vedic religious life undermining vedic gods now prayers are replaced by sacrifices and because the sacrifices are becoming important what you have to sacrifice animals okay and that is the reason buddha and jain talked about what non violence okay, because slaughtering of animals was increasing in a very very huge manner in a very massive manner and that is the reason they talked about stopping the slaughtering slaughtering of animals in later vedic times so evidence of cut marks of bones that is comes from atranjika era that to show that how much religious sacrifices were happening how, how much cattle were being slaughtered that is one of the example example that is in atranjika era now yagnaswar brought lot of wealth to priests in the form of dana and dakshana and their position went on to what went on to consolidate consolidated which position at the top position okay, that is how it was cutting out now changing gods indra and agni lost importance now who became important presently prajapati why prajapati important sacrifices because previously prajapati is out of body out of prajapati is body universe evolved but right now out of prajapati is body what evolved varana is evolved right and that is the reason sacrifices become important now vishnu is considered the creator and protector previously who was the creator and protector prajapati was the creator protector was varana and it cosmic order is called as what rita also that is also there and pushan the cattle god now became the god of shudra okay now the importance of gods are also changing where it is changing in which which time period it is changing later vedic what is the major reason for all this unequal distribution of wealth and idolatry also started to emerge idol worship because now gods are become, which god is becoming important vishnu and along with vishnu idols vishnu image all these kind of things also started to emerge but the real idol worship started from the time of when the temple construction began when temple construction began what happened in the temple what you have to give what you have to keep idol and that idol worship image worship started to evolve too okay and now we are coming into non aryan religion where it is mentioned it is mentioned in atharva veda right okay what is non aryan religion magic at the same time we can talk about uh, that is uh, superstitions okay at the same time we can talk about why this magics were used for magic were used for curing of diseases and to gain the material wealth bring evil on others and all these are non aryan elements and these non aryan elements are composed in which veda atharva veda again prose or verse verse only which is the only veda that is in prose ajur veda okay so there is about non aryan or folk religion material wealth okay then again some more facts you can just write aryans did not know writing we already know that one okay how the vedas were transferred then oral transmission we know that one that was a oral transmission and all this were written down quite late by the time of uh, common era and the present available texts vedas that belong to which century 11th century ad 11th century ad present available oldest available vedic text belong to 11th century ad okay and then rita sanskrit already told you what is rita means rita means universal law there is a cosmic order that is a basic basic meaning of rita too any doubts on this rita can also be called as truth or order it is a cosmic order that's mentioned in the vedas where is vijay is mentioned with vijay is mentioned not in vedas vijas are mentioned in dharma shastras but rita is mentioned in veda okay that is the law of the universe or its constituents okay there was one question also with respect to rita in 2011 it was asked and now no need to write all this there is a powerful reaction against the vedic system and this powerful reaction took in the form of ideologies which ideologies buddhism and jainism why they reacted against the system what is the reason they reacted against the system sacrifices at the same time who can conduct the sacrifices those who have the money those who have the money to give gift to priests and that is the reason there was a powerful reaction against this one and especially lower varna they were not finding their voice in the vedic religion and that is the reason some alternatives were given by whom buddha and jaina you said and that is the reason the reaction against the vedic system after 600 bce we can talk about that's some reaction can also be seen upanishads also upanishads also attached to vedas also and some upanishads also condemn all the sacrifices slaughtering of animals that is happening during the vedic religion too okay now we can directly go to buddhism and jainism after this one and what the emphasis is done buddhism and jainism they did not emphasize on sacrifices rather the emphasis on right belief is it a right moral way of conduct that is exactly that is knowledge of atma soul so that is what being taught in buddhism and jainism at the same upanishads also upanishad talks about the concept of atma as well as soul too and now instead of sacrifices they are asking people to concentrate on these terms concentrate on the knowledge of atma knowledge of soul and as well as the knowledge of we can talk about or we can say rightful way of conduct and that is the reason buddha said what eight fold path four noble truths as well as eight fold path also we we'll come to that one okay so theory of karma side to emerge so all these things were merged with buddhism and jainism so all the vedic system there was a powerful reaction against that system that transferred into buddhism and jainism and now one question 2011 
the dharma and rita depict a central idea of ancient vedic civilization of india in his context consider the following statement dharma was a conception of obligation of the discharge of one's duty so one self to others i told raja dharma it is a there is a kind of a duty then again rita was the fundamental moral law governing the functioning of universal and all its content universal law, i told you okay so what should be the answer one and two also dharma is the duty and rita is what cosmic order so that was asked in when 2011 Okay, so, what are the PYQs are there from 2011 to 2022 also? Now, we are coming to Vedic literature. Okay, so, Vedic, later Vedic is done. We understood the differences between early Vedic as well as later Vedic. And now, Vedic literature, what you are going to see? Veda, Supaveda, Brahmana, Aranyaka, Upanishad, Vedanta as well as Vedanga. Vaishyas were part of Dvija from 600 BC onwards. I will come to that concept. Okay, I will definitely come to that concept. Vedanga, okay, then again, Puranas also. And all of you know the definition of all these things. Okay, we can just stick to major ones here. Epics and classification of Veda, Shruti and Smriti literature. What do we mean Shruti literature? One is art. What do we mean Smriti literature? Authored. Authored by using intellect. Like whatever you are writing, that is Smriti. You said whatever you are heard from other, that is called as Shruti literature. What are example of Shruti literature? Art hmm? by Rishis, Veda, Samhitas, Brahmana, Aranyakas. Upanishads. Now, Smriti literatures are, which means remembered or authored by using human thoughts. So, it can be modified. Which can be modified? Smriti literature can be modified, but not Shruti literature. Because Shruti literature are given to Rishis by whom? Gods. But Vedas have also went some kind of revision also. Uh, example, Upaveda, Vedanga, Epics, Dharma Shastras, Puranas and Agamas. So, these are the classification of Shruti literature as well as smooth literature and we already discussed the definition of vedas this side samhita nothing but rigveda samhita yajurveda samhita samaveda samhita atharva samhita the core part of the veda what is the core part of rigveda shlokas hymns how many hymns 1028 and that is the samhita rigveda samhita what is yajurveda deals with ritual sacrifices and everything formulas and that is the yajurveda samhita what is samaveda samhita singing that's it what is atharva veda samhita Non, non Aryan religion culture, superstitions, that is Samhita. Now, we will see what is the definition of Brahmana, Aranyaka as well as Upanishads, and then we will see one by one Upaveda, Vedanga, and everything. We will go as quickly as possible. And explanation we can say Samhita, they are the core part of the Vedas, especially mantras and hymns also. Again, like Shruti text, we can say four Samhitas are there Rigveda Samhita, Ajurveda Samhita, Atharvaya Samhita, as well as Samaveda Samhita. And Brahmanas, what do we mean Brahmanas? Each Veda as one Brahmana. That is Rigveda Brahmana, Atharvaveda Brahmana, Ajurveda Brahmana, as well as Samaveda Brahmana. What is mean Brahmana? These are prose texts, is the interpretation of Samhita. Whatever Samhita is there, and just explanation of those Samhitas. That's it. Very, very simple too. Explanation of mantras of Veda. That is there in what? That is there in which textbooks? Brahmana's textbook. That is there in Brahmana's textbook too. And understanding their meaning. Meaning of what? Meaning of shlokas. Meaning of the shlokas, meaning of the shuktas. That is understanding through. Brahmanas too. And how to use, where to use, when to use, all these things are explained in Brahmanas too. Shatpata Brahmana, we know. Shatpata Brahmana attached to which Veda? Yajur Veda. That is one. Shatpata Brahmana attached to Yajur Veda. So, Brahmanas are attached to which? Attached to Vedas. That is one thing. Okay. And where to use them, how to use them? They are in prose texts. Vedas are in which texts? Verses. It is the only Veda that is in prose? Yajur Veda. But Brahmanas are prose. Because it is explanation. Explanation you can't give it in verses. Explanation you have to give it in prose also. Understanding right? Given the logical thinking, logical understanding, everything should be happening. And now we'll come to one example. I told you, Shatpata Brahman attached to Ajur Veda. Okay. Now we'll come to Aranyakas. Aranyakas means they are forest books written by hermits living in the jungles. And which stage of life hermits living in the jungle? Third stage. That is the we can say Vanaprastha. These are people. Heard by Vanaprastha people. That is Armin is living in the jungle and they are concluding portion of Brahmanas. What are the Brahmanas are there? Out of Brahmanas, that is we can say to every Brahmana there is a concluding portion and that concluding portion is Aranyaka. Okay, so what Aranyaka deals with? They are excited from Brahmanas. Ultimately, they explain the philosophy behind every ritual. The only keyword you have to write, remember here is philosophy. Now, every Veda, Brahmana is attached and every Aranyaka attached to Brahmana. Understood, right? Both are der der derivative texts we can talk about. That is what? Vedas, out of Vedas, Brahmanas, Brahmanas, out of Brahmanas, Aranyakas. For every Vedas, what they are attached right now? Upanishads also. Okay, so next. Why a ritual exists? What is God? What is reality? And everything is talked about in Aranyakas too. And next one we can come to 
Upanishads. Okay, this will will go a little bit slow. You can just write down. Okay, so some of the things Upanishads. The meaning of Upanishads is to sit near someone. That is the basic meaning of Upanishads here. To sit near someone. And then again, how many are there? One at eight. And how many are important only? Thirteen are important. You should know all the thirteens. Okay, which are the important uh, Upanishads? You should know. Okay. And again, it deals with what? Deals with Atma, Soul. Okay, Brahma, God. <coughs> okay. All these things are dealt in Upanishads. Brahma, God, Atma, Soul, and understanding their relation, understanding the relations between Atma as well as Brahma. And three persons wrote a commentaries on all this. Three Acharyas, Shankara Acharya, Ramanuja Acharya as well as Madhva Acharya. What they talk about? They talk about the relations between Atma and God and the matter also. And that is further expanded by three Acharya, Shankara Acharya, Madhva Acharya as well as. Ramanuja Acharya and the opposed sacrifices also. This is the first reaction. Before Buddhism and Jainism could react against the Vedic system, the first reaction could be seen in Upanishads. Okay. And again, also talk about universe and its existence. Talks about the God, talks about universe, talks about the soul. Okay. And then again, Mundaka Upanishad, it is the largest Upanishad. And what is taken out of Mundaka Upanishad? Satya Meva Okay. Only on paper. Okay. That is Upanishads. Hmm? Discusses different types of marriages also. Hmm? What are the two types of marriages? Pratiloma and Anuloma marriages. Okay. That is what is Anuloma marriage? A man who can marry within Varana also as well as below it also. That is accepted. Okay. That is given positive religious sanction. What is Pratiloma? A woman cannot marry outsider Varana. Isn't it hypocritic? Isn't it? A man can marry but women cannot marry. And that is the difference between Anuloma as well as Pratiloma. Okay, any doubts in this? So, this is the difference between uh, uh, where it has been mentioned this kind of marriages. Vedas are Upanishads, Upanishads also. Okay, like Dvija concept mentioned in Dharma Shastras, and the Rita concept mentioned in Vedas, and the types of marriages are also mentioned in Upanishads. Okay, so there are little bit subtle differences are there. That is what I am trying to focus here. Unique things what we are going to focus in, in the coming slides too. And again, now one question, of course, Satya Meva 2014 question. From which Upanishad? Mundaka Upanishad. Okay, now what you have to do? What is Sandogya? What is Katha? What is Aitare Upanishad? I know you people are not going to do that. Okay, write down. Katha Upanishad deals with story of Nachiketa who meets Yama in conversation with Atma, in conversation on Atma. Katha Upanishad deals with Nachiketa as well as Yama's conversation. Little bit. One more, one, 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 one line you can keep writing. Then again, Aitareya, that is a man is the creator of Atman. And it is in prose, say Shudra should be slain at will. Okay, talks about the position of the Shudras. Aitareya Upanishad. Then again, Brahadaranika Upanishad. It talks about transmigration of soul. Only one thing I am talking about, not the entire. You don't have to do PhD in all the Upanishads. Okay, you just have to know what exactly it is talking about. Okay, transmigration. Then again, Mundaka Upanishad relates to Atar Atarva Veda. Okay, Mundaka Upanishad. We already know what is Mundaka Upanishad, what has been borrowed from it. Satya Meva Jayate. Okay, again, dialogue between great sacrificer Saunaka as well as Sage. Anig Angira. Okay. Angira. So these are uh, keywords you have to mention about that one. Katha Upanishad, what it deals with, Aitari Upanishad. I told you only how many Upanishads are import, important? 13. So know about all the 13 Upanishads, what it deals with. Nothing else. Don't go beyond that one. What it deals with. At least little bit knowledge is better than nothing, right? Okay, little bit is something better than is nothing. Okay, instead of doing away completely, just know something about such kind of things. So that is Mundaka Upanishad. Okay. And again, three ashramas, first three ashramas are mentioned in Chandogya Upanishad. Which are the first three ashramas? Brahmacharya and again, Vana, Grihastha as well as Vanaprastha. And the fourth, which are the fourth one? Sanyasi. All the four ashramas are mentioned in Jabala Upanishad. Okay. First three ashramas are mentioned in Chandogya Upanishad. Four ashramas are mentioned in Jabala Upanishad. Okay. That is all. So, ashramas are also mentioned in which one? Upanishads. Types of Pratiloma and Lama also mentioned in Upanishad. Dvija concept mentioned but in Dharma Shastras. Okay, that is one thing. So that is how subtle changes, subtle one kind of statement will be. In this statement, one word will be changed. Nothing that one. Okay, one word will be changed, that one word will be confusing enough. So now what I am trying to focus here is that one that is focusing on the specifics. That is, see, in mains you can write some general topic, general things about one particular topic. But in prelims, what you have to be, you have to be very, very specific. Very, very specific. Then only you can get the answer there. Particularly from uh, thinking from seeing from last two years question paper, 
you can look at that one can you answer that one pair only two pair only three pair only with elimination not possible you have to know whatever that matching is there whatever the match the following is given you have to know each and every thing over there and now we are coming into conclusion we already know shruti literature which is art at the same time what is shruti literature vedas how many vedas are there rigveda then again samaveda yajurveda as well as atharveda and every veda got four other textbooks that is samhita brahmana aranyaka and upanishads you got it right so this is the overall organization of the vedic literature which literature shruti or smriti literature shruti so all this is shruti literature okay and now we are coming into smriti literature okay what is smriti literature which is remembered which is authored by humans using their intellect what are the texts they have composed everything all this part of smriti literature and one example of smriti literature is upaveda what is upaveda it means applied knowledge upaveda means applied knowledge is a derivative textbook from the normal veda the original veda which are the original vedas the four vedas out of the four vedas some other vedas are derived out of it okay example we can say ayurveda okay they de derived from the main veda okay so that is they deal with sciences ayurveda from rigveda or atharveda some kind of confusion is there some people would say it is a part of derived from atharveda and some people would say it is derived out of rigveda also then again dhanurveda it is comes out of yajurveda and then again gandharva veda that is deals with samaveda because gandharva sir means musicians samaveda deals with what music obviously right we can logically link that one and again lastly we can talk about arthashastra shilpa veda from atharveda arthashastra of kautilya is different this arthashastra is different this arthashastra it talks about the governance part that arthashastra also talks about governance and encyclopedia and everything but this is a different one at the same time shilpa veda also comes out of atharveda okay so they deals with traditional sciences what is the science of ayurveda which science it deals with medicine what is dhanurveda what science it deals with archery gandharva veda music and shilpa veda means architecture isn't that is the traditional sciences they can talk, they have technical knowledge ayurveda medicine dhanurveda archery gandharva veda music and dance okay then again arthashastra deals with economy and governance and shilpa veda deals with architecture they talk about specific skills so what is upaveda very simple in one word you can say they talk about specific skills a specific science we can say the science of archery the science of music and dance science of architecture and science of medicine and all these upavedas are derived out of which vedas original vedas okay any doubts in this upaveda you got it again vedanga it's are called as limbs of the vedas vedanga sir nothing but they help in proper recitation of veda very simple one simple we can say that one they help in proper recitation and understanding of veda there is a, how many vedangas are there six vedangas are there okay so they are in a short condensed form statements okay they are very short condensed form statements they are in the form of sutras also and there are six sutras six vedangas are there which are six vedangas first one is shiksha and what is shiksha it deals with the proper sounding of veda okay that is the proper chanting that is one thing that help in the proper chanting of veda just write down all these things okay this one then again kalpa a ritualistic science and at what time it should be done how to perform a ritual that will be dealt with kalpa sutra okay shiksha deals with proper chanting proper sounding of veda and then again jyotisha astronomy or astrology at what time at what time you should perform your sacrifice okay like when to perform that particular sacrifice on the basis of alignment of stars on the basis of alignment of planets that is the reason right we have different kind of time period particularly every day you must have rahu kala yamagant kala ela irutala so aa time alli yen ad maadbardu id maadbardu anti irutala ee time alli puja maadbeku anti irutane isn't you have to conduct puja at one particular point of time only you have to chant one mantra in the early morning which mantra gayatri mantra isn't that is all these things for part of what part of that is a kind of vedangas okay then again fourth one we can say vyakarana there is a proper construction of the vedic sentences then again fifth one we can talk about nirukta that is the origin of the words where the one particular word of that one particular veda originated where it got originated and lastly we talk about chanda kannada chanda so anta karitar gotta that is the rhythmic pattern of the words how it should be properly arranged so all these are part of which literature vedanga literature all these are part of vedanga literature okay just write down the key words that is vedanga means what help in proper recitation and then again six vedangas are there shiksha kalpa then again vyakarana then again jyotisha nirukta and chanda okay and i will share ppt today only today evening only i'll share it that doesn't mean don't stop writing 
okay <laughs> because it should come right on the keywords because your own notes is also very very important isn't okay that is different your own keywords is very very important because ultimately what is going to save you is your own notes on the base of your own words that is very important because when you learn something reinterpret in your own words and that is the best thing to do okay and next one will come to kalpa sutra i told you like two three types of kalpa sutras are there and that is shrauta sutra as well as griha sutra shrauta sutra i told it is a ritualistic science how to perform shrauta sutra talks about how many fire should be there how many altar should be there okay then griha sutra says there is only one fire should be there and then shrauta sutra said that one that is three are more fires also that is a ritualistic science and that is the reason priest craft was growing and who opposed all this buddhism and jainism too and again it includes ritual pertaining to life stages when to perform upanayana how to perform upanayana okay then again vivaha marriage at what time of at what time perform at in which murta okay yav murta la madbeku yav dina madbeku hodala so all these things were starting to evolve out of that one always are part of what part of vedangas and last we can talk about dharma sutra also that concerned with rituals dharma why you are performing the rituals why you are performing the rituals moksha to achieve moksha to all these are designed in where all these are composed where kalpa sutra kalpa sutra are part of what kalpa sutra are part of vedanga and vedanga is shruti literature or smuti literature smuti literature all these are said by gods or authored by humans authored by humans should you follow or should you not follow left to you <laughs> okay and then again puranas means old okay all that means puranas old it is composed during 4th to 6th century ce okay actually 4th century bce to 6th century ce we can talk about 4th century bce to 6th century ce little bit mistake is there 4th century bce to 6th century ce talk about the emergence of present hindu religious practices okay puranas it means old emergence of whatever the present practices are there there is all these are in puranas like they discuss four yugas also which are the four yugas satya yuga krita yuga okay at we can say treta yuga dwapara yuga as well as kali yuga you are getting it right which are mentioned in which textbooks dvijas are mentioned where rijas are mentioned where okay kalpa sutras are mentioned where marriages are mentioned where okay we are getting into very very specifics about ancient india isn't at the same time where this all these yugas are mentioned puranas if i give one statement puranas or we can say all the four yugas are mentioned in vedas right or wrong wrong isn't puranas are shruti literature smuti literature again smuti literature okay and also talk about different maha puranas are there garuda purana vishnu purana vayu purana okay everything that is bhagavata purana matsya purana all these are related to which god actually these puranas shiva and vishnu also mainly vishnu matsya purana vishnu purana okay garuda purana all these are related to vishnu god too one shiva purana is there brahma purana is there brahma bejar madka bodtara anta avargon kottidare right ala okay that is one thing okay by the way don't get me wrong okay i'm just making it as for just for fun purposes okay that is puranas that means old tomb and then again now puranas discusses five that is sarga it deals with the creation of the world how it is created only write down this five sarga prati sarga recreation manvantaras okay then again it deals with vamsha and again vamsha cha vamsha anucharita so puranas also discuss the yugas also they also discuss about sarga prati sarga okay sarga means what is the it deals with the, how the world is created Pradeep Sarga talks about the recreation of the world after the destruction because four yugas is what? One yuga is destroyed, then other yuga is reinstated. You said after Krishna goes away, that is from Dwapar yuga. Which yuga is started? Kali yuga started. You said that is recreation. Then Manvantaras, that is the period of various Manus. You know Manusmuti, right? You said the Manusmuti actually that is people would say it is a mythical uh, writing also, and some people would say it is a person also. Okay, they talk about then Vamsha genealogies of gods and rishis. which families they belong to and again vamshanu charita related royal dynasty solar dynasty as well as uh, lunar dynasty we can talk about yedu vamsha anta karitarala okay so different kind of vamshanu charita sir there with respect to different gods are there all these are mentioned in which textbooks puranas textbook and puranas also again smruti literature that is sarga prati sarga manvantara vamsha and vamshanu charita and our dharma shastras so deals with the code of conduct what is the code of conduct of a shudra what is the code of conduct of a vaishya what is the code of conduct of a vikram brahmana what is the code of conduct of a kshatriya we already know what kshatriya should do war okay so all these are mentioned in dharma shastras too that is it talks about the purusharthas purushartha means life goals purushartha means life goals what is that life goals righteous conduct artha material well being what is the material well being of a brahmana conducting sacrifices what is the material well being of a kshatriya wars administration what is the material well being of a vaishya trade 
what is the material well being of a shudra should serve the others okay it also talks about kama that is sensual pleasures and it also talks about moksha okay and is different dharma and different code of conduct depends on what depends on varna system because different people different section of different conduct of life okay like we can say composed during 600 bc 900 bc a person dharma was depend upon many factors like gender marital status varna as well as ashrama can you see for which section ashrama are related to only which 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 varnas can follow the ashramas dvijas presently which are dvijas kshatriya as well as brahmanas only they can follow and their dharma is different their material well being is different okay and at the same time we can talk about shudras well being as well as shudras dharma code of conduct is also everything will be different too now two epics are there which are two epics ramayana and mahabharata okay so you can say comparison mahabharata was 400 bc to 400 ce and who is a person vedavyasa and the events of mahabharata happened during which time period dwapara yuga again dwapara yuga mentioned in which textbooks puranas now maramayana that is 400 bc to 300 ce who is a person valmiki and at the same time lord rama lived during treta yuga okay so chronologically which one first okay go with the yugas no dwapara yuga satya yuga krita yuga dwapara yuga dwapara yuga and kali yuga okay so treta yuga is the second one dwapara yuga is the third one kali yuga is the latest one okay so that is mahabharata as well as ramayana too okay and lastly we can come to agamas agamas means it is a smriti literature we know that one meaning that which has come down it deals with tantra mantra okay in hinduism it deals with magic as well as tantric that is our agamas okay puranas we know and agamas we understood all is service literature smriti literature it means they are created created using what created using intellect there are lot of time okay to create all these rules and regulation and imposing upon the people also okay that is how it is agamas in hinduism and now vedanta is there last one okay that is vedanta means end of the vedas okay we will see philosophies tomorrow they are derived from upanishads they reveal the aim of the vedas vedanta okay that again they condemn sacrifices and ceremonies what is the first reaction against what reaction against vedic sacrifices vedic ceremonies and vedanta is the pursuit of knowledge about brahma atma soul as well as universe also and now who developed the vedanta philosophy madhvacharya ramanujacharya shankaracharya and even neo vedanta philosophy by whom two persons swami vekananda as well as arvindo goshals you said those are the persons who actually developed further this philosophy was further developed by shankaracharya madhvacharya as well three acharyas and uh, swami vekananda and arvindo and arvindo gosh is quite important because of 150 years of celebration okay that is going on so make sure about you know everything about arvindo gosh not everything at least okay that is some part of his respective with respect to the upsc Uh, what kind of questions they might ask that dinas the is also say that an end of the vedas are the last phase of the vedic period okay and now we'll come to new religious ideas 600 bc onwards so which are new religious ideas buddhism jainism as well as others which are the others ajivika charavaka ashashvatavada all these things we are going to discuss and now why they evolved what is the reason all this because of against the vedic ritual system we know that one because of reaction against brahmanical system and they came up with simple teaching what is buddhism jainism came up with very very simple teaching and is simple teaching were in which languages vernacular languages and is vernacular languages attracted whom attracted all the people attracted the local people that is in vernacular language that is in and also vaishyas vaishyas were evolving and vaishyas were evolving because which which profession trade profession and trade was growing because of iron also iron was growing agriculture was growing and when surplus production was happening what is happening trade was also growing when the trade was growing which one section was becoming trade profession uh, sorry one section was adopting trade profession that section was vaishyas D- did vaishyas got any kind of respect in the vedic society no and that is the reason they gave massive support to which religions or which ideas rather buddhism jainism as well as other ideals also that is ajivikas charavakas and everything and now what happened because of all this support buddhism jainism became very very massive and at a massive following and be careful that is buddha jaina and mahavira they did not have the intention of establishing a religion okay ultimately what happened they turned into religion they just as an as an reaction against one system that system was vedic system and also one reason why they opposed the slaughtering of animals is because agriculture was growing for agriculture what they required was animals 
but animals what happening to animals they were being slaughtered and that is the reason non violence theory was evolved to because animals were necessary for agriculture now buddhism what is the birth name we can go very quickly hmm? siddhartha okay then again which year Hmm? okay then again 567 bc which is a place lumbini how do we know it is only lumbini only ಬುದ್ಧ ಫೇಸ್ಬುಕ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಅಪ್ಡೇಟ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರ ಲುಂಬಿನಿ ನನ್ನ ಪೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಬರ್ತ್ ಅಂತ ಫೇಸ್ಬುಕ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಅಪ್ಡೇಟ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರ ಅಂದೆ ಇಲ್ಲ ಮತ್ತೆ ಹೌಡು ವಿನೋ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅಶೋಕನ್ ಪಿಲ್ಲರ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಷನ್ ಅಶೋಕ ವಾಸ್ ಯೂಸಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಓನ್ ಫೇಸ್ಬುಕ್ ಓಕೆ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಕಾಂಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ರೂಲರ್ ಹೂ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಕಾಂಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಓಕೆ ಥ್ರೂ ವಾಟ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಈ ಸೋಷಿಯಲ್ ಮೀಡಿಯಾ ಈ ಸೋಷಿಯಲ್ ಮೀಡಿಯಾ ವಾಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ರಾಕ್ ಅಡಿಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಮೈನರ್ ರಾಕ್ ಅಡಿಕ್ಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಮೇಜರ್ ರಾಕ್ ಅಡಿಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಪಿಲ್ಲರ್ ಅಡಿಕ್ಟ್ ಎಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಎಸ್ ಮೈನರ್ ಪಿಲ್ಲರ್ ಐಟ್ ಯಾ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ Okay, that is major, minor and everything. And then at the same time, what is the clan name? You belong to which clan? Shakya clan. Okay. Who are the parents? Our relationship is okay. That is Shuddhodhana and Maya. Okay. Then again, Buddhism. What is the wife's name? Yashodhara. Okay. Then again, what is the son name? Rahula. Yavra ka family issues. Okay. Arsas. What is the Ars name? Kantaka. Okay. Who is the charioter? Who left? who carried buddha out of his home because we have to blame charioter channa because he is the one person who took buddha out of his home buddha gave all his philosophy we are reading today isn't it okay that is one thing that charioter was channa okay and now then again teachers alara kalama as well as uddaka ramaputta okay then again nirvana under which tree bodhi tree you are having you are having nirvana under concrete tree okay that is then again people tree are bodhi tree which place bodhgaya okay that is in bihar then again which river niranjana river okay so all these are basic elements basic uh, <coughs> facts you should be knowing and then again buddhism going with an left at the age of 29 and attain nirvana at the age of 35 not necessary but sometimes upsc is fickle minded okay we never know if they put one statement i like that one we can't help with that with respect to that one and again death at kushinara that is in 486 where is kushinara which state where is kushinara it's in up kushinara is in up and in four sites that made buddha to leave the house which are the four sites an old man monk sikh and it not old monk okay <laughs> be careful okay <laughs> not old monk okay an old person and a monk person and a sick person and a dead corpse i know spirit junction is very near okay don't worry okay four sides of an old monk tomb okay and then again he became parivarjaka par is a term was used in one of the prayers what is a parivarjaka he renounced and wanderer he renounced the life and then he became wanderer okay that is called as what parivarjaka so focus on the terms right now in buddhism and jainism focus on the terms as well as the minor sects also the major theory major philosophy you already know okay we can go as fast as possible so you can just write parivrajaka what is a parivrajaka renouncing okay at the same time also called as wanderer wanderer from one place to another place and okay. what is the titles of buddha shakya muni also called as tatha gata it means one who has attained knowledge okay tatha gata means one who has attained knowledge shakya muni as well as tatha gata any doubts on this nothing again coming with buddha from the day he achieved nirvana he will be called as what buddha what is a buddha actual meaning of buddha is enlightened one everybody knows all these things and after attaining but after attaining his enlightenment where he went to which place saranath deer park we know that one gave his first teaching and his first sermon what is first sermon is called as dharma chakra pravartana okay setting the wheels of dharma in motion that is a basic meaning okay and again setting the wheels of dharma in motion you already know that one and then problems in attaining nirvana one person created problem no that is say demon called as mara okay he tried all the tricks brought hurricane flood earthquake and bad news and finally when it is was not happening he sent his daughters also okay that is so disturb buddha okay ultimately but all of them failed to move buddha the saint and that is called as what self control okay that is what called as, that is the reason we are reading about buddha okay <laughs> but all of that failed to move buddha okay and now five disciples of buddha early disciples which are the five disciples Huh? that is ashwajit upali ananda sariputra and mogallana 
these are the five early disciples actually according to some textbook there are 10 disciples are there but generally most of the textbooks mentions only five disciples stick to this one again i told you no need to do doctor of philosophy in buddhism no need to okay again four great events of buddha's life which are the four great events hmm? that is mahabin shikarman what do you mean mahabin shikarman what do you mean nirvana okay then again dharma chakra pravartana and mahapari nirvana mahabin shikarman means renouncing okay that is renunciation of his life when he renounced his life what he became he became parivrajaka link that one instead of learning in isolation link this concept that is mahabin shikarman renunciation parivrajaka is it what do you mean nirvana nirvana means enlightenment under bodhi tree and again dharma chakra pravartana first sermon okay and again mahapari nirvana means death these are the four great events of buddha's life we already know that one okay then then again all these four events of buddha's life are given some kind of symbols which are the symbols that is given for birth which symbol is there for renunciation enlightenment first sermon birth it is there lotus and bull symbol one mains question was also asked that it is a prince marathon why are you talking about mains last one question was also asked right what is the significance of lion and bull ah huh? in indian mythology as well as sculptures and everything it was asked so all these things you can just interlink from prelims also means to then again renunciation is ars enlightenment is bodhi tree and first sermon is wheel also deer also okay the deer jinke okay death means stupa so different kind of symbols are there okay and elephant symbol is also very important in buddhism elephant symbol is when pre birth okay so when uh, maya was pregnant okay so that is when the elephant also came in her dream too that is white elephant not just elephant white elephant and now three jewels of buddhism these are the three jewels of buddhism buddha dhamma as well as sangha that is buddha means enlightenment or a teacher then again dhamma means doctrine and sangha means order uh, that is a buddhist monks buddhist order is there buddhist sangha was there these are the three ratnas or three jewels of buddhism too and three jewels are also there in jainism also we'll come to that one those three jewels are different and now philosophy teachings of dhamma of buddha it's all this philosophy can be classified into two categories that is four noble truths as well as eight fold path you said very simple which are the four noble truths ah uh, world is full of sorrow okay that is sufferings also called as dukkha and the second noble truth is that one the sufferings have a reason all sufferings all dukkha have a reason and that is called dukkha samudaya what is the reason for dukkha hmm? that is desire called as trishna okay attachment okay then again ignorance all these are reason for sufferings what is the reason for your sufferings you pay see is right that is one thing okay then again sufferings could be removed okay are removed that is called as nirodha dukkha dukkha samudaya nirodha you can remove those sufferings and how you can remove that one by following astangika marga eight fold path understand the world that is full of sorrows and sorrows have a reason and sorrows could be removed by following astangika marga which are the astangika marga eight fold path right view right intention right speech right action right livelihood right effort right concentration right mindfulness we'll go quickly what are all this scam okay then again eight fold path meanings that is right viewer understanding knowing the truth what is the truth four noble truths what is the truth is that one there is a four noble truth is that and then some we can some other terms are there samaditi in pali also we can talk about that is samaditi as well as right viewer right understanding understanding of world is full of sorrows and again right intention or aim samma sankappa what is the right intention or aim that is to free freeing mind of evil thoughts at the same time avoid luxury senses temptation we can also say love humanity increase happiness of others first increase happiness of yours then do the others okay first that is that is a concept should be there first increase your own happiness yes buddha is good buddha's philosophy is good on the paper okay it is very difficult to follow first increase your happiness first clear upsc then you can bring happiness to others is right and then again eight fold path right speech what is the speech we should talk about speak only truth okay and again right action samma kamanta that is what is right action unselfish action no action that causes bad to others okay non violence okay and again right sir no intoxicants no spirit junction okay so that should be only coffee break and coffee adda okay stick to that one okay so unselfish action too eight fold path right livelihood samma ajiva then again live by honest means that is earn whatever you are earning in a 
proper way that is one thing or in the right way right effort samma vayama then i talk about keep improving oneself keep evolving keep transforming all this is, can be applied to your preparation also isn't it all the eight fold paths can be applied to your preparation also keep on evolving keep on anticipating okay so keep going to new kind of areas keep learning new things okay and again resist evil thoughts and evil things too and again last two we can talk about right concentration how do you increase the concentration meditation okay that is focusing on a single object okay a right mindfulness right mindfulness we can talk about self aware when you are aware about your own self like i told you what is your strengths and weaknesses i told you how to write down strengths and weaknesses also that is everything you should be knowing about so may, make sure your strength remain as strength i said make sure you keep on improving upon your weaknesses that's when a success will come running now general teachings of buddha that is a philosophical teaching of course we will come to other, some other philosophies also there there is four noble truths as well as eight fold path we will come to soul concept god concept and everything some general concept we can say theory of karma believed in theory of karma what is theory of karma the present is determined by the past action and then and buddhism believed that one there is a different realm different universe is there okay they don't believe in actually rebirth but they believe in rebirth in different universe okay that is how theory of karma applies to buddhism that is if no sins committed he or she will not take any kind of birth to okay and if don't want to commit any kind of sins what path you have to follow eight fold path astangika margatum and again then life is liberated that every individual is a maker of his or own destiny and that is what theory of karma talks about isn't it? your present is determined by your past your confidence level of today is determined by your past preparation isn't it? your present situation where you are standing again depend upon the past actions what you have taken okay everything and again some other philosophies neither accepted nor rejected the concept of god what jainism did did it accept god concept we can compare that one jainism and buddhism it accepted the god concept but it is given for god a lower status lower status than whom tirthankaras arjuna okay and did not believe in soul concept also and that is why it is called as anatta anatta means what in buddhism no belief in soul okay and again anika one more concept that is called as impermanence it means transient everything keeps on changing universe also keeps on changing and that is called as anikha anatta means there is no soul anikha means impermanence or we can say transient or we can say it keeps on changing then again believe in rebirth into another being or another realm another universe not one human will not take birth as another human that is transmigration of soul that is not that because they don't believe in what soul concept but they believe in taking rebirth as another being a human can take birth as a animal also a human can take birth as a some kind of a uh, insect also okay a human can take birth as a demon also so that kind of concept will be believed in buddhism okay that is believe in 10 realms are there the 10 realms are human realms ghost realms asuras and shravaka shravaka means direct disciple of buddha you can just write down that one statement that is shravaka one more term shravaka means direct disciple of buddha what am i parivrajaka that is wanderer renouncer now shravaka means direct disciple of buddha anika means what impermanence anatta means what no, no not belief in soul concept okay that is shravaka and again priest nirvana that is what is mean nirvana according to buddha is that one you have to shed all your desires you have to shed all your desires doesn't mean you have to give up on upsc that is your desire don't give up on that one okay you talking about different kind of desires you should have more desires to clear upsc okay of course buddha's eight fold path path can be accepted but the second noble truth cannot be accepted for you people okay because you have to have the desire of success you have to have the desire of clearing upsc and that brings lot of sufferings okay that brings lot of attachment and that will also try to do away with all the ignorance also okay and again instead of sacrifices what you should be giving importance to moral conduct of life right speech right action right livelihood okay at the same time right mindfulness mindfulness right concentration right livelihood all these are a moral way of life and this is what attracted to common people the common people of that point of time 600 bc and what they got attracted to all these kind of simple teachings instead of sacrifices and that is the reason buddhism and jainism became more and more popular okay now buddhist philosophy continuing that one one more philosophy is called as pratitya samudaya what is pratitya samudaya means law of dependent origin theory of karma nothing else okay that is 
your present life will influence the next life okay your present life will influence the next life another philosophy of buddha buddhism that is pratitya samutpada okay that is law of dependent origin okay that is very important law of dependent origin if it means our life condition in this life determine the life condition next realm life that are how many realms is believes in 10 realms few i mentioned you can only to mention each and every one of them and how to summarize follow middle path but jainism believes in extreme path okay buddhism believes in only middle path what is the middle path neither too luxurious neither too poverty poverty also called as austere life austere means what that is complete we can say monk life complete sannyasi life okay giving up each and everything that is called as austere life okay and rejected the authority of vedas of course everything jainism also as well as buddhism also social equality of course that is always there love towards others and then again we can talk about no need for middleman to attain salvation in buddhism sorry in vedic religion you require the help of a priest to attain what to attain moksha but in buddhism and jainism you don't require any kind of middleman same thing in bhakti movement also what is bhakti movement bhakti movement it is a personal relationship between individual and the god they also criticize what middleman that middleman that is priestly classes that is exactly what is happening here too then buddhist monks considered varna based on action okay that is varna based on action should be there that is brahmanism by birth too that is also there and but after joining sangha no varna will be considered okay before joining sangha yes your varna will be considered but after joining sangha your varna will become irrelevant and that concept is called as vevanni yanti that is without varna as soon as you join buddhist monk order that sangha that you will be giving up your what giving up your varna because you have to believe in what you have to believe in social equality okay if you don't join obviously it will lead to what that is varna system will be continued in this one and then again one more concept is there upasaka that is a common people who is following buddhism without joining sangha without becoming a monk okay that person is called as what upasaka okay we talked about parivrajaka what is parivrajaka wanderer and renouncer what is shravaka a uh, direct disciple of buddha and then what is vevaniyanti giving up varana and then again what is upasaka it's a common follower lay follower of buddhism without joining what without joining sangha okay and again and one more concept called as paramitha paramitha means perfection very simple paramitha means perfection that is a buddhist term often translated as perfection okay all the terms shravaka anikka anatta okay then again upasaka paramitta vevaniyanti all these things are related to which religion buddhism religion okay and now one question was also there with reference to cultural history of india 2020 question okay they asked about which one paramitas which one of the following is the correct description of the term paramitas now first one the earliest dharma shastra text written in aphoristic or sutra style that is not paramita philosophical schools that did not accept the authority of vedas which philosophical school did not accept the authority of vedas vedanta we discuss about then again perfection whose attainment led to bodhisattva path yes that is the perfection what is my paramita i told you perfection you have to look for the keywords so keywords are ultimately help you going to answer all the prelims questions then again powerful merchant guilds of early medieval south india no answer is c2 that is 2020 and again buddhist literature there are three types of literature three pitakas a three basket which are sutta pitaka vinaya pitaka as well as abhidhamma pitaka okay these are very very three buddhist literature and what is the definition of sutta pitaka hmm? what is the sutta pitaka vinaya pitaka abhidhamma pitaka and they are also called as canonical canonical means which very sacred sacred to which religion buddhist religion okay and that is means books which lay down basic tenets and principles of buddhism so all these three textbooks sutta pitaka vinaya pitaka abhidhamma pitaka and talks about the basic principle whatever the four noble truths we talked about asanika marga we talked about buddhist philosophy we talked about they are mentioned in which textbooks these three textbooks okay we talked about sarga pratisarga and again dwaparvega treta these are mentioned in where puranas smriti literature now whatever the buddhist philosophy you are talking about they are mentioned in these three textbooks okay first we'll come to sutta pitaka that is nan or some other categories of textbooks are also called that is called as non canonical and that is texts that are not the sayings of buddha canonical text means generally sayings of buddha only and non canonical that is not the sayings of buddha it means someone else have written that is about commentaries and observations on canonical text you know dipamsha mahamsha okay milindapan ho you know okay these are all called as non canonical buddhist literature milindapan ho dipamsha mahamsha it is not directly related to buddhism rather indirectly related to 
Buddhism. But canonical texts are what? Canonical texts are directly related to Buddhism. That is the difference. Canonical texts as well as non-canonical texts. And then Sutta Pitaka, it is also called as Buddha Vakana or Buddha Vachana, the word of the Buddha. Whatever the Buddha is saying, all these things are recorded in which textbooks? Sutta Pitaka. Okay. And what is Buddha is saying? Two things he said. That is four noble truths as well as Astangika Marga. That's okay. All the discourses. That is also there in Sutta Pitaka. That is consists of five Nikayas, five sections. Which are the five sections? Anguttara Nikaya, Diga Nikaya, okay. Samyutta Nikaya, Kuddaka Nikaya as well as Majjima Nikaya. Okay. Also includes Jadaka stories, which are Jadaka stories means birth stories of Buddha. Okay, that is the means previous birth stories of Buddha. And that is a major saying. And these are collected in which textbook? Which literature? Sutta Pitaka. Okay. And then Vinaya Pitaka. What is Vinaya Pitaka? Discipline basket. Discipline basket means the discipline of the Buddhist monks. What is the rules and regulation of the Buddhist monks? That is Vinaya Pitaka. Okay, that is rules for monks and nuns of the Sangha or the order. What kind of rules they have to follow and everything. Once you join Buddhist Sangha and all the rules and regulations are collected in which Pitaka? Vinaya Pitaka. You have to follow those rules and regulation. Now, Abhidhamma Pitaka, what it deals with? Hmm? Abhidhamma Pitaka deals with philosophical teachings. It is mainly higher teachings of Buddha, philosophical, which are the philosophical teachings? Soul concept, birth concept, realm concept, karma concept, all these are there in Abhidhamma Pitaka. Sutta Pitaka contains which sayings of Buddha? Four Noble Truths as well as Eightfold Path. Simple teachings. But the higher teachings are there in Abhidhamma Pitaka. Which are the higher teachings which you can't understand? Okay, that is one thing. That is the realm, birth as well as karma. Okay, and again questions and answers format. These textbooks are there in questions and answers format. Okay, so Sutta Pitaka, Vinaya Pitaka as well as Abhidhamma Pitaka, we got the differences also. And now we are coming into non-canonical textbooks. You can write Milindapan Ho, that is in which language? Pali. And it is a philosophical dialogue between one of the Greek kings, Milinda, at the same time one of the Buddhist monks, that is Nagasena. And again, Deep Omsha and Maha Omsha, they are Pali textbook written in where? In Sri Lanka. Okay, they are related to Buddhism also. Then again, Mahavastu, it is a mixed Sanskrit as well as Prakrit text. It is a mixed Sanskrit, Sanskrit as well as Prakrit text. It deals with agiography of Buddha. What do I mean agiography? Agiography means Buddha. Sorry, biography. Biography is called as agiography in the context of when you are dealing with the biography of a religious person. That is called as agiography. If you are dealing with the biography of Mahavira, that is called as agiography. Okay, if you are dealing with the biography of, let's say, for example, any one monk, Nityananda, then it is agiography. Okay, so that it becomes agiography. Understood, right? When a Buddhist, any monks is there, any religious figure is there, when they write biographies or when someone else write their autobiography, something like that, it will be called as agiography. Any doubts in this? Not. Now, Buddhist councils, how many councils were there? Four councils. First council, where it was held? When it was held? 486 or 483. Dates could be variations. Don't worry about the dates. And again, where it was held? Rajagraha. And who was the president? Mahakashapa. Who was the king? Ajata Shatru. Okay. And what is the outcome of the first council? Two Pitakas. Which are the first two Pitakas? Sutta Pitaka and Abhidhamma Pitaka. They were compiled. Vinaya Pitaka was compiled under the leadership of Upali. With the five leaders we talked about. Five early disciples of Buddha. Ashwajit, Upali, Mogalana, Sariputta. And then again we can talk about Sutta Pitaka under Ananda. Okay. So, Vinaya Pitaka under the leadership of Upali. And Sutta Pitaka under the leadership of Ananda and they were responsible for collecting all the Buddhist saying, Buddha's sayings. And Vinaya Pitaka includes what? Rules and regulation. Sutta Pitaka includes what? Buddha's sayings. That is the reason it is called as Buddha Vachana or Buddha Vakana also. Now, where is the second council? 383 BC, Vaishali and preceded by Sabakami, who was the king? Kalashoka, also called as Kakavarana. Okay. And again, the first split in Buddhism happened. Why split in Buddhism happened? Because of interpretation of Buddhist sayings. What Buddha said, some people accepted, some people did not accept. Are they interpreted in their, in their own way? Okay, that is, we talk about Staviravadins and Mahasangikas. Which is the major division in Buddhism? Yinayana and Mahayana. Shvetambara and Digambara are in Jaina. So that is the major division. And for evolution of Yinayana and Mahayana, this Staviravadins and Mahasangikas are very important. We will come to schools of Buddhism also. The sects of Buddhism also. So, first split happened in which council? Second council. And again, third council, very important. Pataliputra, preceded by Mogaliputra Tissa, who was the king? Ashoka. And again, outcome was Abhidhamma Pitaka. Okay, first two Pitakas, first council, third Pitaka was in third council. What is Abhidhamma Pitaka? Philosophical teachings and decision was also taken to send missionaries to other countries. And to what is missionaries means? Missionaries means what? To spread the ideals of Buddhism. And Ashoka sent whom? 
Is kids, is children who are the two kids, Mayendra and Sangamitra. No WhatsApp then to send the WhatsApp to send the messages. That is the reason they had to send their own people only. And again, purified Buddhism. Some people would thought some kind of some people are actually going away from Buddhism. They thought they were heterodox and they were expelled out of Buddhism also. Okay, so puri trying to purify Buddhism. And one more school was emerged. That is called as Theravada school. Theravada school is nothing but Yena Yena only. Theravada school is nothing but in Anna only. So, that is all these are happening in which council? Third council. Okay. I hope you all know this. Buddhist council, fourth council. First century AD. This is the first one that is happening in common era. All the three councils, first three councils were held in BCE. Okay. And again, Kashmir, where it held? Kash sorry. Who was the president? Vasumitra. Who was the king? Kanishka, not Kushka. Okay. Outcome was rise of Inayana and Mahayana. I know you are angry. Okay. That is rise of Inayana and Mahayana. And three commentaries were also written, which are the three commentaries and three pitakas. What do you mean commentaries? Explanation. Okay, that commentaries are called as Vibhasha Shastra as well as Upas and Upadesha Shastra. These are the commentaries on three pitakas. Okay. okay. Just write down this too. Upadesha Shastra as well as Vibhasha Shastra. When it was written, which council? Fourth council. Okay. Under the leadership, under the leadership of Vasumitra and king was Kanishka and rise of Inayana and Mahayana. Yeah. Which one? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. They are generally because they are related to a mixed textbooks also. We can say that some are there in Pali, some are there in textbooks, Sanskrit also. But rather, I would confirm one more time. Okay. And now, schools of Buddhism, Staviravadins, we already discussed when it was evolved, Staviravadins in the second council. They followed the original teachings of Buddha. Which are the original teachings of Buddha? For Sutta Pitaka. That is there when that is uh, eightfold path and four noble truths. And they followed which language? Pali language and they followed strict monastic life. What are the rules and regulations Buddha prescribed? They were followed. By whom? They are followed by Staviravadins. And again, Mahasangikas and they actually reinterpreted Buddha's teachings and they went away from the original teachings of Buddha. That is believed in liberal interpretation of Buddha's teaching too. If Buddha said luxurious life should be avoided, they said no, we can follow luxurious life. Okay, some kind of, they took their own, we can say interpretation role. They took the freedom. They took the freedom to change the teachings of Buddha okay, and modified the original teachings a little bit. But Mahayana Buddhist, they, what they did? They modified completely. Okay, that's what they did. And now schools of Buddhism, Inayana, one more thing, also called as Theravada. When was Theravada was emerged? Third Buddhist council. The lesser path also called as doctrine of elders also. It's an orthodox school. That is the original teachings of Buddha. There is a four truths as well as eightfold path. Now, which school can be linked with Inayana? Staviravadins. So, Mahasangikas can be linked with Mahayana Buddhism. Okay. Then again, they also followed Pali language. It is a very famous today in Sri Lanka, Myanmar, Thailand, okay, and again Cambodia and Lao. Okay. This is Inayana school. Then again, Ashoka patronized Inayana. Okay. But Arshavardhana and Kanishka, they followed, are they patronized which Buddhism? Mahayana Buddhism. Okay, they followed Mahayana Buddhism. Now again, another school, Mahayana. It means the greater path, they modified the teachings of Buddha. Okay. They believed in which language right now? Sanskrit language. Actually, Buddhism side is a reaction against which one? Sanskrit is used. But right now, what they are going into the old path, what Buddha has rejected. Okay. And divinity of Buddha, treating him as the God. Buddha did not have the slightest of intention of becoming a God. Okay. Only wanted to teach good things to people. Now, what he became was a God. Now, when Buddha became God, his idol worship started. Okay, exactly what he criticized, everything now coming into the fourfold. And now, idea of Buddha as well as Bodhisattvas. What is the Bodhisattva? Bodhisattva means Buddha to be. Those who can attain Nirvana, those who can attain enlightenment, but they do not achieve it. Rather, they delay it to help others to achieve it. Like I am helping to people to clear UPSC. Right? So, you, you become Buddha, I will become Bodhisattva. Right? That's what we can do. I am helping people. <laughs> right? That is Bodhisattva means can attain Nirvana but delay it to help others too. Okay. And that is Buddha to be. That is Buddha Bodhisattva means the literal meaning of Bodhisattva means Buddha to be. You can become Buddha too. Unfortunately, we couldn't. Okay. That is one thing. And universal liberation for all, not for individuals, but for everybody, you can achieve, achieve salvation. Universal liberation is suffering from all beings, not just for human beings. They want to achieve liberation for insects also. They want to achieve liberation for animals also. Same for every other beings, every other realms, whichever it is there, 
they wanted to achieve salvation for each and everybody that is mahayana buddhism and not just individual what in ana focus on in ana focus on individual liberation but what buddhism is focusing on liberation of everyone and every individual also at the same time each and every being selves okay and now mahayana buddhism continuing with that one decided eating non veg left sangha okay and they accepted donation and women association okay all the voices what buddha had asked them to avoid okay now kanish kander shavardhana patronized okay patronized what which buddhism mahayana buddhism okay what to do temptations okay these are famous in japan china as well as in central asia okay and its philosophical schools are there mahayana buddhism had two philosophical schools that is madhyamika and yogachara okay some other philosophical schools that is madhyamika and yogachara they are related to which school of buddhism mahayana school of buddhism what do you mean madhyamika and yogachara will come to that one so madhyamika founded by nagasena or nagarjuna around 150 c that is in kamanira okay it talks about shunyavada that is everything is empty that is the basic philosophy of madhyamika that is what is philosophy that is can't be understand very easily obviously shunyavada what is shunyavada anybody philosophy optionals nobody okay no then again yogachara then again it is by maitreya natha okay that is one then again 400 ad that is when it was composed then again it talks about meditation and yoga and that is cognitive practices what do you mean cognitive is control of brain okay mind that is one thing okay so that is madhyamika and yogachara so these are philosophical schools of which school mahayana buddhism these are philosophical schools of mahayana buddhism now buddhist schools are there vajrayana that is one thing diamond vehicle also called as it is called as thunderbolt okay and mantrayana tantrayana also called as they also believed in meditation also okay believed in magic and rituals okay at buddha had been alive okay <laughs> worship tantric deities called as taras they write down taras that is they worship taras what is my taras they are tantric deities and again emphasize the role of a guru or a lama you know dalai lama okay so this kind of another kind of buddhism that evolved out of which one vajrayana okay uh, that is established in bengal and bihar okay so this school was very famous in bengal and bihar too and became famous in tibet okay and around in 11th century okay this is a medieval sect that emerged in buddhism which are the early sects stavaravadins mahasangika inayana and mahayana okay so now is the medieval sect we can talk about vajrayana okay and again it also believed in two truths doctrine there is one is conventional truth other one is wisdom truth okay so that is it talks about two truths that is conventional and ultimate or wisdom there is a conventional truth means what exists what do not exist what is ultimate truth is that is it can be viewed by the awakened mind which is the awakened mind buddha's mind awakened mind was buddha's mind that is the basic meaning of there is a conventional truth as well as wisdom truth or we can say also called as ultimate truth so these are two truth concept you can simply put question belong to which of the following school which school vajrayana school again vajrayana evolved out of mahayana only that is also there because mahayana is the one they took too much interpretation too much freedom okay to interpret which teachings buddha's teachings okay that is one thing again buddhist minor sects are there navayana that is practiced by dr b r ambedkar okay he rejected both inayana and mahayana and then again we can talk about ekayana that is one yana then lokattaravadin and mahasangikas and we talk about shravakayana out of staviras they are also some other things like uh, sarvasti vada sect vibhajya vadin sect tera vadins dharma guptaka as well as pudgala vada sect what you do is that one here just know two to three points about all these minor sects so two to three points not more than that one if they ask you are in a better position okay even after knowing all these kind of things if you don't do that work you will be doing a massive disservice to your own self okay so it will be provided okay so after you getting you further develop on this kind of small sects two to three lines not more than that one two to three facts when it was evolved what is the major teaching we know what is vinayana major teaching vajrayana major teaching mahayana major teaching now what is the major teachings of sarvastivada dharma gupta ka as well as pudgala vada okay so that is what you have to know about and again some important bodhisattvas avalokiteshwara some bodhisattvas also there is embodies the compassion compassion being they also called as he has how many avatars one at eight avatars okay and one notable avatar being padma pani where is padma pani paintings can be seen ajanta okay padma pani bodhisattva painting that is there in ajanta okay again bodhisattva related to which one which really which sect mahayana sect 
and some of the bodhisattvas also given female form also they were in both the avataras in male avataras also as well as in female avataras now one more thing is lokeshwara avalokiteshwara is called as lokeshwara in thailand and bodhisattvas will have many names same avalokiteshwara also called as what padmapani padmapani is also called as lokeshwara also they were given different names so but two bodhisattvas are very important that is manjushri that is buddha of wisdom okay buddha of wisdom that is a wisdom bodhisattva you can just write down this one maitreya that is buddha of wisdom that is personifying supreme wisdom that is the major meaning of maitreya some kind of bodhisattvas we are discussing that is avalokiteshwara padmapani Lok lokeshwara and then again manjushri and again in sanskrit the name it means gentle or sweet glory okay that is the basic meaning of manjushri and it's also known as manju gosha it means sweet voice that is the basic meaning okay and then again next we'll come to bodhisattva that is maitreya it means great love is the future buddha is the future buddha means when the buddhist teachings when they got decayed when people are not following buddhist ideals as of it is nobody is following that is one thing when they got decayed one more person will come from the heaven and he will go through what buddha had gone through he will again will do meditation okay and and again he will do he will go through enlightenment and then he will give, give different kind of teachings and that is given by maitreya a probably presently bodhisattva residing residing in heaven heaven is called as what is tushita that is one kind of realm oh, what is my tushita in Buddhi, buddhism heaven heaven realm and again who will descend to earth achieve enlightenment unlike buddha like buddha under a tree okay to preach a new dharma what presently buddha has taught for four noble truths as well as eightfold path he is going to teach new dharma and once the teachings of gautama buddha were completely decayed it should have come when mahayana buddhism was evolved it should have come when vajrayana buddhism was evolved but still not yet seen but nowadays because of social media you can't achieve all the meditation and everything okay and now there was a question which one of the following discovered the best concept of nirvana in buddhism 2013 the extinction of the flame of desire next one the complete annihilation of the self then a state of bliss and rest hmm? is the answer a mental stage beyond all comprehension what do you mean nirvana i told you shedding of all the desires okay shedding of all the desire that is extinction of the flame of desire that is the concept of nirvana in which one buddhism next one one more question 2014 which of the following kingdoms were associated with the life of buddha it is actually 2014 question also 2015 question also okay it actually copy pasted out of 2014 okay avanti gandhara koshala magada okay one two three two four three four as well as one three four which is the answer hmm. that is we know that one answer is c in 2015 also the same okay this question that is the reason i told you sometimes i told you a question answer option repeat but here the question the entire question got repeated okay probably they must have mistaken while doing the question paper so even answer option were also not changed that is one thing easily got two marks no if you had gone through 2014 question paper okay and next one one more question with reference to religious history of india consider the following statement 2016 the concept of bodhisattva is central to enayana where it is that one mahayana bodhisattva is a compassionate one on his way to achieve enlightenment yes he delays the enlightenment bodhisattva delays achieving his own salvation to help all sentient beings on their part to it of course okay which of the statement are correct one only two three only one two three only and lastly b that is two and three okay, because bodhisattva is related to which sect mahayana sect okay and next one we we'll come to one more question 2019 deification of buddha then again treading the path of bodhisattva look at that one they are repeating out of which part bodhisattvas only same image worship and rituals okay which of the above are features of mahayana buddhism So the features of Maya, what do you mean deification of Buddha? Deity, divinity of Buddha, giving God status to whom? Buddha. That is Mahayana Buddhism. At the same time, Bodhisattva is also Mahayana Buddhism. And image worship and rituals is also Mahayana Buddhism. So answer should be D only. Okay. That is one, two, three. All the features of Mahayana Buddhism. Look at the looking at all these POQs, you should get an idea that one how the questions get repeated. Okay. And then again, one more question of the 2020. With reference to religious history of India, consider the following statements. Staviravadins belong to Mahayana Buddhism. Hmm? Lokattaravadins sect was an offshoot of Mahasanika sect of Buddhism. It's a very difficult question, I would say. Okay. Then again, 
deification of buddha by mahasaikas fostered the mahayana buddhism i told right Maya, out of mahasaikas only which one evolved mahayana buddhism okay so which are the answer should be hmm? that is 2 and 3 only because stavira is not related to mahayana buddhism stavira is stand alone it's almost related to inayana we can say okay and now jainism okay again go through that one origin of jaina principles goes back to 900 bc 9th century bc okay again before mahavira there are some jainism ideals also there what do you mean mahavira mahavira means great hero it means the jainism principles were already existed even before the mahavira again there were how many tirthankaras overall 24 before mahavira there were how many 23 tirthankaras okay that is also called as jina i'm not going to tirthankara and the meaning is okay that is one thing okay tirthankara jina means what that is the one who has attained infinite knowledge okay and has become supreme preacher or victor who has conquered something who has achieved something okay that is one who has attained infinite knowledge what do you mean buddha also buddha also means what enlightened one who achieved the supreme knowledge and tirthankara jainas also means who achieved the supreme knowledge also are they conquered something greater also they are called as victor and they help others to achieve moksha they have achieved moksha they help others to achieve moksha and free from the cycle of rebirth so moksha in jainism means free from the cycle of rebirth moksha in buddhism means what extinction of the flame of desire that is the basic mean okay that is the one thing now early tirthankaras rishabhanath adinath or ikshavaku is the first tirthankara also called as adinath he is the founder of which dynasty ikshavaku but this dynasty is slightly mythical dynasty it's not actually existed one ikshavaku dynasty existed in south india that is different okay and it's also called a solar dynasty as well as surya vamsha he is from ayodhya and people also believe Adi, rishabhanath was also some kind of a mythical person also some people were actually existed and some people believe that one he was not actually existed too and he left the royal family he traveled without food and the first day when he accepted the food that day will be celebrated among jainism as akshaya tritya okay so when he accepted food the very first day after leaving the royal family and that day will be celebrated as akshaya but in hinduism akshaya tritya is different okay that is different but we are talking about which akshaya tritya jainism ultimately what happened buddha is one of the avatars of vishnu only isn't it right? We'll come to that one too. How Buddha became one of the avatars of Vishnu. Okay, the first day he accepted the food is celebrated by Jains as Akshaya Tritya. Related to which Tirthankara? Akshaya Tritya related to which Tirthankara? First Tirthankara. That is Rishabha Nata. And again, other important Tirthankaras, Ajita Nata, Nemi Nata, Pashunata. Okay, then again, but the 24th Tirthankara was Vardhamana Mahavira. Now we'll come to Vardhamana Mahavira. So, what is his date of birth? No hospitals were there. No birth certificate, okay. 540 BC is a place hmm. Vaishali that is BR that is in Kundagrama. Who are the parents? Siddhartha and Trishala. And clan was Nyayar, Natrika clan. And then again, wife was Yashoda, okay. Then again, daughter was Priyadarshan or Anojja. So, different kind of names are used. Priyadarshan, what is a Buddha had a son and Vardhamana Mahavira had a daughter. And Vardhamana Mahavira, that is tree, which tree? Salt tree. Okay. Which river? Rijupalika. Okay. Also called as near Jrimbika Grama, that is in Bihar. Okay. What is the title of Mahavira? Hmm? Nirgrantha. Okay. His title was Nirgrantha. <laughs> Vardhamana is also kind of a title. Okay. Even Mahavira itself is also a title too. But the actual title is Nirgrantha. Okay. And he died at Pavapuri. Okay. That is in Bihar. Where is the death place of Buddha? Kushinara. And we have one program also, Buddhist circuit. Ah, that is Swadesh Darshan. Isn't there is one scheme is also there. So make sure about the they can ask this match the following also in that kind of thing. So make sure link with that current affairs also, government programs also. Okay. Now Jaina doctrine older than Buddhism because when it was first was there 900 BC only. Because Buddhism is from 600 BC onwards. And doctrine is expressed in many principles, Anekatavada. Then again, Syadavada, then again, we can talk about Nayavada, and again, Triratna, and lastly, Panchamahavrata, okay, and we can talk about Ahimsa also, because Ahimsa is part of Panchamahavrata itself only. So, these are different doctrines of Jainism. What do you mean, Anekatavada? Hmm? Different interpretation is there. What do you mean, Syadavada? No ultimate truth is possible, okay, and what is again, Nayavada? No standpoint is also clear. We can talk about that one, that Anekatavada means we can understand through some kind of Example, one elephant is brought, 
isn't asking people to test the different body parts of elephant and different persons give different interpretation the one person says it is a trunk it is a tree after touching the trunk some person touches the tail he says that one rope also and again some person touches the side of the wall or uh, side of the uh, elephant he says it is a wall everything is true only but that is the one non one sidedness or many foldedness that is called as anekata vada okay also also called as anekanta vada too that is central to which religion jainism religion okay that is called as anekata vada and again sada vada maybe or could be okay maybe or could be okay that is i may clear upsc okay i could clear upsc okay that is no judgment is final that is knowledge is relative you cannot absolutely say yes or no you cannot absolutely say yes or no can you absolutely say you are going to clear prelims say yes please okay <laughs> okay ha <laughs> huh? you have to believe in your own self you should have that confidence isn't even the little bit over confidence also is fine especially when the prelims is near okay that is knowledge is relative to and no absolute yes sir no is possible okay and then again possibilities are non possibilities exist on an issue yes possibilities of clearing upsc non possibilities of clearing upsc exist that is exact that is called as sada vada and one example we can see atma or soul what is atma or soul can you prove atma existence of atma can you prove soul no if you ask nityananda he will prove it okay he has all the knowledge all the supreme knowledge okay even jainism also couldn't prove that one but nityananda can prove that one then again naya vada that is theory of standpoint also called as theory of view point what is my theory of stand point all view points are partially true what are the view point like suppose take the anekata vada like when a person touches the trunk of the elephant what he says it is a tree that is partially true and that is a naya vada actually led to anekata vada chronologically first naya vada naya vada and then again sada vada then again anekata vada sorry naya vada anekata vada then again sada vada because anekata vada was developed from which vada naya vada and naya vada or naya vada too and now we'll come to triratna a three jewels of jainism which are three jewels that is jaina ethics we can say a jaina must follow all these three jewels to attain liberation that liberation is called as what kaivalya which are these three jewels right knowledge samyak jnana then again right faith samyak darshana then again right action or right conduct that is samyak sharita and all three jewels are exclusive of each other okay it mean what is my exclusive of each other they cannot exists on their own because in buddhism you can say you can follow either any of the astangika marga you do not have to follow all all eight but in jainism you have to follow all three to attain kaivalya you have to follow all three that is right knowledge right faith as well as right action that is one of three cannot coexist exclusive of other that is all three are required to attain moksha but here in buddhism not art not all the eight paths are required to attain moksha some you can follow but if you follow all the eight paths that would be great okay but you cannot follow all the eight paths but in jainism it is absolutely necessary to follow all the three paths that is the reason i told you extreme which is extreme jainism okay then again right faith what is the faith faith is belief in jina belief in the teachings of the jina or we can say tirthankara's teachings if you do not believe in jinas you cannot attain the right knowledge that is the right knowledge is what right knowledge is deep study of the universe that is a matter pudgal you can say you can just write down this uh, statements or write down the terms that is akash that is space you should have the knowledge about pudgal that is matter knowledge about space and knowledge about time you can just write about pudgal that is would be enough and again knowledge about motion that is dharma asti ke okay so while believing in jina you can acquire the knowledge of all this through jina through tirthankaras you can acquire the knowledge of all this so when you attain this knowledge what will happen you will conduct in the right manner when you conduct in the right manner all three are interrelated you achieve what kaivalya okay that is one thing then again right action or conduct that is following jaina ethical rules that is five o's also which are the five o's that is ahimsa satya asteya aparigraha as well as brahmacharya okay what do you mean by ahimsa non violence what do you mean by satya truth then again asteya means non stealing then again aparigraha means non possession and lastly brahmacharya means celibacy and who added brahmacharya mahavira that is the fifth is added by mahavira because the first four are added by whom 
Tirthankaras, okay, previous Tirthankaras, then again, also called as one more concept called as Anuvratha. Anuvratha means when you follow all these vows partially. Instead of following all the five vows, when you follow all the five vows, it is called as Mahavrata. When you follow only few of them, it can become Anuvrata. What can you follow? What can you cannot follow? Obviously, fifth one cannot be followed. Okay, Ahimsa, Satya, okay, Astaya and Aparigraha. That is one thing. And again, general teachings of Mahavira, that is soul is in bondage. Why soul is in bondage? Because of desires. The desire that has accumulated through previous birth also. You have to free that soul. That is the one thing. Liberate that soul through right conduct. What is the right conduct? Following that five O's also. That five O's are also called as Pancha Mahavrata. And again, life of purity, virtue, renunciation, severe asceticism. What do you mean asceticism? Strict life, monastic life. Giving up everything. Giving up everything. Then again, financing also. What do you mean financing? Bodily punishment. Bodily punishment is called as financing. Like we can talk about standing in the sun from morning to evening. Okay, that is one kind of a financing. Okay, at the same time, fasting also kind of a financing also. And again, every animate and inanimate being as soul. In which concept? Jainism concept. But what Buddhism? That, does Buddhism believe in soul concept? No. That is the reason it is called as anatta. So anatta is the soul concept that is all. Rejected the authority of Vedas too. And again, against Brahminical supremacy. That is a major thing. Social equality they followed. A householder cannot attain moksha. But he has to become what? He has to become monk. But in Buddhism, a householder can, can also attain moksha. That is what middle path. Which is middle path? Buddhism. What is extreme path? Jainism. Okay. But extreme non-violence, that is the one concept believed in Jainism. What is my extreme non-violence? Hmm? Extreme non-violence means what? What is extreme non-violence? Not even hurting simple insect also. Or we can say simple, we can say bacteria also. And that is the reason they were fighting COVID pandemic way back in BC only. They were wearing what? They were wearing masks. You say it. Because why? While, while generally talking and walking, what you, will, you could be inhaling some kind of bacteria. So that is also violence. According to which principle? Jainism principle. And that is the reason they talked about extreme non-violence. Okay? And they also believed that one Universe is created by a natural law. There is a universal law is there. Not created by God. It is created by a na natural law. Or we can say universal law. Okay. Now, Jaina, other Jaina doctrine we can talk about. Gods are lower than Jina. Did Buddhism accept gods? Neither accepted nor rejected. No conclusive evidence. When asked Buddha in Abhidhamma Pitaka, whether you accept God or not, Buddha did not give any answer. He did not know the answer for that one. Okay. That is one. Gods are lower than Jina and rejected Vedic rituals and did not condemn hierarchy. That is the one difference. What is the Varana hierarchy is there? They rejected the rituals. They did the Vedic sacrifice and everything, but they did not reject the hierarchy of the Varana. They say the hierarchy of the Varana, which is the hierarchy of Varana? Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya and Shudra. It because of the previous life, because of the previous good and bad things, what these people have done and that is the reason hierarchy is there. Okay, that is one, there is a major difference. But every object has soul. Every object has soul, even animate as well as inanimate beings. What is the differences and similarities? Concept of in Buddhism and Jainism. God concept, Buddhism, we can say neither accepted nor rejected. Overall, we can say that is God is there, but lower than Jina. Then again, soul concept, Buddhism accepted? No. Jainism accepted? Yes. Not for individuals, for inanimate beings also there is soul. And again, Varana system? Condemned by Buddhism. But Jainism did not because they accepted the hierarchy of the Varana system. And again, salvation, middle path. And Jainism, extreme path. That is the financing path. These are some of the differences and similarities too. And schools of Jainism, Digambaras, okay, that is sky clad, also called as naked because later Mahavira also went naked in his life and that is the reason they also went naked too. That is female in, uh, sorry, there was a feminine in Magadha and that is the reason people went to Shavana Belagoda, that is came to Karnataka, that is that is in Shavana Belagoda under leadership of whom? Leadership of Badra Baho. And one king also followed them, which that is Chanagupta Maurya. Okay. At the same time, live strictly as Tirthankaras prescribed. They followed all the original teachings prescribed by the Tirthankaras. Okay. And believe that Mahavira never married. Their belief system. Okay. Not Mahavira's belief system. We you know Mahavira had married. Okay. He also had a daughter also. Okay. And present Tirthankara's idols also as new tomb. The idol worship is also it. And they also did not believe women can achieve moksha. 
because they said they talked about that is women do not have the will power so they have to take rebirth as man to achieve the moksha okay with all due respect that is they said by whom digambaras okay don't rebel against me that is said by digambaras too okay and then again other sect that is called as shwetambaras that is also called as white clad that is under which leader stulabhadra then again they wore white garments and masks also okay stayed at magadha during famine and then digambaras after coming back accused them of because they went away from the original teachings what mayavira was talking about do not give up everything isn't because mayavira also went nude but these people were using clothes and it means that going away from the teaching of mahavira and that is the reason they were called as shwetam that is a major difference between digambaras as well as shwetambaras okay so departure from mahavira's original teaching so can we say shwetambaras are related to mahayana buddhism digambaras are related to inayana buddhism in terms of following in terms of following not exactly and there are some minor sects also from shwetambaras emerge what murti pujaka sect stanakavasi sect again therapanthi sect and from digambaras emerge what gana bisapanta okay gumana panta and what is your responsibility two to three lines about all this sects also okay at least if you do that we can expect at least even one question come when you done that really well when you are prepared really well one question comes it actually you become very excited right when you become excited what your mental stability will be there that confidence increases when that confidence increases you will not make any kind of stupid mistakes in the prelims okay that is you will not take unnecessary chances okay retain that one and again jaina councils only two jaina councils first council 300 bce that is padaliputra who was the leader sulabhadra okay that is divided all the jaina canons what do i mean canons canons means the original teachings the we can say sacred literature of jaina that divided into what divided into 12 angas and they were composed into 12 angas orally not written down it was not written down but rather they were composed orally okay and they were accepted by shwetambaras not accepted by digambaras okay and then again jaina council second council we can say that is 512 ad where it was held vallabhi where is vallabhi gujarat and under the chairmanship of devardhi kshema sharmana he was the chairman and here what happened a new additions were made to angas they are called as upangas new additions were made to the old angas that is called as upangas or minor sections to the angas again these were written down right now so jaina texts were written down in which council second council in the first council they were not written down they were composed orally okay and agamas were also composed so what is hinduism agamas we talked already talked about tantra mantra is it that deals with magic but here jaina agamas also kind of different kind of literature too and in ardha magadhi agamas were also composed and they were written in ardha magadhi or one of the dialect of prakrit okay and again important angas that is acharanga sutta as well as bhagavati sutta what is acharanga sutta means that is related to vinaya pitaka so what is what is vinaya pitaka rules and regulations rules and regulations of whom monks acharanga sutta is the code of conduct of jaina monk code of conduct of jaina monk what is bhagavati sutta or bhagavati sutras they are the teachings of jainism that is sutta pitaka sutta pitaka related to what bhagavati sutras and vinaya pitaka is related to what acharanga sutras okay this is one thing and again some more facts also jaina literature that is ardha magadhi which language used by buddhism pali these were used ardha magadhi then ganadharas one more term in jainism what do i mean ganadharas it is immediate disciples of mahavira they are called as ganadhara that is before enlightenment and again purvas before angas what is angas angas are jaina literature before jaina literature angas there was something called as purvas the early jaina literature they were accepted by shwetambaras actually purvas are accepted by sorry digambaras and angas are accepted by shwetambaras that is also one of the conflict between shwetambara as well as digambara and again one more term is called as shrat kevlis it means what the monks who had the knowledge about purvas okay that is the early jaina literature too and 12 years of penance to achieve kaivalya by mahavira okay that is one thing and kaivalya also known as kevala gnana that is means omniscient know all that is the basic meaning of kaivalya in what in jainism too knowing all that is called as omniscient kaivalya also means omniscient roughly translated as complete understanding or supreme wisdom when you achieve supreme wisdom you achieve what you achieve kaivalya okay and again one more question with reference to history of ancient india which of the were common to both buddhism and jainism avoidance of extremities of penance and enjoyment was it common indifference to authority of the vedas okay denial of 
efficiency, efficacy of rituals. Hmm? Now look at the answer option one only two and three one and two. Answer option is B two and three. There is indifference to authority of Vedas. They rejected the authority of the Vedas. But one difference is they accept, Jainism accepted the hierarchy. They they rejected Vedic rituals. That is definitely there. That is acts in two thousand twelve. And now uh, which of the following statement applicable to Jaina doctrine? The surest way of annihilating karma is to practice penancing. Okay. And again, every object, even the smallest particle, has a soul. Yes. Then again, we can talk about karma is the bane of the soul and must be ended. I told you, soul is in bondage. Okay. Just rephrasing all these things. Correct answer: one only, two and three, one and three, one two three, and lastly, one two three. All three are correct with respect to Jainism. And one more with reference to religious practice in India, Stanakvasi sect, 2018 question. Related to which of the following? Buddhism, Jainism, Vaishnavism, and Shaivism. Which is that related to Jainism? We now we already discussed the Buddhism sects also. Which are the Shaivism sects? Pashupata, Kalamuka, Kapalika. Okay, these are and Vaishnavism sects. Bhagavata, Bhagavatism. Bhagavatism related to what? Vaishnavism. Just write down all these kind of things. That is in question paper itself only. Some other sects also because they asked about Lakulisha, right? Last one. Hmm? Lakulisha. Relate to what? Relate to that is one of the Shaivism only. Okay, that is one thing. And now another one, the Jaina philosophy holds that the world is created and maintained by universal law, universal truth, universal faith, universal soul, universal law. That is in way back in 2011 too. Okay, and some other sects, very small sects, we can talk about 600 BC, 400 BC. Other than Buddhism and Jainism, they also reacted against. Brahmanism or Vedic culture, very very small set compared to Buddhism and Jainism. These are very very small also, and very small number of followers. And where the evidence of all these small sets can can come come from? Buddhism texts, Sutta Pitaka, Vinaya Pitaka. All these mentions about these small sects also. Which are the small sects? First and foremost is Ajivikas. Who is the founder? Huh? Who is the founder? There are three persons are there. Established by Nanda Vacha, popularized by Makali Goshala. Okay. And other notable persons are Kisha Sankicha. But we are very famous in which region? UP region. That is in Shravasti. And these are Shudra Sanyasins. And Buddha and Jaina belong to which? Kshatriya. Kshatriya Varna. But these Ajivikas are belong to Shudra Varna. And what they believe in? They deny it. Theory of karma. No karma. Okay. At the same time, humans are subject to laws of nature. They say that one destiny is predetermined. Whatever you do, you cannot alter the destiny. Okay. That is a that is a reason. Ajivika is also called as predeterminism. Ajivika is also called as pre-determinism because it means your destiny is already pre-decided even before the birth also. Okay, and no matter what action you take, you you cannot change your destiny. And the destiny is called as niyati. Okay, what is my destiny? Destiny means niyati. You cannot change the destiny. That is their belief. Okay, you can change your destiny. Okay, that is definitely there. And ultimately, and every creature must face the bad things also as well as Good things also. It is a cycle. They say, bad things will come and go. Good things will also come and go also. Okay. You pay the prelims and mains will come and go also. Okay. So make sure you stick to that one prelims and one mains and one interview. That is what you should be. Again, charavakas also called as loka yatha. Okay. That is means worldly ones. Okay. Materialistic. What do you mean by materialistic? Enjoy the luxuries of the life. Okay. That is enjoy the luxuries of the entire world. Materialistic life. Enjoy all the uh whatever that comes during that point and whatever were there okay whatever the luxuries were there that is no belief in karma moksha atma scriptures all these are nonsense according to lokayata according to charavakas believe in the enjoying the life okay drink okay at the same time believe in fire air water and earth all these are created life not god so can we say it is atheistic school what am i atheistic do not believe in god also Materialistic school also, as well as atheistic school also. What do you mean by atheistic? Atheistic means do not believe in God. According to some things, some belief system, God created the world. So, but the Charavaka do not believe God created the world too. And again, atheists are Gnostic. And who is the founder? Brahmaspati. But that is disputed. There is no proper evidence is there. Some people would say believe that Brahmaspati, but there is no proper evidence of proving Brahmaspati founded the Charavaka principles. Okay. And again, Ajita Kesha Kambali. It's not a philosopher, but a person. A person is Ajita Kesha Kambali. He believed in complete materialism, and that is no life after death, no theory of karma. He influenced Charavakas actually. Okay, first Ajita Kesha Kambali, and he influenced Charavakas. Like I told you, that is first one 
ನಯವಾದ ಇನ್ಫ್ಲೂಯೆನ್ಸ್ ಅನೇಕತಾವಾದ ಲೈಕ್ ವಿ ಕೆನ್ ಸೆ ದಿಟ್ಸ್ ಅಜಿತ ಕೇಶ ಕಂಬಳಿ ಈ ಬಿಲೀವ್ ಇನ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲಿಸಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಕ್ರಿಯಾರ್ ನಾನ್ ಆಕ್ಷನ್ ಒನ್ ಮೋರ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಪುರಾಣ ಕಶ್ಯಪ ಡೆವಲಪ್ ಬೈ ಪುರಾಣ ಕಶ್ಯಪ್ ದಟ್ ಈ ವಾಸ್ ಎ ಬ್ರಾಹ್ಮಣ ಟೀಚರ್ ಈ ಬಿಲೀವ್ ಇನ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಫಿಲಾಸಫಿಕಲ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ದಟ್ ಫಿಲಾಸಫಿ ದಟ್ ಒನ್ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಕಂಟೆಂಪರಿ ಆಫ್ ಬುದ್ಧ ಅಂಡ್ ಮಾವಿರ ಆಕ್ಷನ್ ಡಿಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಡಿಟರ್ಮೈನ್ ಮೆರಿಟ್ ಆರ್ ಡಿಮೆರಿಟ್ ಬುದ್ಧಿಸಮ್ ಎಂಜಾಯಿಸಮ್ ಟಾಕ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ರೈಟ್ ಆಕ್ಷನ್ ರೈಟ್ ಕಂಡಕ್ಟ್ ಬಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ದ ಆಕ್ಷನ್ ಯು ಟೇಕ್ ದಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ನಾಟ್ ಗಿವ್ ಯು ಎನಿ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೆರಿಟ್ ಈವನ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಟೇಕ್ ಬ್ಯಾಡ್ ಆಕ್ಷನ್ ದಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ನಾಟ್ ಗಿವ್ ಯು ಎನಿ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಿನ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಓಕೆ ಈವನ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಕಿಲ್ ಎ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಯು ವಿಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಇನ್ಕರ್ ಸಿನ್ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಇನ್ಫ್ಲೂಯೆನ್ಸ್ ಬೈ ದಿಸ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಬೈ ದ ವೇ ಸೈಂಟ್ ಸೊ ದೇ ಆರ್ ದರ್ ಓನ್ ಫಿಲಾಸಫಿ ಓಕೆ ಅಂಡ್ ಟ್ರೂತ್ ಫಿಲ್ನೆಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ನಾಟ್ ಗಿವ್ ಯು ಎನಿ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಕ್ರೆಡಿಟ್ ಈವನ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಟೆಲ್ ದಿ ಟ್ರೂತ್ ಇಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ನಾಟ್ ಗಿವ್ ಯು ಎನಿ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಕ್ರೆಡಿಟ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದೇ ಸೈ ಟ್ರೂತ್ ಇಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಸೋರ್ ಸೈಂಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಫಿಲಾಸಫಿ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಕ್ರಿಯ ಆರ್ ನಾನ್ ಆಕ್ಷನ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಈವನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ಆಕ್ಷನ್ ಯು ಟೇಕ್ ದಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ನಾಟ್ ಗಿವ್ ಎನಿ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೆರಿಟ್ ಆರ್ ಡಿಮೆರಿಟ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಒನ್ ಅಶಾಶ್ವತವಾದ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಕಾರ್ಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಪಕುದ ಕಾಚಾಯನ ಓಕೆ ಈ ಸೈಜ್ ದಟ್ ಒನ್ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಎಲಿಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಲ್ಟಿಮೇಟ್ಲಿ ಆಲ್ ದಿ ಲೈಫ್ ವಿಲ್ ಡಿಸಾಲ್ವ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದಿ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಎಲಿಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಆರ್ ಇಸ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಎಲಿಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಟಮ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಕೆನ್ ಸೈ ಆಟೋಮಿಸಮ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಇಸ್ ಬಿಗಿನಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಟೋಮಿಸಮ್ ದಿ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಎಲಿಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ವಾಟರ್ ಫೈರ್ ಏರ್ ಅರ್ತ್ ಜಾಯ್ ಆಪಿನೆಸ್ ಅಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಎಸ್ ಸಾರೋ ಆಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಎಸ್ ಪೇಂಟು ಓಕೆ ಅಂಡ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ವಿ ಕೆನ್ ಸೈ ಲೈಫ್ ಆರ್ ಸೋಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಎಸ್ ಅಶಾಶ್ವತವಾದ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ನಾನ್ ಏಟರ್ ವಿ ಕೆನ್ ಸೈ ಅದರ್ ಏಟರ್ ಒಡಕ್ಸ್ ಅದರ್ ದನ್ ಬ್ರಿಸಮ್ ಜೈನಿಸಮ್ ಅಜ ವಿಕಾಸ್ ಫರ್ ದೇರ್ ದೆನ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಚಾರಾವಕಾಸ್ ಫರ್ ದೇರ್ ಅಜಿತ ಕೇಶವ ಕಂಬಳಿ ವಾಸ್ ದೇರ್ ದೆನ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಪುರಾಣ ಕಶಪ ಅಕ್ರಿ ಆರ್ ನಾನ್ ಆಕ್ಷನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಅಶಾಶ್ವತವಾದ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮೂಮೆಂಟ್ ಏಟರ್ ಒಡಕ್ಸ್ ಮೂಮೆಂಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಎಸ್ ಶ್ರಮಣ ಮೂಮೆಂಟ್ ಓಕೆ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಶ್ರಮಣ ಮೂಮೆಂಟ್ ಶ್ರಮಣ ಆಕ್ಚುಯಲ್ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಸೀಕರ್ ಒನ್ ಹೂ ಪರ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ಆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಸ್ಟೋರಿಟಿ ಆಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಎಸ್ ಅಸೆಟಿಕ್ ಓಕೆ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಗೇನ್ಸ್ ವೇದಿಕ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ವಿ ಕೆನ್ ಸೈ ಅರೌಂಡ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಬಿಸಿ ನಾನ್ ವೇದಿಕ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಬುದ್ಧಿಸಮ್ ಜೈನಿಸಮ್ ಅಜ ವಿಕಾಸ್ ಅದರ್ ಸೆಟ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಆರ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮೂಮೆಂಟ್ ಶ್ರಮಣ ಮೂಮೆಂಟ್ ಓಕೆ ಶ್ರಮಣ ಮೂಮೆಂಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ನಾನ್ ವೇದಿಕ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಟು ಎನಿ ಡೌಟ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪಕ್ಕಾ ಓಕೆ ಮಳೆ ಹೋಗಿದ್ದು ಎಂತಂಗ ಆಯ್ತಾ ಶುಡ್ ವಿ ಹಾಫ್ ಅನ್ ಅವರ್ ಮೋರ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ಓಕೆ ವಿಲ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ ಮಾಜ್ ಅನ್ ಅಪಾದ ದಟ್ ಸೆಟ್ ಒನ್ ಏರಿಯಾ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಕಟ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟೆಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಟುಮಾರೋ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಸಿ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಮೌರ್ಯಾಸ್ ಪೋಸ್ಟ್ ಮೌರ್ಯಾ ಆಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಎಸ್ ಗುಪ್ತಾಸ್ ದಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಎಂಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಮಿಡಿವಲ್ ಒನ್ ದಿ ಟೂ ಏರಿಯಾಸ್ ಡೆಲ್ಲಿ ಸುಲ್ತಾನ್ಸ್ ವಿಜಯನಗರ ಆಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಎಸ್ ಮೊಗಲ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ದೆನ್ ವಿಲ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಗೋ ಟು ಮಾಡರ್ನ್ ಟುಮಾರೋ ಇಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫೋನ್ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಮಾ ಜನ ಪದಾಸ್ ಸೆಂಟ್ ಬಿಸಿ ಅನ್ವರ್ಟ್ ರೈಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೆರಿಟೋರಿಯಲ್ ಸೆಟ್ಸ್ ಯು ಆನ್ ಬ್ರೇಕ್ ಫಾರ್ ಫೈವ್ ಟೆನ್ ಮಿನಿಟ್ಸ್ ಅಟ್ ಲೀಸ್ಟ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಬ್ರೇಕ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ವಿಲ್ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ದಟ್ ಸೊ ನಾವು ವಿಲ್ ಕಮ್ ಟು ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಒನ್ ವಿಲ್ 
mainly in northern northwestern part of india and north of the which mountains vindhyas there is only one marjana pass south of the vindhyas was also there which one that is very unique assaka okay we'll come to that one and these states were independent all these 16 states were independent uh, out of these 16 states one state became very powerful that is magadha and magadha occupied all other uh, most of the marjana pass and in that magadha magadha empire was emerged and the first empire was mauryan empire okay we will see some states also there was struggle among this state for supremacy political conflict for definitely be there political conflict or was for what for cow acquisition or for territory acquisition territorial acquisition okay and that is unique marjana pass you already know that when all these things are there in textbooks too you just know the which is the one unique marjana pass that is assaka assaka that is in south of the vindhyas and now your responsibility western most eastern most northern most southern most and capital cities of all this marjana pass which were the kings which were the dynasty which were there that is very very factual points you can go through those things and i will discuss on the unique marjana pass that is assaka that is the capital was putali and that is in modern telangana region that is only marjana pass which is located south of the vindhyas okay most of them all of them are located north of the vindhyas okay and another unique marjana pass that is kuru that is capital was indraprastha also called as asinapur and mahabharata talks about whatever the conflict that was happening and that is mainly related to which marjana pass that is kuru marjana pass okay and again another one chedi sorry which are coming to chedi that is vatsa capital was kausambi and the king was udayana why king was famous because he is the hero of three sanskrit books he is hero of three sanskrit dramas which are three sanskrit dramas that is swapna vasavadatta of basa then again priyadarshika and ratnavali of arsha in all these books the hero was udayana and udayana was related to which marjana pada vatsa marjana pada and the capital of vatsa marjana pada was kausambi that is in up that's what i'm talking about only unique marjana padas which could be i yielding some kind of questions can be formed out of this marjana padas okay priyadarshika and ratnavali of arsha arsha means what which arsha arsha vardhana okay then again saptam vasavadat of basha okay and again another unique one chedi that is in suktimati that is a capital that is in madhya pradesh and you know that is one famous story of lord vasudeva that is krishna and he kills his uncle that is shishupala okay not sadhu kokila okay he was killed by lord vasudeva that is krishna okay lord vasudeva is related to krishna only okay, that is in which marjana pada chedi marjana pada okay only four we discuss asaka then again kaushambi that is vatsa and again chedi also and now we'll come to polity of 16 marjana padas some of them are gana sangha some of them are monarchy what is the difference between monarchy and gana sanghas what do i know gana sanghas what do i mean monarchy monarchy means kingdoms we know that is very easy to understand first we will see the difference that gana sangha means assembly of gana gana means what gana means clans it's a family rule over that one particular marjana pada okay few families come together or one family come together they will rule over that one particular marjana pada and who had equal status this clans had equal status that equal status means what democracy that is a major some not purely democracy but democratic elements democratic elements can be seen in gana sanghas okay that is few had only one clan that is one marjana pada that is malla and again another marjana pada had few clans that is we can talk about vajji sals okay and that is an assembly of members will be there and they will look after the administration and they will elect one person as raja or is called as gana raja and that raja position was permanent or non permanent non permanent because he could be replaced he could be replaced so that is the reason some kind of oligarchy some kind of aristocratic character and some kind of democratic character could also be seen in gana sangha so that is say an oligarchy or aristocratic council they will look after the administration and in assembly of members will look after the administration and his chief was called as ganapati also called as gana raja and whatever the assembly is there that chief is called as ganapati or gana raja it was not hereditary position but in kingdoms what happens hereditary in monarchy what happens hereditary but here it is not hereditary that raja could be replaced and the raja will be called as what gana raja also called as ganapati and assembly of this clans as called are called as santagara assembly of this also are called as assembly of this clans are called as santagara and again and discuss the major issues what the assemblies will do discuss the major issues and they will put to vote also like presently what happens in assemblies they discuss and they will put to vote also then again kingdoms and monarchy hereditary powers in the hands of the kings centralization can we say there is little bit of decentralization is there little bit i'm not completely but little bit 
decentralization and of course brahmanical influence much more in which areas kingdoms area and some janapadas are ganasangas and some janapadas are monarchy which are the examples of ganasangas vajis and malla some were also there i will give you one thing and political conflicts among majanapadas led to the emergence of one powerful state which is a powerful state emers magadha okay and four majanapadas that is magadha koshala and they were at some struggle for supremacy too i start with bimbisara that is bruhadatta dynasty it is the first dynasty we'll discuss some political dynasty bruhadatta dynasty then pradyodha dynasty then again aryanka dynasty and now it becomes even more faster because all these are very very crude facts okay then bruhadatta dynasty who is the founder bruhadatta who is the son jarasandha and they say they are the actual founders of magadha the magadha area magadha territory what we talk about who are the actual founder this this is the dynasty that is but who made it powerful aryanka dynasty then again nanda dynasty and ultimately mauryas okay we know the chronology right okay again aryanka dynasty that is in magadha that is in 544 bc to 413 bc some chronological questions also have been asked right and the chronology is very important okay the chronology that is i will also start giving all the chronology also for whatever the slides we are talking about what are the political dynasties i will giving it will be having chronology also 544 to 413 bc which is the capital capital was rajagriha but later it became pataliputra and again it was a monarchy that is also there and previous dynasties were pradyota dynasty as well as bruhadratta pradyota is very very weak dynasty not necessary bruhadratta and then again of course aryanka dynasty and again during its rule indus valley river or indus valley area was captured by foreigners is the first foreign invasion okay and visit foreign invasion that is by akamenid ruler who is akamenid ruler darius darius one is this is the first time some kind of foreign rulers coming to india and occupying the indian territories which area they are occupying indus valley so when this occupation happened which dynasty was ruling aryanka dynasty okay and then again about in 518 517 516 bc so all the dates could be uh, seen in different textbooks too and again first iranian empire by cyrus the akamenid empire means iranian okay and that iranian empire was established by cyrus and that is in 550 bc okay and then again other major kings bimbisara he was the actual founder of this dynasty they say okay then again some believe his grandfather his time period is 544 bc to 492 bc is a contemporary of buddha and mahavira they can put one statement which of the following king is a contemporary of buddha and mahavira who is a king that is contemporary bimbisara and who was bindusara bindusara is different bindusara is which dynasty or which empire mauryas we are talking about aryanka that is bimbisara and again is had a court physician that was jivaka and again he also he conquered anga another mahajanapada because i told you magadha was becoming powerful by occupying other mahajanapadas isn't it anga was also another mahajanapada too and he defeated brahmadatta of anga okay by defeating brahmadatta of anga and he also used matrimonial alliances to expand the power of which dynasty aryanka dynasty and expand the power of which territory magadha territory he used aggressive conquer also at the same time he also used matrimonial alliances that matrimonial alliances with koshal and others that is bimbisara and again continuing with bimbisara and one of the ambassador of gandhara region that is pukku sati he came to his court also okay and again is known as senia cuz he was the first one to have a standing army what is my standing army permanent army even in later vedic times we did not see but army was evolving but the first permanent army was happened in when that is during the bimbisara time that is the reason he had the title title of senia okay and built rajagriha which our rajagriha present place is there that is built by bimbisara okay then again other major kings ajata shatru also called as kunika he was the son of bimbisara why ajata shatru is famous for which buddhist council hmm? his time period is 492 to 460 ajata shatru that is he also followed aggressive policy also he conquered koshala at the same time by defeating prasanjit that is then again he also captured vaishali by defeating chetaka okay that is what magadha's power magadha's territory is expanding because they are trying to occupy other majanapadas okay and we can say first buddhist council not second buddhist council second buddhist council was kalashoka okay third buddhist council was ashoka fourth buddhist council was kanishka okay that is first buddhist council was held in the time of ajata shatru now what we have already learnt it keeps on repeating okay so that is what you have to connect the dots that is what is going to happen he built a fort at rajagriha who built rajagriha bimbisara a fort at rajagriha was built by ajata shatru okay and again a contemporary of buddha and mahavira also he is also ajata shatru as well as bimbisara both of them were contemporaries then other major king udayabhadra or udayan he shifted capital to 
Pataliputra, where is earlier capital? Rajagraha. Then again, he was central to the empire. Why they shift to the capital? Because it was central to the empire too. And later, weak rulers like Anuruddha, Nagadashaka. And this is the end of his dynasty? Aryanka dynasty. Which are the two rulers we discussed? Bimbisara and Ajata Shastra. You just know which rulers they defeated. That should be enough. Okay. Now, Shishunaga dynasty. Next one. That is 413 BC to 345 BC. Yes, that's why I told you. Not Udayin. No, Ajatha Shatru. Ajatha Shatru is the one who shifted his capital to Padaliputra. Okay. Now, 413 BC to 345, the founder was Shishunaga. Who was Shishunaga? He was an officer under which dynasty? Aryanka dynasty. Okay. So, officer under the last ruler of Aryanka dynasty, that was the last ruler was Nagadashaka. Okay. So, he established Shunaga dynasty too. And I revolted and founded his rule. Some say he was elected. Some say he was, really, uh, some say he was actually killed Nagadashaka and he established his own empire. And some say he was elected by the ministers. And some kind of different theories are there. So, we don't have any proper evidences with respect to that one. And he temporarily shifted capital to Vaishali. From where? From Pataliputra. Again, Shishunaga central in which area? Central in which area? Central in mainly Magadha region. Okay, Padaliputra, that is a major reason. And occupied Avanti also. Avanti is where? Avanti is in Madhya Pradesh. Which is the capital of Avanti? Ujjain. Another Mahajanapada. Okay, that is what? Again, again, another Shishnaga. Kala Shoka we already discussed. 395, 316 BCE. He was the son of Shishnaga. Which Buddhist council? Second Buddhist council. Isn't? That is, all these things are relating. And another dynasty, 345 BCE to 321 BCE. Okay. First, non Kshatriya kingdom. Generally, who are the rulers? Rulers were mainly which one? Kshatriya. Okay. It was the main theory, non Kshatriya kingdom. That is two persons mainly, Padmana, Mahapadmananda as well as Dhananda. Okay. He is also called as Mahapadmananda, called as Ugrasena. Okay. Added Kalinga to Magadha also. Kalinga, where is Kalinga? Odisha. Okay. Then again, brought an image from image of Jina from Kalinga. And that is proved in which inscription actually? Atikumfa inscription. We will come to that one later. And the first empire builder of Indian history. Who is called as first empire builder of Indian history? Mahapadmananda. Because he is further expanding the power of which territory? Magadha territory. And last ruler was Dhananda. Okay. He was the last major ruler. And of Alexander invasion happened during which time period? Dhananda. First Persian invasion happened during the time of Aryanka dynasty. And the Alexander invasion happened during the time of Dhananda. And Dhananda was overthrown by whom? Chanakya with the help of Chanakupta Maurya. Or we can Chanakupta Maurya with the help of Chanakya and they established which empire? Mauryan Empire. Okay, so that is how it was happening. We will just discuss foreign invasion, then we will stop the discussion. Okay. Foreign invasion, first one was Persian invasion. Okay, which was the first Persian invasion I already told you. Iran, which empire that is? Achaemenid Empire. Okay, that is Achaemenid Empire. And the first two main invasion happened during the time of Cyrus. He was the empire's founder. The founder of which dynasty? Which empire? Achaemenid Empire. But it was not fructified. But later in 518 BCE, that is, we talked about Darius. Okay, that is the first major actual invasion of Indian subcontinent. Uh, which area? Indus Valley. Indus Valley is the first major area which actually experienced what? Experienced foreign invasion also. That is Darius. He was given different name. That is called as what? Daraya Bahu. He occupied until the regions of which river? Jhelum River. He crossed Indus also. He came until Jhelum tomb. And he made Gandhara one of their Satrapi. What do you mean Satrapi? Satrapi means province. Province of which empire? Achaemenid Empire. Or we can say Persian Empire also. Then again, Xerxes, one of the success, like, successor of Darius, he employed Indians in his army. So, that is what the intermixing of culture is happening. Indians were now serving in which empire? Achaemenid Empire. And that is the intermixing of culture. The age old civilizational ties, when we talk about an international relations, it is the age of civilizational ties we talk about. Okay. And again, the rule ended with the invasion of Alexander. So, Alexander before coming to India, he ended which rule? Achaemenid rule. So, he defeated Achaemenids, then he came to India. Okay. So, now we will come to some of the consequences of Indo-Iranian contacts. One of the consequences is growth of trade. Okay. And to say another consequence is coming of one type of writing. That writing is Karoshti. Karoshti came to India because of which influence? Influence of Iran. Influence of Iran. That is the Indo-Iranian script, they say. The Karoshti script also. We will come to Ashokan inscription when we talk about Karoshti. And now, Alexander's invasion. Who was the ruler when Alexander came to India? Dhananda. Nanda dynasty was there around 326 BCE. Where is he from? He is from Macedonia. Or we can say 
Greece, you can't quote Iran, Iraq, and then march towards India, and through which pass? Khyber Pass. Sometimes they can give this kind of simple uh, element, we can say some kind of simple statement they can put out. So far, they haven't asked any kind of politics related to these kind of things, but they did not use to ask any kind of Mongol invasion and all these things. But they asked two years continuously Mongol invasions, isn't it right? But why they can't ask about Persian invasion as well as Alexander invasion? If they can ask in medieval India, the same kind of questions can also be asked in ancient India also. Isn't? There is no art thumb rule is there. Only question should always come from Mongol invasion. Isn't? Question can also come from Persian as well as Alexander invasion also. And he defeated which one? Takshila ruler. And the Takshila ruler was Ambi. Okay? And again he defeated Porus in the battle of, we can say, Adaspis. And Adaspis is the name for what? Jhelum river. Okay? It was the name of Jhelum river. And again, impressed by Porus, Alexander actually reinstated him. He did not kill him, rather he did not remove him out of the power, rather he reinstated Porus. But under the supremacy of which ruler? Alexander himself. He was under the supremacy of Alexander. He came until Bias river. What is the maximum extent Alexander came? Bias river. Okay, So, Indus, Jhelum, Chenab as well as until, until he came until Bias river also. So, he stayed in India for until 19 months and then he went back to his hometown because there was some kind of War weariness was happening. People were becoming homesick. I know you are becoming time sick from today morning. Okay. I know that one. So now that is the reason people went back, went back to Greece. And there was some kind of rebellion was happening in Macedonian Empire. And that is the reason he had to go back over there. Stayed in India for 19 months. Okay. Economy, not necessary from Majanapada's time period. But we will see society. Okay. But any kind of terms comes, just write down. Okay. Second urbanization phase, we can say one pottery that is northern black. Polished wear. PGW we already discussed. Red and block wear. Okay. At the same time, we, we also talked about ochre color. Ochre color is what? Yellow and orange. And now, different kind of pottery. That is northern black. Polished wear. And that is 600 BC onwards. And to make this pottery, not just mud was used. Fabric was also used. So, it shows that one. It is Iron Age culture also. Okay. It is also associated with Iron Age culture. And it is mainly found in North India. Mainly found in North India. Okay. And it is a wheel made pottery. You can just write down that one. Iron implements also found along with this northern black polished ware. So, which two potteries are found with iron painted grey ware as well as northern black polished ware? Okay, that is one thing. Again, again, economy, iron tools helped in clearing a forest, food production increased, and one you can talk about reference to Kudala. It is a tool. Kudala is a spade, it is a tool that is used during 600 BC onwards, and the person who used Kudala was called as Kudalika. You can just write Kuddala and Kuddalika. That should be enough. And now, again economy, surplus production, exchange with non-agriculture production led to growth of trade. Naturally, towns came. And where is the evidence of these towns come from? Because one person came with Alexander. That person was Aristobulus. And he gives the example or he gives the in his sources, he writes in his books that he saw thousands of towns near in which valley? Indus Valley. And that shows what? What culture was growing in India? Urban culture. Which urbanization this was? First urbanization, second urbanization. Second urbanization. Which was the first urbanization? Vedic civilization. Okay, so after, sorry, Indus Valley civilization. It means, not bad, you are attentive from morning also. Okay, that is in second one is set account. Second urbanization is from the age of Buddha or we can say age of Majanapadas. Okay, Alexander. It is called a second urbanization too. And any kind of terms comes like the movement of Alexander army helped in the growth of trade. How? Because they cleared the forests. They established what? Trade routes and that helped in the trade contacts from India to Roman empires also, as well as Greece empires also, as well as in West Asia also too. That is the reason economy was growing. And two major routes were there, two trans-regional routes. This write down these two routes, that is Uttarapata and Dakshinapata. Okay, that is Uttarapata connected what? Northwestern India to Tamralipti, that is in Bay of Bengal region, that is a Bengal region. And in Dakshinapata, from Magadha empire to until South India. You see, that is Uttarapata. Uttarapata actually going from west to east. Don't confuse from Uttarapata. Dakshinapata is going from north to south to. These are two major uh, routes which were there during which empire? Sorry, which time period? 600 BC. After 600 BC onwards. And then again, economy again, new beginning of coins. Now, the new beginning of coins happened during which time period? 600 BC onwards. And the Elpin exchange also, earliest coins of India. The earliest coins of India belong to which time period? 600 BC. If they give chronology, you say pottery's chronology, coins chronology, all these kind of things, earliest coins belong to which time period? Majanapada's period, that is 600 BC time. What these coins are called as? Hmm? 
पंचमार्क कॉइन्स एंड विच मेटल वॉज यूज सिल्वर एंड कॉपर वॉट इज पंचमार्क दिस कॉइन्स एट द मार्किंग्स ऑफ डिफरेंट शेप्स आर वी कैन से हिल्स मार्किंग ट्री मार्किंग बुल्स फिश एज वेल एज एलिफेंट टू दे पंच विथ डिफरेंट कैंड ऑफ शेप्स टू आर वी कैन नॉट रेदर शेप रेदर समय ऑफ डिफरेंट एनग्रेविंग दट इज द रीजन दे आर कॉल्ड एस विच वन पंच मार्क कॉइन्स ओके एंड दे आर कॉल्ड एस निष्का एंड सातमना सो वॉट इज निष्का एंड सातमना टर्म्स रिलेटेड विच वन कॉइन्स Which same period? 600 BC. And which metal was used? Copper and silver. And they are called as punch mark coins. Who issued these coins? Is the kings issued coins? Are the merchants issued these coins? It is the merchants that issued the coins. It is the merchants that issued the coins. Because generally, who issues the coins? It is the government. But still, that function was not taken up by the government. Not taken up by the state. Initially, all the coins in India which were discovered, punch mark coins, issued by the merchants. Why merchants needed coins? Exchange purpose, trade purpose, everything is interlinking, right? Agriculture, surplus production, trade, towns, coins also, and everything too. Now again, continue with economy, arts and crafts, explosion of arts and craft. That is coins maker, pottery maker, metal smiths, carpenters. Now can we say economy is also expanding? Can we say diversified economy? Compare to which one? Compare to earlier times. Compare to early Vedic as well as Rig Vedic. Sorry, early Vedic as well as later Vedic. That is one thing. And now again, economy. Now all these arts and craftsmen, craftsmen, they were organized into associations, and these associations are called as what? Shrenis, also called as guilds. Today we have IPS association, IAS associations, and everything. Okay, and now they also had association. That is the guilds and shrenis, and they lived in a particular one area of the towns, and the town area is called as vasas. Okay. Now it is also some cities in those particular cities, one particular area known for a one particular product. Is right. That is a, that is localization of the product. All these things are leading to some kind of localization of the product. And these associations also add an ed. That ed is called as jetaka. Also called as shetis. That association ed is called as jetaka or shetis. And which category they are from? Are they Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, or Shudras? Okay. They generally Vaishya too. And they also acted as financiers. And they were given revenue grant by some kind of villages were granted as some kind of incentives. Okay, some villages were granted as incentives by the kings, and that shows that their position is very important in the society. Now, who is gaining material wealth? Vaishyas, and that is the reason now they were given dvija status. Initially given dvija dvija status to whom? Brahmana and Kshatriya, because they are the better well well being, isn't it? And right now, who is given the dvija status? Vaishyas. What do you mean by dvija? Twice birth. One is physical birth. Second one is fulfilling role towards society. What is the fulfilling role of? Vaishyas towards the society, financing. financing also as well as trade also, agriculture also, that is also there. Okay, and they, these revenue granted villages are called as what? Boga Gama. Okay, that is revenue granted villages are called as Boga Gama, and emerging as an important social group. Now, which social group? That is Vaishyas. Okay, then in society will come to rich peasants were called as Gahapati. Okay, at the same time Gahapati was used for land owner of any class. Now Vaishyas are the land owners. At the same time. Shudras can also become not land owners but rather laborers in the land. That is how initially what was their position? Shudras slaves, slaves at the homes of Kshatriyas as well as Brahmanas. But right now, because agricultural activity is growing on, now Shudras could come out of the houses and become agricultural laborers. Better than being a slave, better than being a slave at one at one's home also. You see, that is one thing. And Vaishyas were gaining status due to trading activities as well as. Agricultural activities now given them which status, visa status. Okay. Now second life is entering merchant phase. What is second life of Brahmanas? Taking up education. What is second life of Kshatriyas? Taking up warrior classes. That is it. Arms training. Now the second life of visa. That is the Vaishya should be merchant phase. You got getting it right? Where this visa concept is mentioned? Vedas or Brahmas? Dharma Shastras. Dharma Shastras. Everything. Okay. And Shudras from slaves to slaves from homes to agricultural. Laborers, because agriculture is exploding. You need agricultural laborers. Obviously, Brahmanas and Kshatriyas will not work. Who will work in the? Who will work as laborers? Shudras. Okay, so now their status is also slightly improving too. Okay, so Brahmanical tech, Dharma Shastras, Dharma Shastras, they sanctified the economic privileges. What is the social position of Vaishyas? What is the social position of Brahmanas? What is the social position of Shudras? I okay, told you what is the word I use? Religious sanction. And one textbook that put the religious sanction on all this one, which textbook? Manusmriti, but Manusmriti is a little bit later. But that's I'm just giving you one example too. 
and varuna based legal system varuna based judicial system started to emerge and ultimately what is varuna was converted into converted into caste and all these guilds which were there guild of carpenter guild wa guild of washerman guild of watchmen all this turn into what ultimately caste only that is called as proliferation of castes that happened by the time of the gupta same period we'll come to that one. okay and our society again at the same time now we talked about shudras and untouchables untouchables are different shudras are different shudras are within the varna society there is brahmana kshatriya vaishya and shudra but how the untouchability emerged because of two reasons one reason is that one technological gap between the non aryan tribes and the aryans which are the aryans right now brahmana kshatriya vaishya and shudra what is the technological gap is that an iron technology aryans had the iron technology but the non aryan tribes which were there they did not have the iron technology because they did not have iron technology they were given lower status and they were given which status untouchable status another reason for the growth of untouchable is intervarna marriages because intervarna marriages were banned why it was banned because they wanted to limit the interaction between upper varna as well as lower varna isn't it right then what happened some people rebelled they had love marriages between different varna okay and they married from upper varna to lower varna from lower varna to upper varna they were boycotted out of the society and when they were boycotted out of society they were given which status untouchable status two reasons for the mrs of untouchability below shudras also isn't and they were given untouchable status because of intervarna marriages and other reason is technological gap which technology not nanotechnology not artificial intelligence but which technology iron technology you said that is iron tech there was a cultural gap with local indigenous tribes vedic society had iron non vedic society did not have iron but over a point of time this untouchables also started following vedic culture same kind of gods and everything and that is the reason that became part of the aryan culture itself only a brahmanism we can say given the status of untouchables too okay and disabilities were imposed upon them what do you mean disabilities no rights okay they should not enter the houses and of course all the untouchable uh, things whatever we talk about that is the reason we have to bring in a we have to include in our constitution itself only to ban the untouchability which article 17 very nice upper varna is considered as pure compared to untouchability and more disabilities were imposed on women now they wanted to stop the interaction between upper varna as well as lower varna and they wanted to stop the interaction between lower varna and untouchables also and that is the reason more and more disabilities were imposed on women what is that disabilities means taking away all their rights to okay that is subordinate now administration king was given divine status what is my divine status god status what is the reason he acquired the god status i talked about the ceremonies is there ceremonies rajasuya ceremony vajapeya ceremony ashwamedha ceremony aindra mahabhishek all these things now assistants were there for the kings they were called as ayuktas just write down ayuktas like in shaul kika tax collector in later vedic time tax collector was called as was bagaduga is it right now it's called as shaulkika and administrators were increasing bureaucracy was increasing which is the first bureaucracy of india mauryan is it like uh, that is how we are developing into different kind of political organization different kind of administrative organization too and tax base was increasing which are a tax base means you can put tax on agriculture you can put tax on export you can put tax on import you can also put tax on entry tax as well as market tax sales tax whatever tax you can put right and some of the taxes are called as baga and one of another tax is called as kara okay or we can say kara or kar also in medieval times it became kar now in ancient times it was called as kara okay and right now on peasants artisans traders i and guilds also guilds also you can put taxation now who is collecting all these taxes raja now what is happening to raja's position even more strengthening there is a cycle that kept on happening too and some kind of marriage types were there in my, uh, this kind of you can just write down brahma marriage type daiva marriage type arsa marriage type then again prajapatiya gandharva asura raksaga as well as paishaka okay so the different kind of marriage types were also there it will be there in the slides also when you get the slides you can go through the definitions about all this kind of and these marriage types are mentioned in kautilya sartha shastra write down these marriage types are actually mentioned in kautilya sartha shastra too okay i just write down that one 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 this eight types of marriage are also mentioned in other textbooks and these are also mentioned in kautilya's arthashastra okay 
It is not like they are mentioned only in Kaudilya Sartha Shastra. They are mentioned in other textbooks also. But in one textbook, they find their expression in which textbook? Kautilya. Because last time one question was also asked, right? Huh? We can't read Artha Shastra. We can't read about what Kautilya had written. It's an encyclopedia. But we can know about the unique things that is written in Kautilya Sartha Shastra. And one of the things that is mentioned in Kautilya Sartha Shastra is the different types of marriages. And we also talked about other two types of marriage, Pratiloma and Anuloma, where they are mentioned? Upanishads. Okay. And these types of generally they found in other smooth literature also as well as in Kautilya's Artha Shastra also. Okay. And question is there. Okay. That is Shreni's guilds. With reference to guilds, Shreni in ancient India that played a very important role in the country's economy. Which of the following statements are correct? Okay, correct rather. Every guild was registered with the central authority of the state and the king was the chief administrative authority on them. Was the king chief administrative authority? No. Who is the administrative authority? Shetty. Jetaka. So that is one thing. Then the wages, rules of work, standards, prices were fixed by the guild. What is the reason? What is the intention of having this association to control the prices, to control the production, to control the distribution? Second one is right. The guilds had judicial power over its own members also. Vaishyas. They had their own legal rules, right? They had their own judicial rules also. Definitely, we can say that one. That is correct, yeah. correct answer. 1 and 2. 3 only. 2 and 3. 1, 2, 3. Answer is C. 2 and 3. Because first statement is wrong. Because who is the administrative authority? Not the king. Administrative authority is the head of the guild. And the head of the guild is called as what? Jetaka, Arshati, all these things. Okay. And we will continue tomorrow. Okay. More an empire. Okay. I know that one. Mm -hmm.